one of the crown jewel races. And we have been racing there for over 70 years. Let's turn back time to when Elvis was king and the king was a kid. If NASCAR buried a time capsule, then Darlington would be what's dug up today. Each era at this super speedway has rolled racing forward while keeping true to tradition. With every strike, jaw-dropping finish, and wreck that makes you hold your breath. This track writes another chapter, revealing new underdogs and superstars that keep its story alive. Today's Mother's Day, so let me offer a piece of advice that mine shared with me. Respect isn't given. And when you come to this track, you gotta earn it the old-fashioned way. So give the lady in black her flowers as these drivers battle to honor the women in their lives. Welcome back to Darlington. Oh yeah, there are a lot of strong women in our lives and today one of the strongest is of course that right there, the lady in black. This 1.3 mile track will only love one driver today and that is the one that respects her the most. So this season we've seen dramatic finishes, we've seen rivals duke it out on and off the track, but we ain't seen nothing like we're gonna see today. It's a track too tough to tame as we say hello and welcome to race day on FS1 presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Welcome to throwback weekend in NASCAR and to all the moms out there, a very happy Mother's Day from our Fox Sports family to yours. Thank you so much for spending your special day with us. I'm Shannon Spake along with America's crew chief, Larry McReynolds, Daytona 500 champ, Jamie McMurray, and we've really gotten in the swing of this throwback thing, like um, my second grade mm -hmm. teacher, Miss Bonner, yeah. right there. Well, right there you there. go. That's funny you remember her name. I like that you're in spirit. Because <laughs> she always smacked me with a ruler. Yeah, well, you're fully committed to this show. Today. Well, I listen, like I think you look lovely. I today, look like Shannon. a librarian or a teacher, one or the other. So uh, maybe both. In the yeah. Same time. Okay. Well, let's get past this. Everyone at the track is dressed up. We got some really cool paint schemes out there, and of course, this has really become one of the weekends that's a, a big time popular one on the schedule. Yeah, we've been doing it for years, and we. Still start talking about it several weeks out, but I think what really adds to it this year, remember, this is the oldest speedway on our schedule. We first started racing there in 1950, and no, I was not there in 1950, <laughs> but to do it, celebrate NASCAR's 75th anniversary, we just announced the addition to NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. A lot of those drivers are there present and past hall of famers are there it's just a big weekend just so much fun yeah i like getting to see some of the, some of the older guys there but also some of the the current guys that made this nascar 75 being a part of that seeing them uh talk with each other and just the you know the, this track has so much history behind it it's fun to see the the drivers and teams get behind it we've, we've been doing it like as larry said for for years now and every year we come back uh not only do the drivers and teams embrace it but us as yeah. broadcasters yes. now obviously embrace it as well there's so many legends out the track today and we're going to hear from some of them here on race day. And of course, today, Sunday, is the pinnacle of throwback weekend. It's a fun weekend, as I mentioned, throwback paint schemes, fire suits, and of course, all of us dressed up. All right, speaking of throwback, let's throw back to last week when things got a little heated both on and off the track. You know, nobody confronts the guy. He just keeps doing it. Oh, he got Gregson high. He got a drive. Oh, the oh. And I'm sick and tired of it. Look at this, door to door, folks, for the lead. Oh, in the wall. Yeah, he was a little bit better than me there at the end, but wish we could see what was going on here, I guess. Everybody's overheated, including several of the tempers. What's your deal, dude? A very big man once told me we have a no-push policy here at Trackhouse, so... We have a no push policy here at race day <laughs> yeah, as well, we but I am going to push you for an answer one more time because I know you talked about it all week long, but what did you think about the way that Noah and Ross handled things post race? Well, we know that's two very aggressive drivers and with 65 laps to go, it was all take and there was no give, but honestly, I just did not see anything that Ross did wrong. Did he put the 42 car in a bad situation? Absolutely. But I'm proud that Noah waited till after the race on pit road and Ross told him two, two or three times, stand down, back off, stop, and when he didn't, he threw a punch. Now, everybody said they should have just let him 
fight, fight it out. No, that's not what we do in NASCAR. We're no different than Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA. Somebody throws a punch, the officials are going to step in. That's exactly what they should have done. But the thing I'm glad about, no penalties, no fines. It's, no crews got it's involved. It's going to be okay. It's he's getting fired okay. up. Let him go. <laughs> Let him go. Uh, what do you think about the race itself? Because, I mean, that happened too. Yeah, lots of fireworks afterwards. But I thought that the race itself, it was the best race we saw all year long. Yeah. This battle with Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson, Denny haunted him for 10 or 15 laps. And finally, you see on the last lap, Larson gets barely into the outside wall. Denny gets into his left rear. Both of them were able to go on, but the car controlled by Kyle Larson. And the irony in all this, guys, is that if you just watched the race yesterday, Kyle Larson was in the exact same position coming off turn four. John Hunter Nemechek's on his inside. The difference is Larson was able to continue on here, won the race, where at Kansas, he came up short, uh, and Denny was able to go on and win. But the last two races we've had in, in, in NASCAR, the, the Xfinity race and the Cup Series race, I mean, they have been as good as you can get. No breaking doubt. news. Kyle Larson has car control. That's Shocking, Yeah, right? that's that's the breaking <laughs> news. All right, let's head out to the racetrack because we're, of course, not the only ones that are dressed up today. Chris Myers, Clint Moyer. My goodness, those ties are like as big as, uh, I don't know, your necks. They're, well, they're, Clint, they're Chris working. Chris doesn't look a whole lot different than he does any other week here. <laughs> you, you know, Shannon, I was waiting for this to come back in style. Yes. And it, and it, and I, uh, so, hey, uh, and happy Mother's Day, Shannon. Absolutely. And especially, especially working moms I mean they're always working but working on an actual work day to you and, and all of those watching all right so I never thought I'd make a Peaky Blinders reference but what do you think do you like what'd you say early about if you put a, a red nose in a barrel we could well, be I really didn't know I, I'm a kind of a cross I'm torn between needing big shoes and a red nose or a Tommy gun you know back in 1940 <laughs> oh, yeah, which day. by the way you're racing today's day and age you might need a Tommy gun now. I'm telling you it's been yeah. fist to cup for these boys but it really wasn't you're gonna go back to that I agree with you Larry somewhat the guy in the yellow shirt, I'm a fan, no different than anybody else. But, man, this trip or something, let them have a little bit of fun before you step in there. A little bit jump to the gun of that situation. But, nonetheless, takes me back to Kansas. My home track, passionate about that. Jamie's home track. It was a spectacular track. We have boxes. Everybody has different boxes in their opinions, what makes a good race, what doesn't. That race last weekend at Kansas Speedway checked every single one of those boxes with the extra credit boss of the fight afterwards. All right, so punch back, throw back. Uh, what about the 75th? I mean, just taking all this in, the atmosphere, I know you've been excited all weekend here. Throwback weekend, very special when we come to Darlington, but this time, 75th anniversary. It goes back to 1948, the reason we're dressed like this. All the 75 drivers, the best of the best right here um, this weekend or here if they're present we've seen them such a neat thing to see the recognition of those guys and what they've meant to this sport that means a lot to all of us everybody up and down the garage area when those heroes come down here they take notice everybody over there shaking their hands and showing that appreciation that's what I love the most about this which by the way is at the most historic track perfect tie into this racetrack at Darlington well, and with the paint schemes and the legendary drivers this is like a NASCAR wax museum coming to life it, it really is. And then the racing, of course, will be fun. We're, we don't go as far back as the 40s, but this is the original. Even our card, that's the original Fox Sports logo. We've come a long way uh, since then. We're just getting started live here in Darlington. The fans are soaking it all up. It's in the 80s. The humidity is thick. Through the roof. But so are the memories. We're just getting started. You stay with us. And again, happy Mother's Day to all. The track that's too hard to tame is here. And race day is giving it three cheers. And we start with a legendary finish that once took place here. Two of the greatest showmen at this track are back to tell the tale of the tape. Speaking of reigns, the king himself has a story to share about his famed family and the first ever NASCAR race. Plus, we're keeping the excitement alive with a long lineup of coveted stars, from Hall of Fame drivers to Hollywood's hottest band of brothers. We've got you covered till we go green. In April 1964, Ford introduced the Mustang to a waiting world that didn't know what they'd been missing. The Mustang was the first of a new class of vehicle called Pony Cars, named after the Mustang, of course. The long hood, short deck proportions gave it the look of a sports car. And you could order up the performance to match. This one has the 260 cubic inch V8 that it was born with, along with the C4 automatic transmission. 
Eddie and Len Wood, well, they caught Mustang fever right away, along with the rest of us. Did you ever get pulled over by one of these? Not exactly this model, but I've, I've had a lot of those black and silver cars behind me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a much later generation. Now we're up to 1993. Uh, this was originally an all-black car. It's got a five-liter V8, and then it's been uh, upgraded to uh, North Carolina Highway Patrol specs. Len Wood's got to have a good Mustang memory for us. Well, I was nine years old when they came out. It was a, a revolutionary car for that time, and it was uh, the car to have. Awesome. So here we are at 2003. Uh, this one with a Vortex Supercharger, one of only 281 built, uh, bought because this was the development mule for them. This is the end of Generation 4. So now we come to next generation, the 2024 GT. That's the pace car for this weekend's race. How big is the want uh, for one of these? <laughs> the want factor for me is extremely high. I mean, it's bad to the bone. It's it's really, really fast. Just the looks of the car, to me, it just screams Mustang. And there's a lot of features in this Mustang that are uh, really race car inspired, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, this thing looks so fast. Just, I mean, just sitting still. I agree. You think they'd mind? I'm going to well, close my eyes and look the other way, and we'll beg for forgiveness, right? Instead of permission. That's I the like plan. that. wonder what this red button does. <laughs> Ooh. See you later. I guess a red button starts the car. Okay. There's Hall of Famer uh, Leonard Wood. That team is sitting on 99 cup wins right now, eight of those at Darlington. NASCAR legends, Hall of Famers all over the place in Darlington. It is a hot weekend as well for all those folks. It's going to be about mid-80s at race time, but Jamie Mack told me it's the dew point that you want to look at, and that's about 64 to 69%, so that's going to be pretty spicy inside those race cars. Uh, hot outside the cars, hot inside the cars, and today, while everybody else is uh, really kind of throwing back, the drivers in the cars are certainly not about to hang up some newer technology that will help keep them cool inside those race cars. For more on that, let's check in with Regan Smith. Well, Shannon, good afternoon, and you are right. It is warm here today. It is muggy in Darlington, as it always is in Darlington, South Carolina, when we come here, which got me curious about a piece of technology that we see these drivers wearing all the time now. We see them put these cool vests on before they get in the car, and then they got this hose that just kind of flops around and is just carrying around with them, and I thought, where does this go? So Josh Highcap from the one car, Ross Chastain, he's going to help me out here. We're going to uh, we're gonna plug this in, and what this is is the cool box that these drivers get. The It's basically water that flows through their shirt and through their system. We got it wired up to where we can turn it on and uh, get a little check out of how much cooler it's going to cool me down here. And I'm starting, I'm starting to feel it flow through here. I, I like this. That, Shannon, this is this is perhaps one of the best things that has hit the series in a long time for the drivers. It's it's getting cold. I'm uh, I, I'm I'm chilling off pretty nicely. I know uh, Jamie McMurray in the studio. He's been able to wear this, and uh, I have not. I might. Can we take this, Josh? Can we take this to to pit road with us today? Is that okay? Can I use that out there? Yeah, I think this is our extra one. You can definitely have it. There we go, Shannon. There you go. If you I, can't find me during pit stops, I'm going to be sitting on pit road with this nice little this nice little device right next to me. Yeah, if you get thirsty, just punch a hole in it. You know you. Can get some water I'm in there. I'm not sure you want to drink that no, water. No, not that water. Um, how valuable are these things, Jamie? Yeah, I think it's probably the, the best uh, invention that it wasn't developed for NASCAR, but that they've brought over to NASCAR for the drivers. You know, we discuss a lot about heart rate, and the, one of the things that elevates your heart rate inside the car is when you get hot, your heart starts pumping harder to, to cool your skin down, skin being your, your largest organ. And so I have done a lot, like when I was racing, um, checking my body temperature during the races. The cars are 130, 135 degrees inside. You would actually race with a fever. We'd have 102, 103 oh, wow. degree temperature, your, your core temperature, um, just from being sitting inside this oven for the whole time. This device, though, being able to cool you down, lowers your heart rate, and it plays such a key role in a race like today where you're going to run so close to the wall. If you get your heart rate down, you get cooled down, you're not worried about that. You're able to focus more and, and do your job. I never quit learning. I had no idea my skin was an organ. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> your largest <laughs> organ. Yeah. My largest yeah. organ. So in the 80s, we didn't have those. What we would do on a pit stop, we would get give the driver a garden hose and he would spray himself down while we were changing four tires oh but God. you had to make sure and run that hot water out of that hose first that had been laying there on the ground my biggest problem on a pit box 
the fans they had blowing on me, we kept kicking the circuit breakers. <laughs> yeah, a little cool, and the ice cream would melt, too, up there on the pit box. All right, still to come, a look back at what many call the greatest finish in NASCAR history, Ricky Craven, Kurt Busch. It does not matter how many times you watch it. It's spectacular. The flashback is straight ahead on FS1. What a weekend in Darlington. There's our Hall of Famer, Jeff Gordon. We're going to catch up with him when race day returns. That's awesome. You guys feel that? Yeah. How could you not? It's a beautiful and warm feeling of nostalgia. The type of feeling you can only get when you're feeling at home. But what makes that even more special is that you can make home anywhere. For many of you NASCAR fans, I'm sure you feel most at home at the track. Or maybe watching at home just on the couch surrounded by your family. Maybe it's the smell of barbecue. Or you feel most at home at your favorite restaurant. Exactly. Which for us is the one we named after our great grandmother because her cooking always gave us that feeling. It reminds us all of home. Today, we want to wish a happy Mother's Day to our mom and all the mothers out there for all the love, hard work, and determination that you've shown us all from the stage to the finish line. Thank you for making Anywhere We Are With You feel like home. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yes, welcome back. A very happy Mother's Day to all the Jonas Brothers. A new album titled The Album is out now. You can see some of the cars are saying happy Mother's Day. We got moms at the racetrack, and this is our opportunity in here to say happy Mother's Day to our mothers. Uh, Valerie, my mother, my stepmother, Nanette, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you, Thank to you. my wife, Linda, my Thank daughter, you. Brooke. And we have so many ladies that are here behind the scenes that are moms, not spending it with their family, spending it with us. Happy Mother's Day to all of those. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to, uh, to my mom. I as I look at some of these drivers uh, at the track with their mothers, I think of all the memories of, of being with my mom at Darlington uh, on Mother's Day. And obviously, Christy, uh, great mother to both uh, Carter and Hazel. So happy Mother's Day. There you go. You got it in. There it is. And of course, this is the 124th race at Darlington Raceway. There have been so many special moments over the years, including the one that's considered by many to be the greatest finish, not just in Darlington history, but in the history of the sport. It was 20 years ago, the spring of 2003. It's going to be a drag race. I'm Ricky Craven, and I'm one half of this great story. I made up my mind that if I could only win one race in my career, I wanted it to be at the toughest track on the circuit, and I went to work. I'm Kurt Busch, and I'm the other half of this story. Darlington is something very, very special. It has the speed of a super speedway and requires the technique of a short track. But at the same time, which is no, rule number one, the racetrack is in charge. Race the racetrack. That's your biggest competition, is not the competitors. It's this mile and a third racetrack. You have two drivers, each trying to make a name for themselves, and both refusing to lose. To go. Somebody's got to give, get into turn one. Nobody. But when I watch these two drivers in those closing laps, they forgot about it being Darlington. You're just going to do whatever you need to do. You're going to do whatever it takes to win. The back of the car came loose. He retaliated. And I, I came to the realization, he's not going to allow me to get by. So uh, one and two, I'm fine. I came off the accelerator here because it's not going to happen. But three and four is where the magic was. This is where I froze. Kurt Busch saw what happened the lap before. He's not going to give up the top side. I have enough momentum to make another attempt. Look at the run Craven gets right there. Right there, that wiggle. I'm full throttle. And this is where I set it. It's going to be a drag race. I turn as hard left as I can. They touch, they touch. I don't know how you combine racing and wrecking into one word, but that's what they were doing. I knew I needed to go to, to victory lane and just give Ricky a hug like, dude, we just, something just happened. Kurt Busch is going to victory lane and he's not going to be a happy camper. And at the last second, he says, that was awesome. <laughs> I knew that there was something special that happened within all that. I got to experience hitting a walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. You know, I think you, you, you look at the grandstands and I think the fans on their feet speak for the significance of this finish. They were able to experience it along with me. 
in a lot of people's opinion, this was, well, it was among the greatest finishes of NASCAR 75 years. And I'm grateful I was a part of it. But it's so emotional because I know that I gave everything that I could to win that race. And what's even tougher right now, just looking at this is, that was 2003. I've never won at Darlington. It was my last win. It was the only time my children were in victory lane with me. I didn't know that that was the, the bottom of the ninth inning. But I think we all knew it was the bottom of the first inning for Kurt. And if I could tell myself something as, as a younger, you gave everything you could. And I'm actually proud of you for the way that you handled it. Of all the race calls that we've been able to have at a checkered flag, I don't think we'll ever be able to top this one right here. And I bet you 20 to 25 years from now, we'll still be talking about this finish because you just don't have finishes like this at Darlington Raceway. What a finish, what a race, and what a piece to hear from both of those guys. Take a look at there. They are at Darlington being honored. Kurt Busch, Ricky Craven, Monica Palumbo has the throwback sprint <laughs> fire yeah. suit on. That looks so great. But those guys having some fun out there and really being celebrated and honored for what an incredible finish that was. I know you were in the booth. I know we just heard from you in the piece. What else do you have to say that you haven't already said about that moment? Yeah, I mean, I have to repeat what I said there at the end of that feature. You know, Mike Joy, Darrell Waltrip, and myself stood shoulder to shoulder in the NASCAR on Fox broadcast booth for 15 years, and that goes to the top of the chart. And will always, at least in our mind, so many layers to what had went on there. We had a 50-something lap green flag run to the end. Both those cars were sliding around. That man right there, Kurt Busch, he lost his power steering completely with 10 laps to go, but I think as they came all four, going down the back straightaway, there is no way Ricky Craven's going to catch him, <laughs> but he did. But when they got together on the front stretch, had Ricky not turned right and stayed in the throttle, I think Kurtz had the momentum to inch him back. That's one. We'll, we'll be sitting here 20 years from now showing it again. I asked you where you were. You said probably coming off turn two, but what do you <laughs> yeah. remember so, about that? So what I say as I watched that piece is that everybody in the field today and, and every kid racing a go-kart or a quarter midget or, or a stock car right now locally wants to have that moment. You uh -huh. want to be put in that position. You think about it at the end of one of these long races for it to come down and be able to run back and forth. And I remember as soon as the race was over getting out and and, and one of the crew guys saw me, he's like, dude, you're not going to believe the way this finished. And then to be able to go back and watch that, it's pretty cool. I'll it was, repeat one it one finishes. more time. Point zero zero two <laughs> one thousandths of a second. It's a drag race, and it's a drag race out to the track right now. Josh Sims is hanging with one of the legends, Hall of Famer, and, of course, a guy hoping to one day join the list of the greatest. Josh? Well, thanks, Shannon. And yeah, here with the two most recent drivers of the 24 car, the Hall of Famer, Jeff Gordon and William Byron. And Jeff, I want to start with you because the special paint scheme that William has actually honors your car from 1998 when you were doing the 50th anniversary paint scheme. So what memories bring up when you see that? Well, first of all, just the super cool paint scheme. I mean, back uh, in those days, you know, DuPont was was creating these wild paints that, that had the iridescence to it, and that was called a chrome illusion. And, and so, you know, I immediately saw that uh, on, on William's car and said, man, I always love that paint, so it's great to see that back. And then... 50th year, uh, 50th anniversary back then, now 75th anniversary, hard to believe 25 years have gone by that fast, but uh, man, I, I'm just so proud of William and this 24 team. I think they got an excellent shot of, of doing what we did a lot in 1998, which was get to victory lane. That was definitely a special season, and William, with that special paint scheme, with not just yeah. people like Jeff Gordon here, but all the legends from the 75th anniversary, what's this weekend like to be a part of it? Yeah, it's super cool. I mean, that first off, that paint scheme by Exalta just looks amazing. I think it, it really kind of brings back the history of the sport and just uh, brings back the legacy of the 24. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've had probably the best uh, throwback paint schemes over the years with all that Jeff uh, did in the past. So it's uh, hopefully we can get it to victory lane. You know, last year was, was good, but we want to do better this year. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we're up there at the front towards the end. Well, thank you both, gentlemen. And Shannon, back to you.
Thank you so much, Josh. We do have an update on another Hendrick Motorsports driver. That, of course, is Alex Bowman, driver, the number 48, missing his third race this weekend uh, with that back injury that he suffered in a sprint car race. He spoke to the media out at Darlington just about 30 minutes ago. He said he's still recovering, and basically there is still no timetable for his return. Josh Berry, of course, in that 48 car for the last three weeks. We're continuing to think and pray for you, Alex Bowman. Up next, Tara Libani and Martin Truex Jr. This pair of champions and Darlington winners compare notes and have some fun with our crew right here on race day. Darlington throwback weekend. There's Matt Kenseth, 2003 champion, Hall of Fame inductee. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. for Terry Labonte and the whole five team for winning this race. We're here live on the track in Darlington and celebrating 75th year with a couple of champions, one on the pole for today and one, how about that, Terry Labonte, your first win, your last win at the granddaddy of the ball is what they used to call this place. What would you do in between all that time? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I thought I had it figured out after the first win, but obviously I didn't, so it took me a while to get the second win down here, but what a great racetrack. I love it down here. And Martin, you're on the pole, and uh, how cool, though, by, backstage a minute ago, I saw, like, Bobby Allison talk at a Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Burton, Jimmy Johnson. You had a chance. Growing up, uh, how about a guy you wanted to meet, driver, paint scheme you loved? Man, all of them. I, Dale Earnhardt was my main guy, but I love Terry. I love DW. I love so many of those guys. Just watching the way they race, just hard-nosed guys, put on some awesome shows over the years, made me a race fan for life, and was what got me into racing. You know, for me, Chris, it was it was the, the original Iceman, right? You, <laughs> Martin Truex, so that this is today's day and age, Iceman. Both have very calm demeanors, both very effective on that racetrack, both champions, and more importantly, both of these boys know how to get around this racetrack. Martin, really cool racetrack, huh? Really cool. My favorite track. I love coming here. Such a challenge. Been lucky enough to win here a couple times on the pole today with our auto owners, Camry. Feeling good about it, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. Yeah, Toyota's in good shape on the front row. Uh, Terry, how about the drivers of today? When you watch guys like Martin, some of the other younger drivers stepping up here, uh, what what comes to mind? Uh, that's a, the that's a reason why we retired. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, look at these guys. I mean, they're awesome. You know, they do a great job. How about the fighting uh, the afterwards, or at least the pushing around? Do you say, hey, that's the way we did it, or have they lightened uh, up a that's bit? That's how they used to do it a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah. Did you ever see this cat I, and Earnhardt <laughs> try to get out of Bristol a few times? They used to use tire irons back in, back in the day. <laughs> no, man. I tell you, you know, it's funny when he walked up, guys. Martin and I both go rookie year. We literally raced on the same racetrack with Terry Labonte, what that meant to us, Martin. It was so cool. <laughs> Unbelievable to race against those guys. And then just today with the celebration of the 75 greatest drivers, to be in that room with guys like this, man, what an awesome feeling. What a day. Never thought it could ever be possible to sit in a room with guys like him. It's really cool. When you came in, Terry, who was that guy for you? Oh, gosh, David Pearson. Oh, you know, yep. you come to Darlington down here, it was David Pearson. Yeah. He had won so many times here. And you could just watch him. It's like, oh, man, you know, how he gets around this track so good. It was awesome. And, of course, guys like Richard Petty, Bobby Allison. So, you know, for me to start out and race against those guys was just amazing. Yeah, what how about the family legacy? <clears throat> both you guys have family legacies yep. deep in, embedded in this sport, Terry. Your brother, both of you guys champions. Pretty cool. Yeah. It really is. And, uh you know, we started out, and of course, you, you never know what's going to happen. You know, I was just hoping to go go run a couple of races, and ended up, you know, got to do it for several years. Then Bobby came along, got to run in the Xfinity Series, and then moved up to the Cup Series, and you know, was successful. So it was really a it was really cool to just see my little brother do as good as he did. And once was a pit crew guy for you, right? Yes, he was. Yep. He was a catch can man. How about that? He worked <laughs> in my shop. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. And Martin, yep. you come here on, on a roll here. Uh, you started earlier the year, right? Where we go back to uh, the race out in, out in L.A. at the Coliseum. Uh, how about championship big picture hopes? And, and today, how important a race like this with the legend standing by watching in person? Yeah, I mean, every race is important. But obviously for me, this one's, you know, top of the list. I love coming here and 
such a heartbreaking loss last year when we were here for the Southern 500, leading late and having an engine issue. So after a little bit of redemption, but feeling really good about our season, our team's doing a great job. Feel like we're right where we need to be. We're fast every week. Had a shot again last week until yeah. we got some damage. So we're doing what we need to do. Uh, we got the best pit stall today, which should be a help. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can keep this momentum going. Yeah, well, good luck. Thanks for stopping by. Thank it's you. always good to Terry, good luck to you. And congratulations you. again. It's really cool to be Thanks. part of this. I, I know the fans appreciate it. 12 years ago, Regan Smith uh, won right here and was happy with uh, to congratulate his mom on, on Mother's Day. And he's standing by with this. Regan? Well, Chris, throwback weekend, and of course, having Bill Elliott, Chase Elliott here, a father-son on the 75, 75 greatest list. Chase, of course, you're going to be out there today. You're running that awesome-looking number nine of your dad's paint scheme. How special is that for you? Yeah, it's been a it's been a really cool weekend uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, that that car, you know, I wasn't around for the heyday of the 80s, right? So that was really the car that that I remember him driving, and and candidly, the reason and the car that made me want to try to do this so um, it's been really cool it looks great on track and and to be able to collaborate with with Lumar and and get Ray's nine in there just all the all the things that kind of had to come together to make it work has been really cool um, I hope it goes as fast as uh, you know as I hope it's as good as it looks in the race today so we'll we'll see but it's been a great honor and uh, certainly one I'll remember Bill, you see that race car back on the racetrack. What are the memories it brings back? And and you've got a busy day. Today. You're going to be up in the booth with us later on. Well, that kind of rejuvenated my career, I would say, with coming in with Ray with the Dodge Dale back in the you know early 2000s, and you know us growing the Dale and winning at Homestead at the end of 01, and then coming back and winning Indy in in 02. That was. Um, Pretty special time in my life. So, yeah, and then looking forward to the booth here at the third segment. We'll see how that goes. Good luck today on the booth there. It gets a little bit crazy up there. I know that, Chris. Chase looking for that first Darlington win. It's going to be fun to watch that number nine on the track today. All right, thank you. Regan, love the suspenders. Father-son combo, one of seven that are part of the 75 legends that are honored. And this is the diamond anniversary of NASCAR. And our Coca-Cola family of drivers checking the list. Chase Elliott starts mid-pack. LaJoy Logano won this race last year. Denny Hamlin with his four Darlington wins. It's the most of any active driver. We'll continue live from the scene to bring you closer to it all. History, we're looking back on history in the making. There, Richard Petty, by the way, saw me because I wore that outfit back in the, and he wasn't kidding. Uh, we'll ask uh, current drivers uh, what they're looking forward to seeing here as we've already talked to some of those about that. Welcome to Throwback Weekend, old school racetrack here in Darlington. All these legends of the sport, the pioneers, the lady in black, the track too tough to tame. I think out of all the guys that are coming this weekend on the 75 list, the one I'm most excited to see is probably Randy LaJoy. Uh, he's been a part of my career for a really long time. I could say my dad, but I see him all the time. So uh, it's been cool to see guys like Ron Hornaday, Bobby Allison. Donnie Allison, and some of your favorites you watched growing up. Carl Edwards. It's a guy that I've always admired for his driving ability and the way he handled his business on and off the track. My old teammate, Carl Edwards, obviously everybody knows he kind of just went off the grid, so it'll be cool to have him back and uh, and just get to chat with him. Ernie Urban's coming, so I'm excited. I raced with his son growing up a little bit, so I haven't seen him in a while, so uh, those guys I'm probably most looking forward to seeing. The sports world loves the USFL. This is America's newest phenomenon. Saturday, Birmingham takes on Michigan. Then, Sunday, New Jersey battles Houston. Are you kidding me? The USFL, Saturday and Sunday at 4 on Fox. Seventy-five years of greatness. Record makers and breakers. Jimmy Johnson wins his seventh championship. <laughs> Confetti and champagne showers. These memories and these faces, they've defined the sport. A three-time NASCAR Swift Cup champion, Tony Stewart wins it. The 75 best to ever put the pedal to the metal. The greatest to ever do it from the green to the checker. A sport where numbers mean everything. One of 75? Well, that's pretty damn good if you ask me. I was born to 
This year, we honor them and pay our respects to everything they've done behind the wheel. Oh my God, guys! He's like a We're raising our glasses the way they've raised trophies. About to know the truth. 75. This time, it's so much more than another number. I was born to it's history. Live from the scene in Darlington, thanks for being with us. We celebrate NASCAR's 75th anniversary season. And to see them and meet them up close, here's Jamie Little. And the moment you have been waiting for, it is my honor to introduce the 75 greatest drivers. in the West. He competed in the first Southern 500 here in 1950. He is the 1986 West Series champion, Herschel McGriff. The King owns a NASCAR record 200 victories and a record tying seven NASCAR Cup Series championships, Richard Petty. The 1983 Cup Series champion scored an incredible 84 Cup wins in his legendary career. He also won a modified championship, two modified special division championships, Bobby Allison. He's a member of the famed Alabama gang. He won the 1956 modified title and three consecutive late model sportsman championships, Red Farmer. A legendary modified star and six time modified series champion, including four straight from 1974 to 1977, Jerry Cook. A charter member of Hendrick Motorsports with 18 wins in the NASCAR Cup Series, including the 1986 Daytona 500, Jeff Bodine. Awesome Bill won the 1988 NASCAR Cup Series Championship and 44 Cup races, as well as 16-time most popular driver, Bill Elliott. Four-time Cup Series champion and winner of 93 Cup Series races, including three Daytona 500s, Jeff Gordon. He won 15 Cup Series races, including the 1991 Daytona 500, Ernie Irvin. <laughs> 1999 NASCAR Cup Series champion and winner of 32 Cup races, including three Daytona 500s, Dale Jarrett. <laughs> He won the NASCAR Cup Series championship twice in 84 and then again in 1996, Terry Labonte. The 1989 NASCAR Cup Series championship and winner of 55 Cup races, Rusty Wallace. Known as the mayor for his popularity and respect in the garage, Jeff won 21 NASCAR Cup races and 27 series races in the Xfinity Series. Jeff Burton.
the king of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series with four championships and 51 wins in the trucks, Ron Hornaday Jr. A 21-time Cup Series race winner capturing the Cup Series championship in 2000 and the Xfinity Series championship in 1991, Bobby Labonte. He won back-to-back -back championships in the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 1996 and 1997, Randy LaJoy. An expert at NASCAR's biggest tracks with 10 cup race wins, including back-to-back -back Daytona 500s in 94 and 95, Sterling Marlin. Championships in both the NASCAR Xfinity Series and NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, as well as 19 Cup Series victories, Greg Biffle. The 15-time most popular driver won 26 times in the Cup Series, including two Daytona 500s. He's won back-to-back -back Xfinity championships in 98 and 99, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He won 28 Cup Series races and 38 Xfinity Series races, as well as the 2007 Xfinity Series Championship, Carl Edwards. An immensely popular driver during his career, capturing 18 NASCAR Series victories, Casey Kane. The 2003 NASCAR Cup Series champion, he won 39 cup races, including two Daytona 500s, Matt Kenseth. Seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion and winner of 83 races, Jimmy Johnson. A 34-time winner in the Cup Series, including the 2017 Daytona 500 and the 2004 NASCAR Cup Series championship, Kurt Busch. And the 2017 NASCAR Cup Series champion and winner of back-to-back -back titles in the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2004 and 2005, he's your pole sitter today, Martin Truex Jr. <laughs> Returning to the NASCAR Cup Series today, he has 18 Cup Series wins, including the 2008 Daytona 500 and 51 poles. Ryan Newman. The reigning champion with NASCAR Cup Series titles in 2018 and 2022. He has 32 Cup Series victories, including the 2015 Daytona 500. Joey Logano. The 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion and 20-time NASCAR Cup Series race winner, Kyle Larson. He's now a co-owner of RFK Racing. He's the 2012 NASCAR Cup Series champion and the 2010 Xfinity Series champion, Brad Keselowski. Competing in his final season, he's won 60 NASCAR Cup Series races, the 2014 Cup Series champion and two-time Xfinity Series champion, Kevin Harvick. He won his 49th career race last Sunday, a total that includes three Daytona 500s and three Southern 500s. Denny Hamlin.
NASCAR's reigning five-time most popular driver, the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series champion, the 2014 Xfinity champion, Chase Elliott. With a total of 227 NASCAR National Series race wins and a stellar career, including two Cup Series championships and the 2009 Xfinity Series title, Kyle Busch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, NASCAR 75 greatest drivers. We are proud to honor you, NASCAR 75. All right, thank you, Jamie, drivers. and thank you, legends. Coming up live from Darlington as we count you down to the start of the race. Talk to some of those drivers like Dale Jarrett from the past, a three-time Daytona 500 champ. And one of the hot stories, Ross Chastain will join us live. Also, setting up NASCAR, its roots with the Petty family, racing royalty. Moments ago here, what do you think? Wait a minute, how'd this happen? They were fighting last week. Now they're almost hugging it out. Thanks for staying with us on race day. Style and NASCAR are synonymous. You look good. Absolutely. You play good. You get paid good, baby. The timeless flair built into the folklore. Trends fade, but are never lost. These aren't jerseys, they're identities. Paying respects to the legends of before and the stars on their way. Because rebels always look cool. A taste that transcends the track. NASCAR apparel has gone from track attire to streetwear. Bold prints and bolder statements. From vintage stores in LA to the boulevard in Talladega. Fashion week to speed weeks. Often loud. Sometimes minimal, but always in style. For NASCAR fans, every type of fashion is, is always in style. We're live here on race day on FS1 slash Fox, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar from Darlington, South Carolina. Counting it out to the race today. We celebrate 75 years of the sports story time here. Kyle and Richard Petty, they tell us how their family got hooked on racing and watch closely. Things could get quite animated. Okay, as long as we're telling stories. I've been hearing this story my whole life, but let's tell it again. It was a cold, eerie morning in 1949. It was in Charlotte in June. It was hot, hot, hot. Whatever. It's not a story about the weather. This story is about Granddaddy, Lee Petty, and the very first NASCAR race in Charlotte. My daddy always loved cars. The closest he got to racing was watching folks tear out of the service station where he and the other fellows hung out. That's when he heard Bill France was planning a stock car race in Charlotte. And there was a Buick at the service station that he and the boys thought might be a worthy option. So Granddaddy stole it? I'm just going out for some car stuff. What? <laughs> no, he didn't steal it. He buried it. Well, that's what I always heard. They knew what was happening. Daddy talked them into it, and they was gonna split the winnings. My dad's whole life was cars. When the race came along, we all knew we had to be there. The race at Charlotte was really a wild one. Only 11 of the 33 starters finished. True. I heard one car jump the fence and then flew over all the spectators. False. And I remember, even though Glenn Dunaway was flagged the winner, he was disqualified for illegally adjusting his rear springs. And Jim Roper was declared the winner. True. That race was crazy. Granddaddy taped a big number 38 on the door of that car, and from the very start, he never looked back. He was gone. He ran a pretty good race. He'd gotten through about 105 laps, but then, Disaster! He lost control of that Buick Roadmaster, broke a track bar or something, and that car went flying. Doors flew open. It rolled over like four times. Pew, pew, pew. 
Finally, he came to rest somewhere down between turns three and four. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Then you guys had to stick out your thumb. You had to hitchhike all the way back home. No, no, no. My uncle drove us back to 85 miles from Charlotte. What was left of that Buick was hooked on the back of a tow truck. The boys took it just as good as you could hope. Even though he didn't finish, from that moment on, it was settled. The petties were hooked on racing, wondering where it all might go next. You know, I never get tired of hearing this story. Well, I'm getting tired of telling it. <laughs> Yeah, we don't get tired of hearing it either. <laughs> uh, live with Clint Boyer, Chris Myers here in Darlington. Oh, unbelievable story. That's what this sport is founded on right there. I borrowed the car, by the way. Didn't borrow the car. I love the stories <laughs> from the King. Legendary guys, Kyle Petty. Cannot wait to have those two up in the booth with me in this first stage, by the way. Yeah, speaking of the booth, that's where you watch some driver introductions of the King looking out. Here's the lineup of who's going to be joining you. Stage one, Richard Petty with Kyle Petty. Stage two, Carl Edwards will join you. Stage <laughs> Three, Bill Elliott, nonstop action throughout the race. So before Carl Edwards moves up to the booth to call the race, he is the, alive, by the way. Oh yeah, we all, well we all wonder. I mean, I know he's enjoying life. Fans are missing. This Carl is going to be Edwards. a good one. That Bill Elliott, awesome Bill in stage three. But look at him. He is in the present, folks. He is back. 13. Where the hell have you been all these times? All these years. I've been everywhere, been having a lot of fun, but this is special. This is special to be back, to be honored the way that they honored us, 75 drivers, and to be at this racetrack, it's going to be so exciting to watch these guys drive these cars. I think I, I saw the last interview, I think NBC was four years ago maybe, and yeah. they, they asked you, hey, do you miss it? Obviously, you're further away from it now, you're enjoying life, but what do you miss most about racing? I miss exactly what we're going to see here today. I mean, it's just like you and I grew up on the dirt tracks. This is it. This is the pinnacle of driving in a stock car, NASCAR, Darlington, sliding around, managing everything. That's what I miss. You know, Carl, I, I, we, hey, we came in at the same time, right? And I remember you're a challenging race car to drive. You love the challenge. Yes. I remember seeing that in your eye. If it was a racetrack that was a true challenge, you were yeah. the man for the job. This racetrack, very challenging track. Well, and that's what's so exciting you know, for me to be here at this place is exactly that. I remember the first time here, I thought, there's no, I can't contemplate the entire race. I'm just going to get through this tire run, get my next <laughs> set, because it's so hard. And that's the challenge you're going to see today. Yeah, you, you were able to win here. And then your signature backflip, how many times <laughs> away from have people run up to you somewhere and said, hey, I remember the backflip? A lot. Can yeah, you still pull lot. it off? Yeah, I mean, no, we're getting no, up no, there no, a little longer than tooth, Carl. You try one, Clint. I'll try one. Uh, <laughs> and go do this. We have man. A, oh, man, that's yeah. a, Randy carried around that bear oh, yes, There you go. But what that win right there, yes. it was so special. We talked about with Dale Jr. Yep. And, and Matt today. This is, like we said, it's just that tough racetrack. Um, but to answer your question, yes. no, no backflips. No, 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 was no. there anybody today, 75-year anniversary of NASCAR, a lot of legends here today, Carl, need to have your name on that list. Was there one guy, there was always that one, Bobby Allison for me. Every time I saw him, I just felt better about myself. I didn't see him today, but Mark Martin, yeah. that's the guy for me. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, Mark. Really, Midwestern guy. Yes, yeah, Midwestern guy, and he was the guy who would put that work ethic in, and he let me know that hey, you can work hard at being a race car driver, and I respect that. So, congrats awesome. to Mark. Yes. Well, you look great. Enjoy the booth, and, and yeah, you don't of, look like you're retired, yeah, bud. Uh, he's working out. Here? A lot of fans are glad to see you. They're glad you're doing well. So, keep up the good work in your life. All right, I'll see you guys soon. It's gonna yeah, be fun. See you just a little bit. And, and thanks for uh, for all the memories. All right, thanks, Carl. Hey, and by the way, uh, Clint Boyer is still giving away money. This is new, Carl. Oh, I'm, I'm here for that. Yeah, the Super <laughs> Six. No, uh, all right, so $5,000 on the Fox Super Six. So uh, It's let's, free to play. The it question, is literally yeah, all you yeah, got to do is get on this app. Yeah, it's free. Scan, Fox Bet Super Six Stage 2. Scan the QR code. Here's the question, Carl. Help us out. Which of these drivers will have the better finish at the end of this race? Hamlin, Logano, Elliott, Truex, Larson, or Harvick? You Carl, play. it's Carl. Danny Hamlin. It's You're Danny. wrong. Wow. You're okay. wrong. I'm going to tell you that five ball is pretty special. He's pretty good at driving. Just, yeah, so it could be that, but um, I'm just excited to see somebody get this some This is money. what I love. We're going to have fun in that stage, <laughs> yeah. too. Uh, it is on, ladies right. and gentlemen. We're going to let Carl go. He's good. We're there continuing ride arounds with the drivers. We'll continue live more with Clint and I, the points leader at the one-third mark of the season. Ross Chastain will join us, and Dale Jarrett as well. headline the fight Ross Chastain and Noah Gregson oh. Noah and I have a, <laughs> a, a very similar attitude on the racetrack I mean everybody else races super hard but super respectful and you got one 
a field that does help. You guys don't see a lot of the emotion that we carry inside the helmet. Sometimes letting some of that emotion out after the race is, is healthy. If you're worried about getting hurt, you probably shouldn't <laughs> do something on that on the racetrack. Ross gave Noah an opportunity to stand down, and Ross said, okay, you're not, I'm gonna throw a punch. Those are two guys that were looking and willing to fight. Nobody's gonna die in 30 seconds. I say let them have at it. I want security to break them up before they ever get to my car. It's showing your frustration, and that's all right. People need to be put in their place sometimes. I've always been told that swing first, swing hard. So that's what happened. That was a, an exciting aftermath. Ross Chastain will be starting in row three. And we'll be talking to him in just a moment. As soon as he finishes his ride around, we're live in Darlington getting closer to the race with Clint hey, Boyer, hey, Chris Myers, and one of the 75, one of the greats. Uh, and Dale Jarrett with a UPS car with Ross behind us and your old 88 UPS won a lot of races in that. Nice to see you. Thank you. Glad to be here and a fun weekend. Great weekend. Yeah, I first got to get your reaction to who is the uh, who is the troublemaker, the uh, the bad guy, not not only on the track, but after the track that would settle things back in your racing days. Well, you know, I, I mean, we all talk about Dale Earnhardt and what he did, and, and you didn't really see him in, in really scuffles, except others coming to him and, and want to settle it that way. But he didn't get many problems because Earnhardt was a big, strong guy. I mean, he worked on the farm all the time. <laughs> so you wouldn't mess with So him. you had to be careful, but he was the guy that made us all mad uh, and, and want to have those talks, but you go have those talks and then he would convince you that it was your fault that it actually happened somehow. I don't know how I backed into him so many times. Right. Yeah, maybe Ross uh, Chastain needs to do way, that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, could help apparently. him when he gets here. Dale. 75 year history of this this sport uh, obviously a lot of a lot of greats just like yourself your dad everybody uh, part of this special weekend but this racetrack very historical very challenging racetrack cool place for you it really is you know when we talk about NASCAR and the history the 75 years and and celebrating all of this and having all of these great drivers here this weekend couldn't be at a better place and you know one thing from the time that they came here the first time and ran cars and had damn near 100 cars out here, you know, that it, they, it still races the same way. It doesn't matter how many times we've changed the car. This is still the most difficult challenge you have as a race driver here, driving this racetrack and trying to win. Speaking of racers, buddy, you're looking you're pretty fit. You're all hot yeah. rod right here. Bring yeah. back some old memories. You ready? It Get them elbows up? No, no. It brings back great memories. UPS first year is 2001. I was fortunate. Steve Park had a way better car, but I got my car kind of good at the end, was able to pass him and win. So to see this... Uh, uh, really incredible and uh, brought back a lot of good memories. But no, I do not want on the inside of these things. I'll, I'll take, I'm going to drive the pace car and that'll be good enough. Well, well, that's why we're dressed like we're in the 40s, sort of, right? Because <laughs> that's when NASCAR 1948 began. So a lot has changed. The drivers are still doing the same kinds of things. What, what do you notice most about today's drivers, whether the car has changed or some of the great track locations or short tracks, things that we've gone to now? Yeah, I think it's the, the level of talent that is out here from, from the very front of this grid to the back. You, you have a lot of good drivers. You've always had, you know, a certain amount uh, of the field this, that. But this goes all the way back through this, that they are so good. I know how difficult these cars are to drive, as I've talked to these guys. And uh, just to see the level of talent, the commitment that they have, everything that they do, from the gym to the simulators, yeah. doing everything they have to do to try to be as good as they can possibly be this day and time. So that's the driver's side of it. Dale, you were fortunate enough to, you know, generationally be a part of a lot of generations in the cars, too. Which, where do you see this car stacking up through the years and how does that stack up against how you started through the middle part into the end of your career? Yeah, you know, I think that the thing that I see is there's really nobody in this field that drove anything like this coming up to get ready to drive stock cars. So right. I think that's been the biggest challenge. You know, whether we started in late models, whether it was on dirt or asphalt, you, you had some similarities with things you did and what you knew about a car in the field that you were looking for. A lot of these guys were throwing a curveball. The majority of them were throwing a curveball as to what this car does. Ryan Newman kind of explained it to me today in, in about this. I asked him how this car drove after he got back in. He said, drive straight. And that's not, you got corners down here. You have to negotiate. That's a problem. So that, yeah, that's an Dale. issue there. So uh, I think that's the biggest challenge. That well, a lot of the younger drivers learned on, on video games a little yeah. bit, how to, which obviously is a little bit different. But how important is, and he brought up the, the history of the sport, and, and as we get new drivers and new things happen to the sport, to, to stay connected to the past. 
Yeah, you know, you have to do that. We, we, we don't want to get away from what got us here to this point. You know, there were a lot of trials, tribulations, a lot of things that we went through for a lot of years. We have to continue to learn from all of that and be mindful of the people that were there to set the standard before that and then continue that on. And I'm going to lobby a little bit for the young guys here okay. right quick yep. is that we got to get these guys some practice, some test time. You can't learn everything you need to know to become a better race driver in a simulator. You've right. got to give these young guys in particular that come along some more track time. All right, the new the new vice commissioner. <laughs> yeah, we got a job that? for it. How yeah. about, uh, we got so uh, he, he does just put it out. He has a blast with this every week. So we're going to try something. Put it out right. means the cost. You know what put yes. it out means, right? Yes. right? Well, I I well, here's a put it out moment from yesterday's Xfinity race. I don't know if you saw this, but holy cow! Sheldon Creed comes up, gets into the leader, and you know what happens when you wreck at the front of the pack. Folks, that is the big one. It's been since Daytona 2019. Look at that. They're wrecking all over the place. It looked like there was 100 cars on a racetrack. Since Daytona 2019, have we not seen a big one like that? That is a put it out yeah, moment. Well, I hope uh, the guys running today, and Ross Chastain has joined us as promised. Thanks for hustling over yes. here that you're safe today. Hey, we, we have to ask you. We, I saw you sitting near Noah Gregson. Are you guys, I know you guys communicated after last week. Is everything good there? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're good. We had a fun night at Millbridge Monday night, and I was actually in that wreck right behind it. You were? I was able to slow <laughs> way down and basically pit right down by the pit wall and get get through it. <laughs> you know, you were, it was a was that timeout that we just saw there? You two were fighting one week and you were sitting next no, to each other. No, we're buddies. We're just we're hanging buddies, out. Right. I was listening to his music. He had uh, li Lil Baby playing or something. I didn't know what was we, happening, we, but he had some songs playing I'd never heard of. Before we let you go, drivers had their thoughts on maybe let him fight like hockey. There should be a time limit. What, what do you think? Should afterwards, should guys settle it themselves or what would you like NASCAR to do? Well, look, it's a bit ironic me saying it, but I don't want to get punched. And that's why I grabbed his arms and I told him that. Man, I was trying to get you to stop. Um, no, look, the security did great. Um, worked out even better for me. But, uh, look, I, I don't want to be in fights. I just want to talk. Yep, got you a pretty good hot ride today, yeah. huh? Well, yeah. Man, yeah. this UPS Wax Racing Chevy is... Uh, Representing. Uh, it's an honor to have your paint scheme, and it's. Uh, there you go. Yes. You said you'd have the fastest car that day. We may have the fastest one today. Uh, do the right go. thing Girl. with it. Thanks for coming by. Good luck to you, Ross, and have fun yeah. in the pace yeah. car. Thank He's you. Got yeah. To do, uh, Clint, you got to head up to the broadcast booth with got an array of people joining <laughs> you, and uh, we will continue here live. Let's check in right now on the grid with Michael Walter. Hello, Chris, and thank you for checking in on the grid. I feel like I need to be more sophisticated today because I got on this fancy yeah. hat. How you doing? Yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, how you doing? Um, I'm, I'll be doing better with the hat. No, I'm, I think we're doing good, Mike. We, uh, our Sunny Delight Ford Mustang was very bright and also handled pretty good. So hopefully it's the same today as it was yesterday. So just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms, my wife. My wife, happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, the family. Bubba, joining in. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms, my mom, my sister, my mother-in-law. You're starting way up there, do you know that? I'm talking legend cars. Okay, have you been racing lately? Yeah, I raced last night. Awesome, how'd you do? Uh, crashed. Crashed. <laughs> how are you? Happy Mother's Day. Good luck to you. Thank you. Sweet, thank you, Kevin. Yep. See, we're Austin Dillon. Hey, buddy, how you doing? When I think of uh, Darlington, I think of RCR. Uh, that's a good thing. I mean, I, I hope tonight that's, well, we got a Coke here shooken up, but uh, it's a good start. You know, maybe we'll shake it up on the track tonight. Yeah. Um, family's here. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's happy Mother's Day to all of them. Whitney's uh, really close to having that baby. We're getting to have number two. Uh, how, how soon? Uh, three weeks. Wow. Yeah. That, stuff. that looks like it could be any day. day. Good to see you, Austin. Thanks for your time. Eric Amarola, I like your throw rack scheme. I used to race with this cat on this scheme. How you doing? I'm doing all right. There's a pretty cool picture of you and him hugging on this paint scheme, isn't there? It's probably one of my greatest memories of my whole career was being able to do that. So uh, thank you for their memory and have a good day today. Yeah, man, this is an awesome paint scheme. I remember jumping up and down uh, in the hotel uh, watching this race. So, uh, yeah, it brings back a lot of memories for us. Awesome. We're going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to have more pre-race action. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. Everybody's gonna know my story. The lady in black. Your biggest opponent is the racetrack. NASCAR's oldest super speedway. One of the crown jewel races. Her unique egg shape and bank turns. This place is a beast. 
Skylines at higher speeds. Side by side. Allison takes the lead. Oh, into the wall. It's a spectacle honoring 75 years of legends. Richard Petty wins the Southern 500. Tradition and greatness. That is how you do it. That's an ass right there. But despite her appeal, she's still too tough to take. You gotta race this old girl. So finding your way to victory lane here, well... Satisfaction is like no other. Darlington victory is number one. This isn't just a race. This is Darlington. Live in Darlington, South Carolina. Thanks for being with us for NASCAR on Fox FS1. The command to start engines will be given by NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. And again, to all you moms out there, enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Mother's Day to you, and thanks for being with us. And now, race fans, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as Lakewood High School Junior ROTC presents our nation's colors. And here to offer today's invocation on Mother's Day, please welcome the mother of Chad and Ross Chastain, Susan Chastain. Let us pray. Lord, it's such an honor to gather before you today to uh, love on our moms a little extra today in honor of Mother's Day. May we be the godly example for our kids you would have us to do, as you talked about in Deuteronomy 6, to love you with all our heart, strength, and soul, and instill that in our kids. May we find someone today, if they're having a little bit of uh, struggle with today, may we find a kind word in your name to speak to them. And this we pray in your name. Amen. And now to perform our national anthem, please welcome from the United States Air Force Band, Master Sergeant Ashley Keeks. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the The blending of young and old, the blending of what's old and what's new. It's going to be fun. NASCAR at Fox FS1. Enjoy the race, everybody. One minute, we're going 110 down to Sandy Beach in Florida. The next, we're doing over 210 on a super speedway. How did we get here? 75 years of progress, of twisted metal and clashes of will, all with one thing in mind. Get out front, here they come the and stay there. Side by side, Because out there is where the future is. NASCAR, always forward. The race to win my cash is on with the Fox Bet Super 6 Stage 2 contest. Download the free-to-play Super 6 app and pick six Stage 2 outcomes for your shot to win. It's been a great day of celebrating history, but now there's a race to be run and won. Will it be one of these of today's stars who ends up in victory lane at the track too tough to tame? Fox Sports welcomes you to NASCAR's original super speedway, Darlington, South Carolina, for the Goodyear 400 on FS1. And today, our guest analysts will include the king, Richard Petty and Kyle Petty. Royalty. In stage two, where's he been? 
Carl Edwards will join us and explain. And Bill Elliott returns as our stage three analyst. So good last year. Excited to get him back here this year. Had a lot of fun with him last year. Hi, everybody, wearing these uncomfortable winter suits. <laughs> Mike Joy, Clint Boyer. But hey, we're here to have a big time. Not only to celebrate NASCAR's history at a place like no other, but to celebrate the kind of racing we've enjoyed this season. Man, it's been fantastic racing. Came right off of Kansas Speedway. We saw it all. Checked every single box, including that extra credit box and flight afterwards. But this weekend, 75th anniversary of our sport. A lot of legends here. So neat to see them being recognized and the tie-in to this historic racetrack Mike perfect setting and there they were as they were introduced earlier all of the 75 greatest drivers in NASCAR's history who were able to attend were assembled on the stage some in their fire suits because they'll be in the race today and everybody here to greet the crowd and be introduced to the starting lineup a great day and a great place to remember it all because after all, in 1950, this was NASCAR's very first super speedway. I was not here, neither were you, and neither was our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. No, I was not, Mike, but you know what? This is a fairly long race with some long stages. A lot of pit stops, and as we've seen all year, a lot of opportunities to make mistakes. Now, the fuel window is about 68 to 74 laps. Forget about that. This is about fresh tires every opportunity. It'll be four tires every time. Also, even Mike, the driver that's leading the race, he'll be getting adjustments every time he hits pit road. It'll be a busy day here in Darlington for these 36. Now, last week, Timothy from Florida won five grand of Clint's cash, and Fox Bet Super 6 is giving you another chance to win today. So for your shot at Clint's cash, just download the Super 6 app on your phone, then enter your six race predictions. Download it now and get your picks in before the contest closes for the end of stage one. Free to play, get on that app, download it, picks. Let's let me get it, Timmy from Daytona Beach won $5,000. All right, let's go trackside. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome the representatives from NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. Drivers, start, start your engines. Thirty six drivers at the ready on the super speedway that's been the lady in black and way too tough to tame. NASCAR on Fox brings you 400 miles at Darlington next. The all star race. <laughs> what would you do for a million dollars? What wouldn't I do? Oh. The All-Star Race, next Sunday on FS1. Major League Stock Car Racing began on this track. Racing history runs deep in Darlington, South Carolina. NASCAR's oldest super speedway has garnered quite a reputation over the years. There's something mysterious about this track. Very little margin for error here. There's nowhere to go. Oh, and they're piling it up on the back street. The track too tough to tame. Well, just because they say it doesn't mean it's true. Today, these drivers put it all on the line like those who came before them. Hey, look at how close they are. Allison takes the lead. Oh, oh and yeah. he's loose. He loses control. Willing to do whatever it takes to get to victory lane. And you win the Southern 500. From the pole to the checkered flag. Checkered flag. This is the NASCAR Cup Series on FS1. Welcome back to the Goodyear 400 at Darlington Raceway. And yes, those shots are from the Goodyear blimp. You know you're at a big event uh, when it's here in town. Well, no name is more synonymous than stock car racing than Petty. From Lee Petty, who won three titles, to Richard Petty, who won seven, to Kyle Petty, who won eight Winston Cup races in his career. Won the first race he ever entered at Daytona, an ARCA 200. 
And uh, he joins us now. Richard will be along. Uh, he helped to fire up the engines. You see those highlights and you see that brief little snippets of your family's history. And what's that yeah. all mean to you? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's amazing to come back to a place where you have so much history. My dad stood on pit road at 13 years old and watched my granddad run the very first race at this place. You know, Herschel McGriff's here. He run ninth in that race. So much family history. But the, the strange thing, Richard Petty's the only one that won here. But Richard Petty won everywhere, okay? So you got to be honest with that. But my granddad never had the success oh. here. I never had that success. I famously said this place should be filled up with water and they should have stadium bass fishing here. <laughs> you did okay? say that. So that's what I said about Darlington. So that's, you know my love affair with this place. All right, you finished sixth here. was your best yes. finish. Yes, yeah. What was so tough about racing this track in your day? You know what? I, th I think a lot of it was mental. And, and a lot of it was just hearing the stories about how tough this place was from the time I was a kid, from my granddad to my dad. I was here in 85 when the A.J. Foyt had to take the rookie test. Yeah. When you make A.J. Foyt take a rookie test, it's got to be a tough place. Yeah. That gets in your head somewhere. And yeah, you lived up to a lot of expectations, too. That I, was real. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I lived up to them, but I could see them. I could see them. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you that. But you, you were know forced what? to. It was so much fun to come here um, and, and be a part of this place with the pure record club, the qualifying club, everything that they had here. It was just so much fun. And it's a great honor to be in the booth with you guys. I can't wait till my dad gets up here. This is one thing my dad and I have never done. We've never been in the booth at the same time. Of all the things we've done in this sport, never done that. Wow. Well, yeah. that'll, that'll be a first. That's great. Let's have a look at the Goodyear starting lineup for this race. And we're going to go right to the radio and right to the pole sitter. The bat and pole cat. How about you, Martin Trex Jr., Boyer and the boys up in the booth. You got me? Yeah, I got you, Boyer. Go ahead. Man, red hot. Been fast. Do Dover, Kansas, you name it. You've been the name of the game. On the pole again for today. What What do you got up there? Yeah, I feel good about it. Love this racetrack. And uh, guys are doing a great job. So see if we can't uh, keep this thing up for all day and finish it off with this auto owner Cameron. What's the hardest part about this place? What's the biggest challenge? Uh, traffic. You know, if we can stay up front all day, we'll be in good shape. He's just going through pit road speed here, guys. We're just going to let him go. Checking those pit road speeds, Kyle. Not so great. important down there. You see them, what they're doing here. I screwed that first part all up. Yeah. And, and listen, you're, you're right. You heard him say he screwed that first part up. But here's the deal. Checking that pit road speed and having it, it's the second most important thing today about pit road. First thing is going to be getting on pit road. We saw some yesterday. So drivers have checked their pit road speed. They'll reform up out of turn number two and will go to pit road for a last minute updates in the poodle skirt, rocking the poodle skirt, Jamie Little. Oh, Mike, this weekend has just been so much fun from the throwback outfits to the paint schemes. And, you know, Ross Chastain, he has one of those great paint schemes that we'll talk about later on. But what a week it's been for him. He's been the most talked about driver in the sport. And that's, of course, because of his fight on Sunday with Noah Gregson. But I talked to Ross and he told me, listen, I don't want it to come to blows, but I'm always going to protect myself and I'm going to protect my team. Noah and him have talked. They even raced against each other this week and they're putting it behind them. Now, as for today, that number one team, they really feel like they have a car capable of winning so they could be the most talked about team this week for a different reason. Regan Smith. Well, Jamie, Tyler Reddick is somebody who always looks forward to coming to Darlington. In fact, last year, he finished second and third in the two races at this racetrack. Many expect the same thing out of him today, but Friday afternoon, his job got a little bit more challenging. His crew chief, Billy Scott, was ejected from the racetrack in pre-qualifying tech issues. To asked to leave. Dave Rogers, the team's technical director, is stepping in to fill in for for Dave or for excuse me for Billy Scott this weekend. He is going to be on the box. He said that everything was set up for him already. There's not too much of a challenge for him as he gets ready to call this race today. Mike. Thanks, Regan. I see you brought your own shade for today. Good move. Well, last week at Kansas Speedway. Well, 37 lead changes. That is a record for a 400 mile race on a mile and a half track. 11 caution flags and this last lap bump and run and that post race altercation left everybody leaving Kansas and very excited about what we might see here at Darlington. Noah Gregson on the right, Ross Chastain on the left. Chastain will roll off from fifth position. Gregson, 29th today. Bubba Wallace 
uh, will start from the outside of the front row, although Truex has chosen the outside. Bubba will be inside. We listened in on the 23. Definitely got to take whatever give us. Appreciate the effort. It's been paying off lately, so let's keep up the uh, big momentum. Have us a good day. See you all at the end of it. Thanks. Yeah, brother. We got your back. You do you. We'll be good. I love this. Love that pep talk before the race, Bubba Wallace and company. By the way, very good qualifying session for them. We have our favorite. We see Truex on the pole, saw that. How about Stenhouse Jr. being up there? Great part of this conversation early. Great qualifying effort. William Byron saw him at the end of that race a, a year ago. Suarez up front and then Larson and Hamlin. Keep an eye on them, boys. Temperature low 80s. It says 63% humidity. I think they got the six and the nine mixed up there. Ooh, shit, it is rough. muggy here in Darlington. And here they come. Green flag, the Goodyear 400 is underway. Is Have you and Hamp still out there? Didn't quite clear him off a two, KP. Not quite. You saw Truex bobble just a little bit. He was back to the gas, trying to get up on the outside just a little bit. But here he is in one and two. He's got that outside line, got that momentum coming down the front stretch. Race is on, getting into one. It's going to need to clear him pretty quick. Truex is holding real strong on that outside. Very challenging to get underneath these guys like this. Cars are lighter than their feet, low on air. Listen, Bubba's making a statement here in this first lap or so, saying, I'm not giving this up. You're going to have to take it from me. Well, here's the thing about this old wore-out surface. You have to manage these tires, but that clean air is so important. That's why you see those two cars battling so hard for this stop spot. As wide as Kansas was last week, that's how narrow Darlington is, especially the entry into turn three. A lot of neat paint schemes, Kyle. It's kind of hard to figure out who's who. See Chastain there in the Dale Jarrett throwback. Keselowski, John Forrest taking it all the way back to drag racing. Cool scheme there. It's a great scheme. I don't know if I'm watching Dale Jarrett or if I'm watching a drag race or Kyle Busch. I don't know if I'm watching <laughs> Fontana. I don't know what I'm watching right now. The first 13 are single file. First side-by-side -side battle is Joey Logano against Kevin Harvick, and now they drop in line. Kyle Busch with a look inside on Keselowski. Nothing there. It's really dangerous to get that Truex Jr. out front in this clean air so early. It was really fast. I know it's only 20 minutes of practice yesterday, but folks trending. You look at long run speed, 20, 30 average. He was right at the top of the sheet. Bush with another look. And no chance on Keselowski there. Further back. <laughs> It's a fight. We've got a throwback driver this week. That 51 is Ryan Newman uh, coming out of not retirement, but let's just say some time away to drive uh, five races for Rick Ware Racing as Ryan Priest goes by. Imagine you put the Rocket Man back under behind a cup car. Doesn't yeah. matter. He's been out, qualified well in front of a lot of good cars. Yeah. That is the best that a Rick Ware Racing car that was not sourced from Seward Haas has ever qualified, and Newman's been away. Wow. Funny how that works. Riding here with Harvick behind Austin Dillon. You hear him modulating that throttle. Pretty loose already. Six laps into the race. Six laps into the race. He's already working the throttle, trying to modulate, trying to figure out where his car sets best and rebalance it with the throttle. This is a race track. This is a race the racetrack place. Yeah. You cannot race the competition. Race that racetrack, and if you do that, you're going to be just fine when that end of the race happens. Which is which is interesting because you said earlier you can't punish these tires too early, but you know you got to get everything you can on a restart or at the initial start of the race. You got to pass these guys. So. It's how do you compromise that? How do you how do you find that safe place? Hey, the biggest mover is the 43, and I don't mean the king who just moved from the starter stand all the way up here to the booth, uh, but Eric Jones, feeling a bit ill yesterday. He went all the way home to North Carolina to get a good night's sleep without all the racetrack noise, uh, feeling much better today. And that car looks good with that black roof. Hey, I, I know it's not a vinyl top. I know it's not the Richard Petty vinyl top from 68, but it still looks good. That's a great throwback. Well, you wouldn't want that vinyl top peeling back like it did then. Yeah, that was a mistake. We don't want to talk about that. Don't nope. bring that up when he gets up here, okay? Oh, was that his decision? 
to peel it back or Devon Roof? No, the Devon Roof. Devon Roof was all Richard Petty. Style, baby. Mr. Style. Mr. Well, back Style. then, that's why they had them vinyl roofs. They looked better than everybody else. You got that right, man. All it needed was a T-top. <laughs> and there's a look at it at that uh, Plymouth by Petty one year later when uh, Plymouth would not give Richard a companion car to the Dodge Daytona. Richard flipped and went to Ford for one season before coming back to Dodge. I'm so, impressed with Bubba Wallace, yeah. boys. He's holding pace with this Truex. Those Toyotas are going to be strong. They have been. You, you take it back to Dover, Kansas Speedway last weekend. These Toyotas, they have really turned the wick up here lately. Bubba Wallace led lap one. Truex has been out front ever since. Nine laps complete. And the fall off has been about half a second every five laps, just as in practice yesterday. Fans wearing their great throwback stuff, too. What a great day in Darlington. My curiosity running wild. 15 laps complete. Our aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Oh, cool shot. Powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear more driven. 16 complete. Martin Truex has led all but the first lap, which was led by Bubba Wallace. They have about five seconds on the field so far. And joining us in the booth after completing his duties as one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers of all time is the king, Richard Petty. Welcome back. We're back here, ready to go again. But they wouldn't let you drive the pace lap. No, they, they've they seen me in action before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we couldn't get him off the racetrack. That's right. We had the black flag you. We had the black flag you last time. That was a fun time, man. I'll yeah. bet. That I'll was. Bet. When you were 13 years old, Kyle was talking earlier, what are your memories of coming here for the first time? What was this place like, a super speedway? Well, it was humongous at the time. You know, we'd run Bowman Gray, Martinsville, and you come here, and you know, a little over a mile track, and it was just unreal. All the stuff that you see here wasn't here except the racetrack. So I, as, as a boy, you played in the infield. Kyle played in the infield. Yeah. Then you got to go racing. They didn't play. Working they, on a car? No. They, when I was 13 years old, I was in the pit. Yeah. Working. Yeah. Well, I was in the pit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like the first time you came here to drive? It, it was just great. You know, it was just a one-groove track yeah. through this corner up here. I really loved the racetrack. It, it never was really good to me, but... I love to run down here because of the challenge of two different corners. I want to ask you one: Was it did it did the track change a lot from the first time you drove it to the last year you drove in '92? The cars changed a lot, but did the track ever change? The track changed because they changed the one and two corner now. Okay, yeah. It used to be three and four. Yeah. They changed that corner, but uh, it still drove basically the same yeah. same way. Take me back to this car. Kyle's been telling us that he said, "Don't ask, I'm asking." That's what I do. <laughs> They said it's got a vinyl top on it. Maybe that was a bad idea back then. It was painted. Oh, yeah. It but, was, but he wanted to paint. No, the, when you brought a vinyl top, a true vinyl he top car. He wants to know why it came up. Came no. up. Well, what Went happened, too fast. What happened, we'd cut the uh, part top of the uh, roof and stuff to set the roll bar up in it. And we didn't weld the top back down to the roll bar. <laughs> okay. There's your answer. <laughs> There's your answer. That so was it was the roof, the steel the, roof. The, the, came the roof came out. Yeah, the oh whole roof came out. There was paint on the I roof. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, i tell you what. The old car's pretty good. Yeah. That 43 looks good out here today. Yeah. We're going to find out, ain't we? We've got a long way to go, Betty. Well, Eric Jones has gained six spots. Nobody else has gained more than four since the drop of the green yeah. flag. Yeah, I knew it. I seen them when they started. Everybody just got in line. Right now, I think they're just... Feeling, feeling their self out and feeling the car out. Just see what they've got to race with. 21 laps complete. Martin Truex has been out front all but lap one so far. Let's check with Larry and get a look at the Brez Tree race strategy for today. Well, Mike, it's pretty simple, the first element. It's four tires every trip to pit road, even if you've just run maybe 8, 10, 12 laps. Possibly looking at splitting all three stages in half, maybe coming a little bit early before that halfway mark to get a jump on the competition with those four fresh tires. And depending on tire fall off, and I've already seen all I need to see, it is substantial. And how your car is driving, we're probably going to maybe split that final, that longer stage into thirds. Because remember this also, we have to keep a count on it. Only 11 sets of tires, 10 stickers, and the qualifiers from yesterday.
Yeah, every lap, especially early in the race. Great point, Larry. These guys, all these crew chiefs, those decisions get easier because these cautions are, or these this race is going green lap after lap after lap here at 23 laps in. You don't want early cautions. That puts uh, the pressure on you later on in the race. Looking at 14th place, Joey Logano for Team Penske using the paint scheme that Roger Penske used uh, on an AMC Javelin to win the 71 Trans Am Championship with Mark Donahue and to win Team Penske's first ever NASCAR victory in the AMC Matador, uh, also driven by uh, Mark Donahue. King, remember that Matador? We called that thing the brick. And uh, and it was. Okay, here's what I, hey, we're talking to you. Yeah. Here, here's, <laughs> here's, here's what I want to know. Here, at home, you sit on the couch and eat popcorn and watch the race on TV right. and follow it on computer. Right. First thing we did after we got through talking over here, you stood up and looked out the window like there was a real race going on. What's, well, what's, what's up with that? I didn't have a TV in front of me, okay, so you. I had to look at the real race. Right. Yeah, but then when we were trying to talk to you, staring at the monitor. Remember the Matador, the, the car we called yeah. the brick? Red, white, and blue. That's patriotic, wouldn't it? It's pretty easy to spot out there. I'll tell you what, just up from him, Harrison Burton, you see that throwback to his daddy, Jeff Burton, one of the 75 greatest drivers, holding a pretty wheel. Good run for Harrison Burton, 13th right now for the Wood Brothers car. Had a really strong qualifying run yes, yesterday. Sir. You and I both commented. I thought he was going to I thought, thought he was going to be in that top five and make it to the final round. That 11 just didn't hold up, but I thought it was. Burton in 13th, one spot ahead of where he started the day. At 10th and 11th place, Kyle Larson, a little frustrated with Tyler Reddick just in front of him. We'll follow up on that when we come back to Darlington. 26 laps complete. One green flag laps complete. Martin Truex led all but the first. Uh, Kyle Larson took him a while, but he got past Tyler Reddick for 10th place. Uh, Ross Chastain has moved up from Denny Hamlin. Chastain's climbed all the way back up to fifth, which is where he started the race. So Truex, Wallace, Byron, Suarez, and Chastain. Traffic becoming quite a factor for the race leaders now. Well, so much factor that second place car, Bubba Wallace, is running down there. A truck's almost got an offense right in the middle of three and four. Yes, sir. Yep, copy that. There you saw the fall off. A lot of fall off out here. Slipping and sliding around. Sun is out. This cloud cover's burnt through. Sun's burnt through the clouds. And man, it's got these guys slipping and sliding around, especially on these old tires. This Chastain yeah. is coming. The one car pass in Stenhouse Jr. And the one thing you're seeing here, when, as he passes Stenhouse Jr., we saw it earlier when he passed Denny Hamlin. They get out of the way a little bit. They know racing at this point in time with this many laps on the tire is going to slow them both down. It, and everybody's going to catch up. Richard, great point. That's something that probably hasn't changed over the years. You got to have to race this racetrack, manage them tires. Yeah, I think uh, the best thing to do is race the racetrack. Forget about the rest of the cars. You know, get your car running, get you a groove, and then find out where you are beating somebody else. But race the racetrack, and you better off. I'll tell you somebody that's out of the groove. It's this 11 car. Denny Hamlin struggling, falling back quite a bit. These two right here, the 5 and the 45, have been at it too. And they go underneath Denny Hamlin. Now, the biggest movers in this race, Kyle Busch plus 5, Ryan Priest plus 6, and Jamie, Eric Jones plus 7. Yes, and it's very fitting with the Petties in the booth to talk about the 43 and Eric Jones. It was a rough Saturday for this team all around. Not only did they miss the balance, but their driver was under the weather. Eric told us that he had to go home last night, had to get some fluids, but he's feeling much better today. They adjusted on that race car, and he's up eight spots right now. So going in the right direction, Regan. Jamie William Byron up one spot from where he started to the third position, but we were to the part of the run right now where the team had a little bit of concern. They told me earlier today they felt like they had a good short run race car. They needed it to be a better long run race car, though, than what it was yesterday in practice. They made some changes overnight. Right now, William Byron has been keeping the team updated every five laps, and his speed is looking very good as we get to the end of this run. Byron in third. He has erased uh, two of the four second deficit to the leader. Uh, since uh, we dropped the green flag. Jamie on the 11th. 
Denny Hamlin's falling back four spots. He just came on the radio. Clint, when you were talking about something going on with him, he might have a right front flat. You're trying to make it five more laps to come in, keeping an eye on that 11 right there. So that's, there you go, Larry. There's the strategy. They're going to caution. Is it possible fluid on the racetrack? Haven't really heard where yet, but that's the, just what the doctor ordered for 11. Denny Hamlin needed that caution. So Larry, why would they have wanted to stay out five more laps if they thought that tire was going down? <laughs> they were doing their best, Mike, to try to, as I said earlier, trying to split the stage in half. Maybe come just a little early, but you don't want to make that second run in this stage too long on tires. That's why Chris Gabehart wanted to go a few more laps. And here's some audio from Team 11. My car took off off of turn two and then just, I mean, absolutely destroyed the fence in three. Out of the blue. Yeah, Cassina just started talking about fluid on his channel that we heard. And this, this caution is for fluid, so. Well, that would answer the question yes. in Denny's voice. You heard him. Don't understand it, took off the two and then went down, smoked the fence at three and four. Unfortunate, doesn't matter, it, it's happened. Now, what do you do? How do you fix this thing? Got to worry about a tow link, got to worry yeah. about the damage on this car. But isn't that typical? The car takes off toward the fence and the first thing you think of, <sighs> it's the car's fault. Something's wrong with the car. Yeah. You don't think the racetrack. And that is automatic, okay. You say, okay, what if, have I got a flat tire or is it going down? You know what I mean? And then you find out the tire's okay, then you look for the oil. Well, here they come, Larry. Riggin. Like Kyle Busch, very good at the start of the race right here. Just told the guys the balance was good. It was just starting to get fun. He's up seven spots as the race has begun. And the 24, William Byron, happy with the balance of that race car. It starts off tight, but it ends the long runs good. No changes for him. Jamie? Bubba Wallace comes in. He just wants to be tightened up on entry. They told him that was great. That was a run. We were ready to come in and pit anyway. So we'll tighten them up. A four-tire stop here. Martin Truex Jr. just wants that rear grip to stick with them a little bit longer. First pull for Martin Truex Jr. ever at Darlington. So far, so good. Here's your race off pit road, sponsored by Ram. Truex holds position. Byron up one. Suarez. And Stenhouse up two. Harrison Burton, the Wood Brothers, pick up three spots on pit road. There you go. First caution of the day in Darlington. Saturday, the USFL kicks off at 4 Eastern on Fox. Defending champion Birmingham Stallions take on the Michigan Panthers. Then next Sunday at noon Eastern, the New Orleans Breakers battle the Philadelphia Stars on FS1. And rounding out the weekend, the New Jersey Generals against the Houston Gamblers, 4 p.m. on Fox. Working the first caution of the day for fluid on the racetrack in the Goodyear 400 at Darlington. Now that is a Darlington stripe. You'll see it on the wall, but you see it on these cars. And when it happens there on the right rear, the part of that suspension that is most vulnerable is the tow link. Let's take a closer look with Larry McReynolds and our Toyota cutaway car. Race after race, we hear about cars having a bent rear tow link. So let's go to our Toyota Tech Center, take a look at our Toyota cutaway car, and show you exactly where the rear tow link is located. Remember, this next-gen car has independent rear suspension. There's one on the left rear and the right rear. It's almost like a mini tie rod. You have to take two bolts out and replace that tow link and put those two bolts in. Sometimes it's bent so bad, Mike, you have to take a torch and cut it out. But you know what? All in all, pretty easy to change. Thanks, Larry. I guess something has to be the weakest link, it's, and it, it might wall. as well be whatever's easiest to change. It ain't the wall, baby. Right. That, that's it, a good point, and <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. You know, I don't know if that was by design, but I think it's a great thing that yeah. it's the easiest thing to change. Those guys can get in there, change it, and never lose a lap sometimes as long as it's under caution. It doesn't take them out of the race, and that, that's the thing. That, I think that's part of what NASCAR designed into the car. You can get in here, you can change it, and get back going. Kyle Busch will be fifth on this restart. Believe it or not, I don't think I've ever pit in that box before, so just get used to the coming in of it. Um, you know, it's, it's all asphalt runway and getting there, so just we'll, we'll be all right. All right, look at your front five. They're Ross Chastain, an 8.4 second stop. 
uh, will wow. have him restart in wow. fourth spot. Truex choose the outside on William Byron. And one of the top five you won't see up there is Daniel Suarez. He was too fast exiting his pit and will restart in back. I tell you another one you don't you gotta have to look way back the five. Where was he at? He went from eighth to twenty fourth on that pit stop right there. Big time problems for the five of Kyle Larson. I, I, I found it interesting listening to Kyle Bush's radio where he was talking about I've never pitted there before. I've never pitted in that place before. Here it is. Let's see what happens. Oh Jack it fell off the Jack. Had to go back and jack it back up. 17 second pit stop. That'll do it. Wow. Not only did Jackman have to lift it. He also then had to position the right front tire. Took a long time. Ready for the restart. 42 laps complete. 48 to go in stage one. Truex William Byron on the inside did not fire off quite as well. Now he's got to battle Bubba Wallace. Still hard for me to figure out all these cars and the schemes. You've got a, a Gordon racing for second. You got a Jared out there. Uh, you got John Force out there. Uh, Richard Petty's on the racetrack. <laughs> these schemes are awesome. Watch it. <laughs> and the Washington Redskins for Ty Gibbs. There goes there Kenseth. Goes. You saw Matt Kenseth go by. <laughs> Hope the manager, excuse me. Christopher Bell. <laughs> Good looking paint schemes out here. Such a neat weekend to throw back to all of our legends of the sport. Kyle underneath Chastain. Here comes Keselowski. Great weekend going for Keselowski. A lot of optimism coming into this weekend. Our best forward so far coming out of that RFK bunch. Good to see. Yeah, we talked about it. And listen, we talked about it in that first segment. You got to get everything you can on these restarts. We see it week in and week out. These guys are just overly aggressive on restarts trying to get it. So no matter what you think your car is going to do in 10 or 15 laps, you feel more comfortable jumping up in the fourth or fifth and dropping back to fifth or sixth uh, and gaining those positions. Early. Yeah, you want somebody to pass you instead of you have to Yeah, exactly. Them. Exactly. You saw Bell on the bottom of that black and yellow car. He is gaining some ground on the inside. Up to 60. Make that 15th now. And now he's carrying the in-car camera dedicated to Peter Larson, the fellow who brought the tilt and panable in-car camera to NASCAR uh, from Australia back in 1981. He and John Porter formed the company BSI and Peter just retired this week after giving us 40 years of being right there alongside the driver like nobody had ever done before and for everything he has done for our industry that's Peter on the right and some of the early cameras and later ones there on the shot. Wow, he has that. definitely that cool. changed the way you enjoy auto racing at home. Congratulations on a great career. Listen, he's changed the way I enjoy auto racing at home. Uh, when we sit at home and watch it, sit at my dad's house or wherever, when you see it, you get a different perspective. And it's a perspective that you remember from being in a race car. So it is, it's it's straight up legit, legit stuff. Yeah, I was watching old time race and how much the deal has improved as far yeah. as being able to cover it with all the cameras and stuff. That, that's because when you raced, they used to cover it with one camera. <laughs> that's okay, it. Buddy. All right. Sometimes they didn't have a camera. <laughs> That's right. A lot of those races, early races, were not uh, on live TV or even on film. Jamie. Well, Mike, I reported Denny Hamlin had an issue. What had happened is he did that fluid on the racetrack, got into the wall. This is the right front, the right rear. Robert it, took all of that throwback font for Goodyear right off the sidewall. The good news, though, for Denny, the wheel, the steering wheel is straight, so he's continuing on right now back in 10th position. Okay, that tells me that toe link's not bent. As long as that wheel's straight, that pretty yeah. much means your alignment of the car is still intact and where yeah. it's supposed to be. Great point. He's not having to compensate for it in the steering wheel. To, so the car's not dog tracking down the straightaway. It's running, still running in a straight line, so he should be able to recover from this. That caution was great for him. It was great at a great time for him. Richard watching these cars go around the racetrack it just takes me back you know you get into three tons of braking with these new cars um, the momentum you carry around here the speed and then we have rack and pinion steering back in your day 
You didn't even have power steering. You didn't have power steering. You turned, you know, almost a full round just to get through the corner. Can't and imagine now, that. Now they move the thing, you know, maybe a fistful as far as they go. So steering is so much better. And, uh, you know, really the cars are so much better as far as that part of it. It's just harder to set these cars up than what the old-time cars were. We watched the communication, the chemistry, right, between the drivers and the crew chiefs, Dale Inman and, and yourself, together so many years, that trust factor, the belief in one another. Man, well, what a we, story. We were the computer, okay? Yeah. You know, i tell Dale what it was doing, and Dale figured out what to do to make it work. So, you know, that, was our, trust. that was our computer. The trust day. you guys had yeah. in one another, the belief, right? Now I believed in everything he did. He pretty much believed in what I did, and most of the time we got the job done. For a lot of years. And seven championships together. Yeah. Seven Daytona 500s, 200 victories. Wow. Watching these guys, you know, we're coming off a weekend. We've seen some scuffles, right? We've seen some some uh, throws, some haymakers, if you will, after the races and stuff. Who is your worst competitor? Who? Which one did you yeah, not get us. along with the, the most? The ones I got and didn't get along with? Yeah. I got along with everybody. Sometimes they didn't get along with me. There had, <laughs> I'm not letting you all that easy. There had to have been one of them that got under your skin. I, I'm, I am going to tell you this, that I, I, I've seen the man numerous times. I have felt it. He's got the longest pointer oh, finger you I have ever seen. Those. When he starts pointing in your chest and starts, I saw, I saw him talk to Bobby. I saw him talk to Earnhardt. I saw him talk to Daryl numerous times. Uh, so, And all these guys have the same story. When that finger comes out and starts pointing at you, you, you pay attention. I didn't wreck him, but I wrecked one of his cars, yeah. and I got that finger. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking you know about. Right about. in the chest bone. I don't, I don't mind if you beat on my drivers. Just don't beat on my cars. That's it. <laughs> okay. That's it. That answers your question there about you the go. scuffle last week. That now, that's, now, that's funny. Larry yeah. Mack would tell you just the opposite. You guys go out behind the barn and take care of things. Don't you wreck my race car. Yeah. That's There's last the two week. I was talking about. Yeah, there we are. Weeks. You know what, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the emotion that goes on in these cars and these guys confronting each other. I, I like that. I like to see that passion. I like to see Ross's passion. I like to see Noah's passion. We've seen it so many times in this sport. You don't want it to come to where it overshadows what the race is. The sport is about race. The sport's about going out there, competing against each other, and putting it all on the line. And here's two competitors we're watching right now that put it on all, all on the line. They didn't agree with the same line they put it on, but at least they put it all out there. And the two fellows that jumped in didn't just happen to be there. They yeah. are NASCAR security, plain clothes <laughs> security. And they were right there in case things got. I saw him down. I saw him down there pre-race, and I said, man, couldn't you just, like, slipped just yeah. a little bit for, like, 10 seconds or something? <laughs> just made it more yeah, interesting. Yeah, just tripped but... accidentally, so yeah. I'll be with you in a second. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talking, about the, talking about that, talking about your competitors and stuff, Pearson was always good here. Pearson was always yeah, incredible he, here. Was his best Terry Labonte was always yeah. good here. There's so many guys that just kind of latched onto it. Allison was good. Here. Allison was good. When we first started, and I first started racing here, tell me how to pass somebody here, because it's, it was a momentum track back when you drove. Even though you guys had unlimited horsepower, yeah. no downforce, all that, tell me how you passed somebody. Well, when you found out where you was beating him, and you didn't just fall him right in the corner, and, uh, you know, be your best bet. You found his weakest place, you got back and got your running start and passed him at his weakest place. So even then, you had to get a run. You, had you to, couldn't you just had run to have up and pass him. Yeah, even though we didn't yeah. know nothing about drafting, it's still you had to get a running start in. 58 laps complete in Darlington. Martin Truex still out front. Bubba Wallace one second back. William Byron 2.3 and Kyle Busch three seconds off the lead. Best coat to watch racing with? Well, you need to try it first. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Martin Truex continues to lead the Goodyear 400 after 64 laps. While second place, Bubba Wallace has run more laps in the top five today than in his prior nine starts here combined. He's the second place car with William Byron third, Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain the top five. Now here is the fall off in lap times since the pit stop as these tires wear. Larry Mack. 
Yeah, Mike, I'm able to look at miles per hour all the way around this mile on the third track, and we've been kind of tracking Mark Trex Jr. And what we did, we looked at his miles per hour at the end of that first run, and the first couple laps of this run right here, and he's on into a run, he's eight to 10 miles per hour slower to end the both straightaways than on fresh tires. In the middle of the corner, 14 to 16 miles per hour slower. Wow, wow. That is a wild man. Well, he has the Xfinity fastest lap of the race at 166.9 miles an hour. Truex, that is. Bubba Wallace second, William Byron third. Now, Kyle Busch didn't set his fastest lap of the race till lap 46. Everybody else did it uh, in the first four laps of the race on that graphic. That's odd. Yeah, that the car would be better after the well, they made adjustments after the pit stop. He comes out firing and uh, he's faster. I think Bruce in the pudding. I think Denny's fine. You know, he's holding steady right there. Right outside the top 10 and 11th. Here's Harvick right on board with him with that driver's side. Behind him as well. This is a typical Denny race. He just hovers there around the top 10 in the first segment. He moves up a little bit in the second. And then you've got to contend with him at the end. We saw in practice yesterday. He and Truex and, and, and maybe Larson, those two or three guys put up the best long term speed. Kevin Harvick just flew right by Denny Hamlin up in turn number two. You know, you use the term flew right by. <laughs> and, 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 and no, no, no. And, and I'm going to say at Darlington, a lot of time it's got let by. Yes. Somebody yeah. let you by. That's because, that's what that, because you don't want to race that much here. It's like my dad said earlier and like Clint has said, you race the racetrack. So don't slow yourself down racing other people. That's the key. What you just said. When you're racing door to door here, it slows both of you down drastically bad. You get that pass made because that's more efficient for both parties. You better get it sorted out quick yeah. or that yeah. whoever you pass yeah. before you. That's right. The, the last guy is fixing yeah. to pass you yeah. both. It's better to run behind somebody even though you know you can pass them. than you just try to race with them from time to time. Yeah. Here, especially. Yeah. Especially, here, especially here. here. Time lost. Scrubbing tire off of it because you're, you're asking more out of the car, leaning on the wheel. All that stuff is a detriment to the cause. Joey Logano has run right around 20th place much of this race, Regan. Yeah, Mike, and it's been a slow start for that 22 car. Of course, the winner of this race one year ago. Team was a little concerned when I talked to Paul Wolf this morning about this race car. It was very loose in practice. In qualifying, it went to very tight. They weren't really sure why. They felt like they would have a tighter race car than they did. Right now in the race, tight in traffic and loose off and struggling to move forward. Jamie Little. And Chase Elliott, when it comes to qualifying this season since he returned from that broken leg, it's been a struggle, and that was the same yesterday. They qualified 21st. Team told me he just overdrove it. As of now, Chase told his team it's not as bad as it looks. I just can't push early, but as we run, it gets better. Now, Chase, this paint scheme right here, a throwback to his dad, Phil Elliott's scheme back in 2003. And yesterday, Chase told me it is this scheme when I was eight years old that made me become a race car driver. He was all smiles driving this car. Wow. I and Bill will join us during stage three of today's race. Absolutely awesome, Bill. That is going to be awesome yeah. is what it's going to be. Literally awesome. I tell you what, this is the time where it starts to heat up. Just like we saw before that caution came out. Truex, your leaders fixing to get into this lap traffic. Really slowed him down. Enabling Bubba Wallace, uh, William Byron, Kyle Busch to get on him. Chastain's a good long run car. Keep an eye on this battle as they approach this lap traffic. That's when you're going to be forced off of your line to make those passes. Yeah, and leaving your line with tires that have 20 or 30 laps on them. And knowing there's somebody coming, there's somebody coming. So there is pressure on Truex, even though he's out there running, running in clean air, running at his own pace. As he catches that traffic, he knows he has to deal with it quickly so that they don't catch up from behind. The difference right now is that at this point, Martin Truex has a three second lead on Bubba Wallace. During the first green flag run of this race, he was only about a second, second and a half in front of Wallace when he caught traffic. See right there ahead of Harvick, Harrison Burton, that 21 Wood Brothers car. Legendary car, legendary race here at Darlington. That kid's holding pretty wheel. A good attaboy for him. Good confidence booster running with these guys. They had two of their vintage cars here earlier. Leonard Wood drove one around the track and Ricky Pearson. Ricky, Pearson. Uh, Ricky drove the other. That was cool. 75 laps complete. Martin Truex in control of the Goodyear 400 at Darlington as we go side by side.
Chicago has seen it all, but it's never experienced anything quite like this. A two-day racing and music festival featuring the Chainsmokers, Miranda Lambert, the Black Crows, and Charlie Crockett. It's NASCAR in the streets of Chicago, and so much more. The Chicago Street Race Weekend. For tickets and experiences, visit NASCARChicago.com. I got a heart like a truck. It's been drugged through the mud. Ram owners have heart for being fearless, determined, and bold. That's why it's time for you to be a Ram. Now during Ram season, get 10% below MSRP on the 2023 Ram 1500. Home internet, what a pain in the... Hey, neighbor! Try T-Mobile, it sets up so fast. It's like Wi-Fi that runs on 5G. Home internet from T-Mobile? Wait till you see. Tell me more, tell me more. One cord's all that you need. Tell me more, tell me more. With Tupkin Serious B. USAA? Yeah. They have awesome rates on coverage for our car, home, and stuff. But they also have banking, plus advice, and other perks. So we know she's all set. Because we've got USAA. USAA, for the military community and their families. Meet Ultimate Hybrid. Advanced ceramic and wax technology. The best of both worlds, but better. Only from Mothers. Saturday, it's Baseball Night in America on Fox. Get on this Two iconic NL teams go head-to-head -head as Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman lead the Dodgers against Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, and the Cardinals, or Julio Rodriguez and the Mariners. Take on Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves. It's Baseball Night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. 10 laps to go in stage one at Darlington. Here's an update on the Coca-Cola racing family. Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, right together, Austin Dillon, Joey Logano, and then Daniel Suarez having to overcome a speeding penalty. He was a top five car in the first green flag run of this race. Uh, as you saw, William Byron got past Bubba Wallace for second place. Martin Truex holding a four and a half second lead and working race traffic. Coming up on Chris Busher there. And there's the gap. Byron with that uh, DuPont Chrome Illusion wrap paint scheme uh, reminiscent of when Jeff Gordon carried the 50th anniversary of NASCAR logo on the number 24. Such a such a good looking car. Uh, There's so many good throwback cars here that really capture the essence of what the original car was and that's I, I think it gets better and better every year. Change the logo on the hood and of course the company name changed and that's about it. Good looking car. <laughs> Saw Jeff down there, part of the 75th anniversary, top 75 drivers. Big smile on his face. Happy to be down there with those legends. So eight to go in stage one. Richard and Kyle Petty with us till the end of the stage. And I've always wondered, since we've never had the two of you together in the booth, which was more difficult, Richard, when you were starting out in racing driving for your father or when Kyle was starting out driving for you, which was tougher? Mm. <laughs> That's easy, baby. Yeah. What? Kyle driving? You know, man. Yeah. That's what he said when he took me to Daytona. You want to drive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first race, though, right? That was That's the first, first thing you drove is Daytona. Yeah. First, first, first race race. track he'd ever been yeah. on. Did, why did you think that was a good idea, what? Richard? That's the fastest track we go to. Well, yeah. That's what he needed to do. Learn the speed, man. This is a, it's what this race is all about. Let's speed. just learn the hard way. It was so, here or Darlington. <laughs> Daytona or Darlington. Oh, Where do you want to go? <laughs> so the King gives you and your high school buddies a leftover Dodge Magnum yep. to run in the ARCA 200. Yep. Uh, Steve Mill yep. uh, was, was big, and, and Dale and Wade and everybody at the shop, we put the thing together, hauled it down there on Clyde. 
Clyde yeah. kept vapor locking. We had a truck called Clyde that kept vapor locking. We kept having to pump fuel out of the, out of the race car to put in the carburetor <laughs> the truck to get it down there. Uh, got down there, went down there and won the race. Crazy thing. Crazy How about thing. your first? Yeah. When when they toss you the keys, when your daddy did it to you? First race I ran was at Columbia, South Carolina on a dirt track. And I'd never been on a race track. Was that the first time you drove? First, did you first practice time, yeah. or first just time. straight to the and race? It was dirt. And me and Dale and another boy went, took the car down to uh, Columbia. And it was a slick dirt that wore out tires. Uh, I wound up sixth, I think, in the race, a couple laps down. So I was tickled to death, man. Yeah. Come back up the road, and I'd been working on the cars and all that. Come back up the road, and I told Dale, I might like this racing. You know, it's better than working on the car. <laughs> that was a really good idea, by the way. Really, really good idea. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Worked well. Great career move for Stock Car Racing's all-time winner, uh, Richard Petty, and his son Kyle. Thrilled to have them with us here during Stage 1 at Darlington. Martin Truex trying to close out Stage 1. He has not won a stage in the last 28 races. Now, not since he swept the stages at New Hampshire. Has Martin gotten the 10 points and the green and white checkered flag at the end of a stage? I think Truex, he's definitely the car to beat, but I'm telling you, somebody that's entering this conversation is this Ross Chastain in the one car. Very fast, starting to get close to Wallace. Look at this battle. Heating up. Wow. Harrison having a little bit of gearbox trouble. I'm hearing about having to keep it in fifth gear. You see Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin hounded on him. That's going to be a problem for Harrison Burton, especially when you get into traffic. Going to need that downshift into fourth. Hopefully they can remedy that problem, but it probably doesn't look good, Kyle. No, it doesn't look good. And that's a perfect example. You saw Hamlin run up on the back of, of Harrison, have to slow down, and Larson took advantage of it and got around him. Let's hope he can get to on and off pit road okay. There, now here's Daniel Suarez trying to stay on the lead lap with two to go in stage one. Look at the difference one mistake makes in this cup series. Had a uh, speeding penalty on that running fourth speeding penalty. Now he's trying to hold on to the lead lap. Unbelievable. That's how fickle racing is and how crazy it is. You put me at the front of the pack. I can run with the leaders. You put me in the mid pack. I'm just there. Race for third on your right as we're in the final lap of stage one. Martin Truex has led all but lap one of this race. William Byron 1.7 seconds back. Remember when stage racing began and Martin Truex made a point of gathering up all the stage wins and stage points he could. This will add to his all time lead of stage race wins as they come off turn number four. Green and white checkers will be in the air for Martin Truex picking up his 57th career stage win. Wallace holds off Chastain for third, Byron second. Kyle Busch, Keselowski, Stenhouse, Harvick, Reddick, and Christopher Bell pick up the stage points in stage one. Thanks to Richard and Kyle Petty for joining us for this great stage at Darlington. Here's Martin Truex, your stage one winner. Stage one is in the books. Time for our Credit One Bank ones to watch. Who are you looking at? I'm looking at Chastain. I think right now the obvious is Mark Truex Jr. out there in the lead, but this Chastain is coming and coming in a hurry. Ross Chastain all the way. William Byron has just kind of methodically made his way right up into contention behind Martin Truex. Uh, finishes up this first stage in second spot. I'm going to keep an eye on that uh, 24. I mean, Jeff Gordon, you know, he got honored today. So I like that. I, I, I can get around that. All right. Larry Mack and Jamie. Yeah, Mike, I went back a little bit deeper inside the top 10. Christopher Bell had never had a top 10 in Darlington until last year. We know how many top 10s he's had this year. Qualified 16th, and on that last restart until the end of stage one, made up 10 positions to get inside the top 10. Yeah, I'm going to go with Eric Jones. I know he started off the weekend with a little bit of a stomach bug, but started in 28th, he's up to 16th. He's won at Darlington twice before in the Southern 500. I think he's one that you got to keep your eye on. Those are your credit one bank ones to watch. Nobody picked Martin Truex because we have a no push rule here uh, <laughs> well, on FS1. And that's the obvious. When you right? lead all but one lap, nobody needs to pick you. Right? I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Stenhouse Jr. I mean, I really thought that he would fall out of that top 10, and he's still holding steady right there in seventh. Look down the list. Harrison Burton in 11th having gearbox issues still right there uh, knocking on the top 10. These, these are good runs for those guys. Desperately needing some some good things and, and a good turnaround. There is Burton. You saw him battling. He was in the top ten for most of uh, stage one. 
You want to talk about a rebound? I mean, we this Larson, you know, you can't. He was a favorite coming out of yesterday, obvious. But he went from eighth to 24th, now back, uh, you know, running uh, 12th right now, needing a better pit stop, boys. <laughs> 17 second stops, not going to work. Uh, nope. Not work. And Kevin Harvick, Harvick moved up 12 positions uh, in that last run since the last restart, as did Eric Jones. Uh, they were the biggest movers in the second half of stage one. Harvick all the way up into eighth place. All right, pit road is open for the lead lap cars. Regan. Well, Kyle Busch in the eight car trended just a little bit freer that run told those guys that never got loose it stayed or never got tight it stayed free the entire time wants a little bit of rear grip and the 24 of William Byron it was a simple answer to him the car is pretty good maybe just a little tight but he does not want to adjust on it just yet Jamie. Bubba Wallace in the 23 finished fourth last week carried that over got a front row start here things are trending in the right direction Bubba's saying just tighten me up a little bit in the entry to one so my car stops swinging got Martin Truex Jr. in the 19 he said I'm pretty happy don't want to be any tighter at that two thirds mark so they're hardly adjusting on that 19. There's your race off pit road sponsored by Ram. Brad Keselowski up three, Kevin Harvick up two, and Kyle Larson's team got him four spots on pit road. After the break, we'll welcome in our stage two guest. Boy, have we got some catching up to do with Carl Edwards. Whether it was in the 99, for Roush Racing, the famous backflip, or whether it was in the Joe Gibbs Cup, or in the Xfinity Series, but mainly in the Cup Series, Carl Edwards, one of NASCAR's great stars at the end of 2016, uh, walked away to Missouri to enjoy life with your family. <laughs> and where you been? We've missed well, you. I, thank you. That means a lot. There, yeah. yeah, I haven't done a backflip in a while. I definitely haven't put on makeup in a while. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is so cool for me. Um, I've had the chance. I got to race, live my dream, go do all this fun stuff. I've, I've been on adventures around the world, been farming a little bit, raising a family. And, um, and I'm just honored to be here today. What does this weekend mean to you? I know we've tried, Jacob Ullman tried for three years to get you to join us in the booth for, you know, just for one afternoon. But how about all of this weekend and the way it all came together? It, it was more special than I, I could have imagined. Lisa Kennedy called me and Lisa has been so good to me. I met her early on and, and she told me that I was part of this group and it, it really hit home with me. I feel like I lived a dream. I got to do something that, you know, guys like you and myself just literally dreamed about. And so it's very important for me to come back here and just show how much appreciation I have for NASCAR, all the fans, all the drivers. It's, it's been great. Well, we're thrilled to have you back because, you know, when people are away, uh, everybody's imagination goes rampant. <laughs> and on the Internet, here, there's the meme, uh, one of them, uh, yeah. uh, about Carl and, and the farm. I did have to shave before I showed up today. Yeah. <laughs> it was and, and I said I couldn't wear the hat. But, yeah, it's um, no, I am the worst farmer. I will not be on the 75 greatest farmers list <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> My brother does a pretty good job, but um, but yeah, Missouri's great. Uh, Still like flying, I said, yeah, fun. flying, yes, yeah. flying uh, a lot, having some fun with that. Been volunteering a little bit. Gideon Rescue Company, great folks, and um, like I said, just enjoying life. Well, let's get to it because we're about to start stage two. You did not stage race. What no, is, I, how does this look to you? It's interesting. Um, I can't tell if it would be harder for me as a driver or or simpler, but I can tell you this racetrack, I was so excited to be a part of this, just for a lot of the reasons we talked about, so difficult. And layer, layering the stages on top of managing tires, the balance, planning for that final stage, it's a really complex race to run well. Now you got this new gen car shifting, Carl? <laughs> shifting at Darlington? Yeah, that was always bad if I was shifting at Darlington. I was just backwards coming on the pit line. <laughs> All right, they're going to come to the Geico restart zone. Brad Keselowski up to third with a 9.7-second stop, his best of the year. Uh, Bubba Wallace uh, had a problem with the lug nut, dropped from third to 18th on that pit stop. Stage two, here we go. Great jump by Martin Truex. Yeah, how about Keselowski? You know, you talk about Wallace having trouble, big time trouble in pit road, but Keselowski, great stop by his guys. Got a little tight off of two there, Chastain looking at his inside. 
Yeah, talking to Booty Barker down in the garage a minute ago, they said on these tires with these high loads, you know, the cars are really tough to drive through those bumps. And they're also, you know, with all this underbody, Carl, the diffuser underneath of it, the aero, that, that uh, you know, that it's so defined behind the cars. You can see these cars get in a wake, much like a boat wake, and, man, that thing takes off. You can literally see it on the screen. And I did. I saw that at the end of the last stage when people got into traffic. The pace slowed down. You know, I was talking to somebody in the garage about the diffuser coming up, the balance changing. All these things are what make this track so difficult. You know, you said, um, well, Mike teed you up to look. Here's Bubba Wallace. Man, look at the trouble he's had. That's going to be a tough hole to dig out of. These spots are hard to come by on that racetrack. Way easier on pit road. Yeah, it looked really tough to pass anyone until the tires really fell off late in the run. You know, much like last weekend, once you start getting into lap traffic, forcing you out of that preferred groove, that's when it got interesting, just like Kansas Speedway. And so we see guys like Ross Chastain, you know, he, he really went for it here at the start. Are they still managing the tires? Is it that important here like it used to be for the first few laps? To well, exactly right. Yes, Ross Chastain, and he's up in clean air. Talking about Bubba Wallace that we just saw there, door to door, slipping and sliding around. He doesn't have that affordability, just like Suarez. Right. He had to go. He almost went a lap down because of a pit road speeding penalty. What we saw in the first stage, Carl, was uh, the t lap times would fall off half a second in five laps and another half a second over the next five laps. Interesting. And I used to drive this place with the idea that in the first few laps, if I wasn't passing somebody, do not kill your tires because you need them later. All right, Bubba Wallace trying to dig himself out of a hole. He's back in 18th. He restarted 19th. Uh, discipline here. Discipline. We'll work on what we did. Fix it. Keep us in the game here. Here is the stop. Ah, uh, it's just shame have it on, did he? Well, he's got it tight to the wheel, but the wheel wasn't tight to the hub, so they had to raise yeah. it up again. Heads up play, though. He realized that he saw it did not come off of that. That brought that jack yep. man back around. He saw that he was still on that wheel and knew he had a problem. We've all done that at some point in our car lives. Tighten the lug nuts and not had them exactly tight. So, yeah, good heads up move. It's, you know, it's hard to see that each and every week with only one lug nut. We used to have five on, right. five off, right, or five off, five on. And with that one lug nut, we still see it because you still have those five dowel pins that align that wheel up. Just like Mike alluded to, that lug nut was tight, but the dowel pins weren't in the holes. So Truex the leader, Byron in second, and Ross Chastain in third, Jamie. And they unloaded with a great car yesterday. Phil Surgeon, the crew chief, told me they were really happy with it. Minimal changes. However, they went too far on that first pit stop, so they backed off that wedge adjustment. And Phil Surgeon said, I love pitting. We have that much confidence in our pit crew. Anytime we need to come today, we're going to get the job done. That's exactly what they did. Now, Ross Chastain in third spot. Yep, well done. Dale Jarrett's here today with that uh, UPS scheme. Uh, yesterday, there was a car in the Xfinity race, all in yellow and white. Jeff Bodine hung out with them. Friday night, the truck race, there was a Mario Andretti tribute car, and Mario was here. That's unbelievable. This is so much fun to see all these all these guys paying tribute to the, the guys that made the sport and that they enjoyed watching, some of their family members. It's, it's really cool to see. Gibbs, you worked for Joe Gibbs, Carl, and seeing that commander's car out there, the paint scheme, pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. I got to talk to Jack Roush this morning. We were just looking at uh, Brad Keselowski. But, yeah, Joe Gibbs, Jack Roush, the guys who made my life, made my NASCAR career, uh, a tribute to Joe Gibbs there. That's really special. Now, I know they're the commanders. Earlier I called it the Redskins car because Ty's grandfather didn't coach the commanders. He coached the Redskins. So, all right there. I think that's fair. Now, I want to go back to one thing that, that I heard Bubba Wallace said. He, he said, hey, um, you know, long race. And I think that's the key to really think about that race, how long it is. Don't beat yourself. Don't get frustrated. My only win here came after being two laps down. And that was the key is to just settle in, take what it'll give you. And it's, I mean, they're all hot right now. The cars are probably driving terribly. It's really hard to do. Well, look back at last weekend. I mean, you really don't have to look any further than last weekend at Kansas Speedway. Kyle Larson gets wrecked off of four or five laps in, leading the race. His teammate, William Byron, two laps down, like you said, down and out because of the cautions and everything has started coming. They get back to the lead. One of them methodically, the five car drove up through the field under green because of all those cautions. William Byron was able to capitalize on that. Lo and behold, here they are racing for the lead or for the win at the end. 
and you guys have probably talked about it a lot, but I mean, you can relate to this. Clint. There's no tougher place to keep your head in the game than here. Oh, yeah, that wall will swallow you up in a heartbeat. And it's so temptatious, like, all right, well, that was a good lap. Don't crew chiefs in your ear. Man, that's a good lap. Give me one of those. You think that was good? All right. Yeah. Yeah, that was just plain luck. The car slid right where I wanted. I stood on the gas and I didn't wreck. Man, it's it, it's tough to balance aggression and consistency. So here is Ross Chastain closing on second place, William Byron. Regan? Well, Mike, on the track, things have been good for William Byron so far today, but the driver just gave him a report. Remember, it's very hot out today. Take a listen to what he had to say. That's not a good sign no. there, Carl. I'm hot in this booth. <laughs> okay, that, those cars, folks, those guys are in there literally wrestling these race cars. Their hearts are just stopping in the middle of one and two while they're trying to slide around on these tires. And, you know, if that helmet hose is off. It's got to be toasty. 110 laps complete. We're 20 laps into the 95 lap stage two with Martin Truex out in front for 109 of these 110 laps. I'm out feeling too good. It's not about the cars, the speed, the action. It's not about the party or the long weekend. It's about them, the ones that gave everything. This Memorial Day weekend, we honor the fallen at America's Home for Racing, the 64th running of the Coca-Cola 600. Just want to wish Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, uh, especially uh, my mother. She can't be here uh, this weekend, but we got her grilled cheese recipe riding along with us. I just wanted to wish all the moms, my wife Kelly, my mom Lisa, the happiest Mother's Day. I appreciate everything you guys do. Well, Happy Mother's Day uh, to all the moms out there, but especially my mom. I uh, literally wouldn't be here without you, so thank you for everything. I wish Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, specifically my mom Jamie and then my wife Marissa. So happy Mother's Day, Gay, who raised our two kids while I was off at the races. And to all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. We are 117 laps in at Darlington, 27 out of 95 here in Stage 2. Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, Carl Edwards joining us for Stage 2 at the Track 2 Tough to Tame. This doesn't work without them moms. Happy Mother's yeah. Day, Mama. Laura, good mom's out there. Saw Carl, you brought your mom. Haven't yes. seen her in a long time. Mine, Great to see her. Uh, it, it, she was so excited to come. And, and Kate, she does such a good job raising our kids. I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by great moms. We're all pretty blessed. Yes. You bet. And it's heating up here on the track, folks. It looks like uh, people are struggling. There's people that are overheated. It looks like somebody might be getting loose into three every once in a while. And here you are. Well, there you got Kyle. Uh, you got Christopher Bell looking at the inside of Kyle Larson on the outside of him. That car's bouncing back, Carl. I don't know yep. if you were here at first stage, but Kyle Larson's digging back from a, a, a small, sorry, a slow pit stop. And then this battle right here, Chastain working on Byron for second. He's been working on him for a while. And I, I, I just got to wonder what exactly the balance does as they go. Booty Barker told me that as they get into three later, the, the rear of the car will raise. It'll get loose. And I see people diving in on them into three, but it's so hard to complete a, a pass yet. Maybe as the tires fall off, it'll get better. Well, it's lap traffic. Where's the opportunities? Yep. And the opportunity lies in that lap traffic. Time your time. Manage your tires. Yep. Ride your right. Stay right there. Manage all this. As soon as you start getting in the lap traffic, pounce on them. Use yeah, them as a pick. And I used to feel, as you watch these cars go into turn one, you almost feel like you're tied to a rope in the infield. And if you can wind up turns one and two here and time it all right, you come out of the back straight away just like you're shot out of a cannon. And that timing, you're exactly right, Clint. In the lap traffic, you can do it better than other people. So last week, somebody hit Clint Boyer for $5,000. And if you are playing today, here is one of the Super 6 questions. Which of these drivers will have the better finish at the end of the race and by how many positions? Right now, Kevin Harvick uh, is in seventh and Tyler Reddick is in 11th. So that is four spots. You're looking from Tyler Reddick over there at Chase or Bill or one of those Elliots. Rolling into this weekend in Darlington, I'd have got that wrong. I would have definitely said, you know, Harvick and, and the Stuart Hearts boys have been struggling. I would have went with Tyler Reddick in that 45 bunch. But Kevin Harvick, just like he always does, just steady Eddie and staying right there in the hunt. And I got to think that experience really pays off here more than almost any other oval you guys go to. 
Regan has more. Well, you guys talk about steady Ebby. Kevin Harvick in this race right now, moving up to seventh place. Early on, they were very loose with that race car, but they've now transitioned it. Kevin's last report, the car just a little bit tight. I saw Kevin before the race, and he had that gleam in his eye that if he had long runs today, he was going to be very good, and so far that's the case. Jamie? And how about our Daytona 500 winner, Ricky Stenhouse Jr.? Great weekend so far. Qualified third, the best he's ever done here on Saturday. And so far, the car just a little bit tight. They made a small adjustment to help the overall grip. They also told him, fix your entry to three. That's where the guys ahead of you are making up some time on you. And also his crew chief, Mike Kelly, he told me, my driver loves racing here. I love racing here. And when you have that, you have more fun, and it's easier to dial in because this place is tough. There is Stenhouse closing on Keselowski for fifth place. They're about eight and a half seconds behind the lead. I'm impressed with Keselowski. That car is yep. holding steady. The by far the best Ford Mustang we have in the field. Great job, Keselowski, so far. Yeah, like I said, uh, Jack and Steve Newmark both excited about his prospects today. Great crowd. Fantastic so, crowd. Lap 125. All of those towels that are being waved at lap 125 celebrate Goodyear's 125th anniversary as a tire company. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Goodyear, for everything you've done for our sport. And I say that from the heart. I don't receive any free products anymore, which is really a downside to being retired, I can tell you that. Well, it probably worked. <laughs> For a while, Carl, <laughs> you just decided never to come back. You know, you got to at least show your face. Know. That's how those product endorsement that, sponsors work. Actually, what's happening? I've got some bald tires at home, and you know, oh, I that's could what use that was some, a little plug, yeah, a little, you know. So the one Look time how, you show up since 2016, <laughs> he just pitched for a new set of tires on a farm truck. Oh, Such a Carl well, Edwards thing, right there. You know, we know a guy who knows a guy. Yeah. So. We'll work on that. <laughs> I, I, I'm well, not unemployed. I'm between now opportunities. Now I see why you come back. Yeah. Well, Martin Truex has stunk up the show. He's ahead of William Byron by 4.6 seconds with pit stops on the way. I want to ride in the blimp. Just never buy a miss. Yeah, that and the tires. Perfect. I'm in. I started as a stunt driver, I had to create my own path. So I got in my Ford and I got to work. Literally every moment of the day, I just trained. And now I can confidently say that I'm one of the top drivers in this industry. I'm at the swing joint telling people that Geico has been offering savings for over 85 years. That's longer than the buffalo wing's been around. Dozen wings. And did you know that Geico offers mo <coughs> motorcycle insurance? <laughs> oh, my lips are burning. <laughs> oh, no, my lips are actually burning. Geico. Over 85 years of savings and service. See how much you could save at geico.com. It's too hot. Oh, this is too hot, mate. to try it first. Yeah. Crafts, sporting goods, restaurants, and the future of NASCAR all from your neighborhood. DoorDash. The All-Star Race. Where the best of the best return to one of NASCAR's most historic tracks. North Wilkesboro. North Wilkesboro. North Carolina, baby. With an uphill backstretch and a downhill front stretch. Anything can happen. Especially with a million bucks on the line. What would you do for a million dollars? What wouldn't I do? Oh. I'm bringing the 29 back. I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Will you? The All-Star Race, next Sunday on FS1. The sports world loves the USFL. This is it. Hey! It's real football. We're the most physical team in the league. With real pros. For real fans. What a catch. Saturday at 4 Eastern on Fox. And boom, Birmingham takes on Michigan. Freaking Then Sunday at 4, New Jersey.
battles Houston. Are you kidding me? Go! Week 6 USFL action heats up this weekend on Fox. <laughs> Hundred thirty one laps complete at Darlington in the good year four hundred forty two laps out of ninety five now in stage two. We're going to start looking at green flag stops here Carl one of the hardest tracks in the NASCAR circuit to get on the pit road. <laughs> yes absolutely you come down here into turn three fast your tires are greasy you think it's slick up on the racetrack then you pull down on the apron it's like half the grip and it's really easy to mess that up. And there's markers, right? Three, two, one markers uh, down there to help you, to assist you, but it catches you off guard every single time. You think you've got it gauged, right? Your speed, everything else, just like you said, you pull off that banking. Uh-oh, I messed up. There you go. There I, you see those markers right there. Yeah, and that is the tightest corner in all of racing right there, trying to turn in there and not mess that up. I have been an absolute terrible offender of that. Here he comes. Right on cue, pit road opens. Michael McDowell. Yeah, that's the first one, right? Yep. Got to try to short pit this here a little bit, try to gain some track position. Now, he was a lead lap car running just outside the top 20. As we watch this, you know, he'll, he'll come out on fresher tires and we'll have less of a gap, and that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, all right, the play is to short pit him catch him you know they're out here yep. running slow uh, lap times he's going to be way faster but there's still a long ways to go that might bite you on the back half of this Harry yep. Mack yeah Mike really the lap you'd want to run to is about lap 140 which is about six laps from now but I think what you're going to see here in the next two or three laps you're going to see st some start coming because remember every lap there on those fresh tires versus old tires it's about two seconds a lap wow big difference More players. BJ McLeod has uh, been in and on pit road. Almirola is on pit road. Great paint scheme there. It's a Dale Jr. tribute to uh, when he carried the Major League Baseball logo. Here comes Haley. The All Star game. Justin Haley in. Now again, these are cars that are not in the top 15, uh, but trying to improve their position uh, at the end of stage two by pitting early. Joey Logano in, and here's one that is the five of Kyle Larson, Regan. Well, Mike Kyle Larson been pretty good here for most of the day, other than that slow pit stop early on in the race that got him back. Right now, this run, all of a sudden, the car went too tight off at turn four. He was scratching his head just a little bit about that. Now, he was in eighth place when he pitted. We'll see how this uh, picks him up. He was 9.6 seconds back at the time of his stop. Denny Hamlin's in, Austin Sindrick to pit road. AC Truex still on the racetrack, your leader. He'll be coming soon. He'll have to. They drew him in. And he started this with a 4.7 second lead over second place. So big, big um, advantage for him. There's William Byron coming into his box. Regan. The 24, William Byron asking for adjustments for the first time all day. The car is starting to get too tight for him. He needs help. That means the front tires won't turn. And the eight car, Kyle Busch, just getting looser. Every run needs some help with the rear. Martin Truex. Surrenders the lead. First time he has given it up all day to come to pit road. Chastain staying out will be the new leader, but here's Chastain in. So to cover both of those, here's Jamie. Well, Ross Chastain in the one car has been pretty good. Better rear grip this run, he said. Still looking for his first win of the season. Meanwhile, the 19 had to wait on it for Martin Truex Jr. They had a talk this weekend. James Small said, we must get the pole, get this number one pit box if we want to win this race. And so far, they have been perfect today. Ryan Blaney, the new leader, then Bubba Wallace. As Truex exits, here comes Byron into turn one. How's this going to play out? I think, obviously, Byron came in, threw him in by one lap. He's going to narrow it up a little bit, but uh, performance was there for both, both guys there. Great job. So it was a 4.7 second gap before pit stops. Truex to Byron. Brian Blaney throwing it back to his dad, Dave Blaney's season in the World of Outlaws in which he won five races and then went on a couple of years later to be the World of Outlaws champion. There is uh, Dave Blaney at the Moody Mile at Syracuse. Man, that was a cool race car. First year that he drove for Casey Luna was uh, that season. So 
Blaney the leader. Wallace four and a half back. Then Daniel Suarez who uh, recovers from that speeding penalty. We'll see how it plays out as this round of green flag stops continues. Well I think the advantage went to Larson. Larson's the one that picked up. Utilize that green flag stop. There's the comparison. Truex a little quicker on pit road. Larson stop was better. Byron, excuse stopped. me, Byron. Stopped. But I think that's exactly why you saw kind of a you know even performance on the green flag stop there. Byron did close the gap, if I'm not mistaken. And Blaney will pit and surrender the lead after being out front for three circuits. Wallace with him. That'll cycle Truex back to the lead. And now he and Byron are only two and a half apart. So William Byron by coming in a lap earlier picked up what seven seconds on uh, on Truex. Well that shows exchange. you this is the advantage right there Carl. Right. I mean it, the proof's in the pudding. You got to be careful but that can also bite you on the backside of these runs. Right and we'll see how that plays out but on the backside of the run especially a long one like this you'll be in more traffic. So if you're crafty you get lucky maybe you don't lose that advantage that you gain. That's where the chess match is. It's a gamble. Yes. All right, short pit. I can help you on the front side, but the back side, you might be in heavy traffic on older tires. That'll even bite you worse. But Byron likes it right now. So Truex back to the lead. He's only won one of the last six races in which he's left 100 laps or more, but it happened right here in this race two years ago. Here is where it must be left on the track. And now is when the future is written in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Dirt sprint cars and midgets, there's nothing like it. The power, the out of control. You're on the edge of your seat the entire time. Everything you do is so fast. Racing obviously is dangerous. Oh my God. At the end of the day, I'm more alive being a race car driver than not. This is dirt. This new five part documentary premieres this Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, here on FS1. How about this? Chastain made quick time with William Byron in second, and man, he is on the rear bumper of Truex. As he dives underneath here, if he can't complete the pass here, watch the line he runs into turn one. Something I've never done. He ran in high, actually, and I heard guys have been working on this. Truex is getting tight. You see him almost knock the wall down there, had to lift, and the one's looking underneath of him because of that. Well, Ross didn't. Chastain is doing what nobody has been able to do all day, pass Martin Truex. Well, he hasn't got by him yet. This gets pretty tight right off of here. Way tight. This is where all the trouble happens. Truex, you see him lifting uh -oh. out of the gas again. He's handling his win away in this 19 car, your leader. It's not laying down. The old in. leader, Carl. There it is. New like, uh, leader. Yes, I hear you. She likes what she sees. This would be a good time for me to tell you about my sponsorship with UPS I used to have. It was spectacular. Good job, Ross. <laughs> oh, seriously, good move. He's had his elbows up all day. He's been digging, going forward, finding grip. He ran him down with a different line than I've seen anybody run down there up in the leader, you know, league group. And good job, Ross. He was my ones to watch. Really? One to watch, Carl. Oh. I picked the one that you did. I picked the one one. Carl, yes. you know, all right, we saw you retire. 2016, we yep. talked about it. Um, saw Jimmy Johnson retire. Tried some other forms of yep. motorsports. You know, have you tried anything else? I done anything, any kind of racing? No other? race cars. And it was, yep. I was talking to, I think it was Casey Kane earlier. He said, well, that was easy to not race when I first stepped away. But it's getting harder and harder. I like yeah. sliding stuff around. I like driving cars. So there'll be a time where I go do something, maybe some sim work, something like that. Like That's what uh, you want to do, sim work? To see if I can still drive. Oh, it's okay. a step-by-step -step process. Right. I'll let you be my sim drive. You want to set my cars up, and I'll go back racing. Is that? I don't know. I, I love racing cars. I love driving cars. Yep. Um, but I want to do it 100%. And for me to step away from the sport when I did, I got to go do my the things I wanted to do 100%. And if I ever come back, I want to be able to give it all I've got. We keep plugging Goodyear the way you are. Maybe they'll uh, let you drive the blimp. Uh, one more thing. I have heard, the legend has it, that you sailed the ocean blue. We did. We motored across from Europe, across the Atlantic. 
My nickname's Buckets because I threw up the first two days. Then we went back over to Europe and as a family cruised around. And right now we're building a sailboat. I'm very excited about it. And I'd say that's what's got my blood pumping the most is go travel the world by boat. I don't know why. Don't ask We've me. We burnt gasoline I our know. whole entire lives. You're a fast race car driver. You want to <laughs> sail? I do. And uh, I'll tell you who is sailing right now is Chastain. And Truex is struggling. As we watch a field go by here, I cannot help but think this is the time that frustration is mounting with all of these guys. Well, not everybody is as happy uh, as laying out on the ocean, doing the slowest thing possible. Uh, there are some drivers that are not running as quickly as they'd like, and they've expressed it on the radio. I blocked this early on this kind of a racetrack. I know, it's so dumb. Aggravation is not out of me. I think I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then all of a sudden, I just pick up a massive tight. And I have to really check up right there instead of rolling into a speed. Front end pace, what do you need for that? I mean, here's my thing. I can go faster, but I just think I'm going to pay for it. So that's a me problem, not a you problem. I was definitely tighter at the start of the run, but hell, if I'm not, I'm going to be shit, So I don't know. Wow. It's pretty good there. Logic. Yeah. I think that comes, you know, watching these, these race cars go around here with the diffuser, right? That definitive, very defined uh, draft out of the back of these cars, crossing that lake what, like we talked about. You see them as they approach those cars, four or five car lengths back, Carl, picking up a massive push, happening to get out of that wake, forcing them in a different place on this racetrack. That's a challenge. Yeah, I'm enjoying your boat analogies. That's great, the wake and all, but... I, I do I do believe these cars are very, very difficult to drive from what the guys have told me. You can't just muscle it around, pitch the rear end, get it to turn. You know, Ryan and Newman and I talked a little bit about it. Your window's small, that diffuser changes, traffic's a, a, a bear. And I am interested in this pit strategy because as we talk about all these things, I think that's going to be the key and and there's a lot to that. I think one of those keys to this racetrack is this track is ever changing. We know that as it rubbers down, it picks up a difference. Listen along. I'm just afraid I'm a little too loose. So leaders that typically take off a little more neutral each run have held on reasonable. You know, you've still been a little faster than them all the way at the end of a run. So I don't know that I would be super concerned right now. You just have managed the best you can. You've got a second and a half out front. Manage the best you can. He is uh, three and a half seconds now ahead of Stenhouse, uh, right behind him, and Larson closing on Kyle Busch. Okay, now we talk about 19, the leader of the race. Yep. Very easy to be out there leading this race and get complacent, exactly. not make those adjustments and keep up to this racetrack, Carl. Yeah, the atmospheric conditions haven't changed. Sun's out, track's hot, but the track has been rubbering in. And I saw that yesterday during practice and qualifying. It seemed to change quite a bit. I'm very curious what exactly that 19 car is struggling with because it's what you said. You're complacent because you've been leading all day and then you get behind. Hearing him on that radio talk about being tight, and I think that's exactly what you saw when Chastain passed him. He had to lift way out of the gas, up off the two, keep from knocking that wall down again, down in three and four. The rest is history. And he said on the radio the difference is now that the track has taken rubber. His car's handling completely differently. Exactly what Carl just said. This is this is normal Darlington Raceway uh, uh, events that are happening. Keeping up with this racetrack. You heard Larry tell us. He told us that very thing before the race happened. Keeping up with this racetrack. They may be making adjustments in those pits every single time. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Third place side by side here. Kyle Busch. And... Uh, so everybody's getting tighter. Seems like everybody's getting tighter with the rubber coming down, Carl. The one that keeps going marching to the front is that five car, Kyle Larson. He's the only one out there that we heard on that radio talking about being loose. I can tell you, I've never followed somebody who can do the things that he could do in a stock car. So if there's anybody that's going to go find the grip, he's going to buy. He'd be the guy who goes and does it. And he's also the kid, because of that talent, he can hold on to that looser race right. car. That, yeah. We saw it last weekend at Kansas Speedway. Man, that thing is out from underneath <laughs> them lap after lap. Unbelievable. Well, when they last pitted 25 laps ago, Ross Chastain was 5.2 seconds behind Martin Truex. Now he leads by nine tenths of a second. Why can't you be true? You just started doing the thing you used to do. You could see everything was sort of still there. It was just how they left it. You grow up with it, you you kind of take for granted that it's always going to be there. When it goes away, you're like, man, that didn't have to happen.
reopening North Wilkesboro Speedway. How hard could this be? Tell me a stadium, a sports venue anywhere in the United States that got resurrected. I never thought about them ever using World for, for a racetrack anymore. Marcus would come by and he'd say, hey man, just so you know, I haven't forgotten about Wilkesboro. What does that mean, Marcus? I felt bad that there was so much disappointment. We're in the entertainment business. We like to make people happy. NASCAR's run a full circle. They're coming back home. Yeah, we're going to have an all-star race there, but this is way beyond the all-star race. Hope rewarded Wednesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. The return of North Wilkesboro. And Darrell Waltrip, we're going to put the band back together. Darrell's going to join us cool. in the booth at North Wilkesboro for the NASCAR All-Star Race. Was up there Wednesday for an open house. Just hats off to everybody involved. Everybody. And I mean it took everybody to get that thing revived from a vision. When they started talking about that, Carl, we, my dad and I rode up there on our motorcycles to pull in there and look at it. I'm like, there's no chance you're going to revive this place. Boy, was I wrong. That's so exciting. And, uh, yeah. Is it, and, okay, so I've been watching Chastain. It looks like Truex is catching him a little bit, and there's a ton of traffic in front of him. I think this is going to get real exciting here in a couple laps. Jamie gives us an update. And Justin Marks is the team owner for Track House. And you guys have the track position now. Bicker is doing their job. What is the strategy now with 123 laps to go? Well, one of the really great things about NASCAR racing is how loud it is. So I couldn't really hear anything <laughs> you asked me. But I think you said strategy. It's always it's always great to be able to be in a strategic position when we're leading the race. Obviously, we've got a really, really fast four-line express GPS number one car for us. And, you know, he drove up there to the lead on his own. So now it puts us in a position where we can sort of control the race a little bit and sort of watch what everybody else is doing. So that's just, it's the best spot to be in, honestly. Uh, everybody at Track House has been working so hard. I know that uh, Daniel got a speedy penalty early. He's got a fast car, too, and they're trying to get work where they can get, uh, you know, get back up there. And this pit crew, they are lights out awesome. The 99 and the 1, these guys, they have fun and they're super fast. and. Um, we're all just living the dream at Track House. It's so great to be here on the back weekend, and uh, hopefully we can we can win at one of the most iconic NASCAR tracks. Justin Marks' this Track House team, Mike, they just do things differently down here, trying to get their first win of the season with Ross. Been over a year since Ross Chastain's been. Last April, as a matter of fact, since he's been in victory lane, hard to believe. Well, he's coming up to lap Daniel Suarez, his teammate. Suarez was a top five car until he had a speeding penalty leaving the pits back at lap 38. Here's the, la the line you were talking about, Carl, right along with Martin Truex. Yeah, so you're, you're on the throttle, on the throttle. He's looking for clean air right here, hits the patch, tons of grip. Don't spin the rear tires off of turn two. Then you come barreling down here. You can't see the entry. You just slide in here. You're looking for your spot. Not too close to the wall, but you know there's grip up there, but don't get tempted. Looking <laughs> for clean air. And right now, breathing down his neck, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, the top four separated by only two seconds. What I saw right there is the difference in this new car versus the old. Carl, I would have, you know, rode the wall a little bit instead of diamond him off of that. That showed yep. you that that uh, wake, if you will, the car in front of it. They cannot be in that wake whatsoever. He elected to go down low, diamond that corner up off, trying to stay underneath of him. And more shifting opportunities, so you can pinch the car a little bit more and maybe still have some power to come off the corner, but. I really am excited to see the end of this run. I know we've only got, uh, how many laps? 11, 11 to go. But this traffic, I really feel like is going to be a factor. And in the final stage, I think that's that could play a, a huge role in the outcome. Nice shots from the Toyota cam and the driver's eye on board Martin Truex here in second place. And the top four are closing up. Truex now just half a second back. Kyle Busch 1.2, Kyle Larson 2.5. As you'll watch from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. They power every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Do you get a set of tires? They're great. I do, Carl. Great I'm tires. Very I'm very upset with that. In fact, I, I couldn't have said it better than Mike. Thanks. I'll give you the script next time. Thank you. I'd love to do that. Did you see how close our guys are racing to that wall in three and four? They, Unbelievable how close they are. I don't know about you, Clint, but when I you, you watch these guys go down the back straightaway, when I would drive into three and four, it's like I knew there might be some grip up there, but you have to decide, man, am I going to risk it? It's slide really job. difficult. They're a perfect slide job. Coming from a dirt racer, Christopher Bell, textbook, 
slid right up in front of well. Stenhouse, took his line. See how he got tight in the yep. wake of that car? Now here comes Kevin Harvick behind him. Going to make that pass as well, capitalizing on that. Free pass right there, Carl. You're up. Harvick up to eighth. Stenhouse back to ninth. I'm still super impressed with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and company. Yep. Man, fantastic job. Top 10 all day long. Great car. Stenhouse has more, run more laps in the top 10 today than in all of his previous 14 races here combined. <laughs> Good job, Ricky. Just a dirt racer. Did it the hard way. It's having a great day. Now Tyler Reddick anchors the top 10. Here comes Blaney looking for some stage points on the inside. Oh, he got oh, oh, man. I think Blaney may have got into him. We're gonna have to watch that back, Carl, but I think Blaney got into him. I heard his throttle get out of the get out of the gas, and you could tell that he was in the wall. I think I heard some of those crunching noises that are terrible to hear here. So Blaney. No crossover with Blaney. Slides up. Yeah. Squeezed oh. him pretty hard. Yeah, he just he definitely misjudged that. Well, eight worked better than four. <laughs> well, unless you're running good years and then four just fine. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's not good. Now the leaders have tightened up. Truex has come right back here with six to go in stage two, looking for another stage win. He liked that lead more, and that's playoff points are so important. That's why you see these guys. One more opportunity. Look at these lappers side by side, and those lappers are going to be racing hard, trying to stay on that lead lap. That'll be difficult for Chastain. One of them being his teammate. Huge run down the back straightaway for the 19. Suarez in the 99 the green and white car is still the last car on the lead lap. See Chastain a little bit loose getting into three there. Now Truex stays on the outside like I was talking about earlier. See if he can get that run. Race is on here. Playoff points so important Carl. Yep. Dive it down into the corner and Truex uh, chose that high line. Maybe chose the high line. Running across the middle just looks like he's really searching for clean oh. air. That car that was being lapped there. That's Josh Berry. I believe he got into the wall off. 48, time. very hard. Hard impact in, into the wall right in front of your leaders. Look who's sneaking in the picture. Kyle Bush. And Kyle Larson. They have Ooh. run them down. Four to go. Took a long time to get there. But this as is soon the as they got into those lap traffic, Carl. That was the difference maker. Yeah, this is the this is Darlington. This is where it gets exciting. These guys know they only have three to go. They get to race hard for this stage win. Chastain's got away from him again, but there's still three lappers ahead. Suarez being the closest. Uh, Suarez's biggest fan right now is Ryan Priest, who is the first car one lap down, and we get the free pass if things stay as they are. One of Chastain's strong suits was getting into three. He really could dive that car in harder than most, and I think that's went away. Starting to get loose into three, and you see Tru uh, Truex behind him capitalizing on that. Truex is really just trying anything he can. I mean, it's an unorthodox line there. I know some guys have been doing that, looking for grip. Maybe that's part of his solution to the track rubbering in problem that Truex was having. That's exactly what I'm talking about. See how much he closed yep. in in turn three? Chastain's kind of in a window there. Can't overdrive that thing anymore. Loose getting in where Ch uh, Truex was able to really dive that thing in. And whatever Chastain's struggling with, he can't get closer to his teammate Suarez there. He's just unable to close that, close up that gap. One more lap to finish off stage two. If he can put some pressure on him getting into three. Force him to get loose might be the ticket here. Yes. He's close enough, Carl. Yes, he is. Both of them. Look at that. That's exactly. Oh! And around goes oh. Truex. Not that much pressure. Still. Oh. Can he keep it going? He's going to spin around. Oh my gosh. Caution waves to end the stage. We'll watch the replay. I don't think anyone hit anything too hard, but man, that's terrible. So Chastain gets the stage win. He hit the wall pretty hard. That one it, car hit one the wall pretty it. hard. Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, William Byron, Keslowski. Well, the pressure's on. It's like I was saying, the opportunity's here. Playoff points on the line. Got into the corner just like we were talking about. Chastain saw him coming. You think these guys aren't digging for everything they've got? Well, he was. That was awesome. Don't stop driving that hot. Here's Martin Truex's view of the last lap, stage two.
Stay Studio, Shannon and Jamie here. What a way to end stage two. But Jamie, I know you have your eyes on the guy who finished in last uh, yesterday's race first. That, of course, is Kyle Larson. Yeah, Kyle Larson's had an up and down day. Started seven. Looked like he was going to have a car that could drive it to lead. But right here on lap 39, you see he comes in. The jack doesn't fall. The car doesn't fall. The jack. The jack just goes down. He has to go back, jack the car, get the tire back on. Kyle Larson fell all the way back to 28, Shannon. But look at him go. I mean, he was passing cars on the top, on the bottom, and he's moved all the way up to third place at the end of stage two. I think he's the guy to beat right now. Yeah, of course, we know how big that win was for him yesterday to make it two in a row at Darlington. What a day it would be for the five team. Uh, throwback weekend. Let's throw it back to you, Mike Joy. <laughs> Thank you. We're getting ready for pit stops here at the end of stage two. And let's listen in to some of the radio in that final lap. Everything okay? Yeah. Thought I had plenty of room there. Just he bounced off the wall, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Larry Mack, what did your data tell you about those? Uh... I went easy behind Daniel so long. I feel like I never used the front. Uh... Larry, what's your data tell you about those two drivers entering turn three? Yeah, the, everybody was off the brake. They were down in the middle of turns three and four. All three of them were completely off. But when Ross got right in the middle of three and four, whether it's because he got loose or he lost the nose, he had to get on the brakes and got on them real hard right there. I saw the rear end wiggle just at least a little bit, just a little but the, and, and he, that's when he got on the brakes, slid up the racetrack. Um, that's hard racing. That's really Caught me hard off racing. guard. Yeah, Caught those guys off guard, but that's that's as hard as just that's I think that's how you call that. That's Darlington. And it, Ross said he didn't expect those fronts to have that grip because of the you know how easy he had been on them. So this racetrack can get you a number of ways. So Truex will be tenth entering pit road. He got the final stage point. Uh, Ryan Priest will get the free pass as the leaders come to pit road. Regan. Kyle Bush started off that last run with just a little bit too much splitter contact. Team asked him if he could handle a little bit more. He said yes, but not much more. Race car got too loose as he got to the end of the run. Wanted a little adjustment for that. And the five car, Kyle Larson, was turning better, especially early on, but way too loose at the end of that run, Jamie. Ross Chastain picks up his fifth stage win of the year. You saw that contact. He said the good news is he hit square, so he thinks everything is all right. The wheel is straight. And the 19 of Martin Truex Jr., he said if Ross would have just run his line and stopped worrying about blocking all the time, we would have been fine. So a little bit of damage on the 19, but they think they are okay as well with the four-tire stop here. Thanks, Jamie. That's close. Man, Come very on. close. Larson to the point. How about it? Got him, Carl. Wow, this is falling into Larson's hands. So plus two for Kyle Larson as he gets off pit road first. Here's the video. Barely. Wow. About six inches uh, was the difference there. So stage two is in the book. Ross Chastain, the leader, Carl. Delighted to have you back. <laughs> Thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me here, yeah. both of you. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks to Fox, all the fans for NASCAR, bringing all of us guys out here. This has been a, a lot of fun. I can't wait to watch the end of the race. Man, so glad to see you again. It's been a while. Carl, always, always good competitors. Had a lot of fun on and off the racetrack. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stories there, but uh, always good to see you, buddy. Glad cool. you're here. Thanks again, everybody. All right, don't be a stranger now. All right, that's a deal. Thanks. All right, joining us for stage three, Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, winner of the Winston Million at Darlington, Bill Elliott. Hey. Bill Elliott, 88 champion, Winston Million winner, certainly one of NASCAR's top 75 drivers. Uh, and joining us, and with a little skin in the game, uh, your son Chase here, uh, running well, trying to get himself uh, up in a position to win. His position right now matches his car number. <laughs> Maybe nine wasn't the best number to pick, but hey, it's got a great family history, and thank you for being with us. Well, I'm a little prejudiced, so I'm definitely for him. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. That's okay. well, I think your timing's right. He's <laughs> fully started to march to the front. Old Bill, also uh, Bill, gets up here, and there he is in the top ten. Well, We'll pull for him. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Petty talked in the first stage about racing this racetrack. And uh, here you had such great success here. And of course, Chase has been coming to this racetrack for a long, long time uh, before he actually got a chance to race here. It was after you'd done all your winning here. Well, you know, everybody asks me about my favorite racetrack or which one I like to race at. 
and this would have to be one of my favorites. Yeah. I just enjoyed the racetrack. I enjoyed the challenge of this racetrack, and especially early on in the early years, it's just it was just so much fun to to race the competitors, but to, you had to race the racetrack all day long. So, so the, the Winston, throwback, sorry, sorry. The, the Winston Million was four races, and you won the first two, Daytona and Talladega, and then you missed Charlotte, but you weren't worried. You still had a chance here. Well, I had one. I had sat on a pole and won the race here in the spring, and we took that particular car and put it up, put it all back together, and brought it back here. So I knew I had a good chance, but I wasn't the best car that day. But I did miss Charlotte. That's right. But you did win the million. But I did win the million. All right. So the throwback. Chase is honoring his dad. Pretty cool throwback. Look at the shirt you have on. That's oh, on that year, right? Ray Abraham Dodge. How, what else could you ask for? Pretty cool. And it still fits. Here we come, <laughs> Bill. Coming to the green. Let's see what all that right. kid can do. Coming to the Geico restart zone, Kyle Larson had a 9.6 second pit stop, his second fastest of the year for Cliff Daniel and crew. That's put him up front against Ross Chastain, Kyle Busch, William Byron, Harvick, Keselowski, Bell, Truex, Elliott, and Reddick, the top 10 as we go back to green. I see a new guy to the top. Eh, we'll see when we get to turn one here. Chastain's holding strong on that bottom. Race is on off of two. Oh, Trouble they got one right away. They're piled up. It's the big one on the back straight. Saw Eric Jones around sideways, a bunch of them. Cindric, McDowell, Austin Dillon, Ryan Newman around. Suarez, man. Hits keep coming for him. Only the fourth caution of the day. Heavy damage for Austin Dillon there with the left front, probably into their day. Uh, Ryan Newman involved in it. Daniel Suarez. Somebody's uh -oh. lost the wheel. That could be trouble. That could be the reason. I'd say that's the reason for the caution. All right, Jones on pit road already. And now Michael McDowell down pit road. Does that car doesn't have a right rear tire on it? That's exact. That was the car that I saw sideways. No right rear tire. That's exactly what happened. Wheel fell off. Some vacations going on there. So what watch you call the, the petty blue car. There he goes. You see it come off right there. He's sideways. See the wheel fall down on the right rear. Collected them all. You're going to see it roll off. And we'll watch it from the Ford camera on board Chase Briscoe. Little, 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 little. Check up hard, check up hard, watch for debris, check up hard, one outside, one outside, just keep watching, clear to the wall, clear to the wall. Great job, Chase Briscoe, great job, spotter. Told him low first, low is closed up, check up, check up hard. Watch that right rear wheel, you can see it. Tires down already. Costly air for not only his team, a lot of others. Cindric and Dylan to the pits and more. This is what the drivers will see. And this is what you'll see. Drivers. You. Drivers. You. It just got really interesting in Sonoma. And this is what everyone came to see. Get your tickets now at SonomaRaceway.com. down to number one on the greatest countdown show ever. Plus, don't miss the best fights, celebrations, driver rants, I'm gonna bust his ass. and bloopers in NASCAR history. Seriously, I don't get fine. Where will your favorite moment land on the list? That's tonight at 7 Eastern time here on FS1. We're under caution for the fourth time today with 96 laps to go. And let's show you why the lead is where it is as of the moment of caution. There are the caution lights lit up with Kyle Larson just barely ahead of Ross Chastain. Um, 
They go back, of course, to the last scoring loop crossed before the caution. Look at the two behind them, Bush and Byron. And they will line up in that order. Here are the nine drivers involved in that crash, which began with Eric Jones. Took them a long time to get a new wheel on the right rear and get it properly seated uh, with the single center lock nut. Let's take a look at today's race summary sponsored by Mother's Polishes. 197 laps complete. Kyle Larson is one of five leaders today. Martin Truex led the most laps, 145. There have been nine lead changes. We still have 22 cars on the lead lap as of that caution. The fourth one of the day. Truex and Chastain were the uh, stage winners. And it looks like most of the leaders will stay out uh, with pit road opening up here coming to, to the line for lap 198. 96 laps to go in Darlington. Action of plenty. Even Bruce Springsteen sang about Darlington County. A lot of the fans getting into the throwback weekend theme. I am a passenger. There's the pond outside uh, turn four, what is now turn four, originally turn two, that gives this track its unique egg shape. And there are the Darlington stripes. We've lost count. Jamie. Jimmy Johnson, one of the owners of Legacy Motor Club, and you just saw the last incident with Eric Jones. What did you see happen there, Jimmy? We're missing a wheel and tire. <laughs> that seemed to make things a little tricky for Eric over there off of two. So uh, unfortunately, uh, that wheel came off and collected some other cars, including the 42. But uh, the guys were doing a great job, and Eric had been you know, holding steady there in the top 15 most of the day, and an unfortunate kind of end to, uh, to a good run for us. How about for you? What's it like sitting up on top of the pit box, not being able to control anything or be in the race car? I feel so helpless. Um, it's, it's just such a different experience to be watching. It gives me a greater perspective of uh, just all the engineering that goes into it and strategy that's required. And I certainly en enjoyed being behind the wheel a lot more than I do sitting on the pit box, but that's where I am these days. Congratulations to you. You're one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. Thank you. So such an honor. Appreciate it. And Jimmy Johnson fans, he'll be back in the race car in two weeks at Charlotte. Mike? How about that? Uh, How about this one? Yep. Daniel yep. Suarez joins um, Austin Dillon out of the, the race garage after this one. Pit road speeding penalty, Bill. So many penalties, mistakes make the difference in this sport. And oh, absolutely. That's all. That's the whole deal in this sport. And here's uh, some Kyle Larson radio. What was Ross's balance to end that second stage? It was very adamant to not pass the 99 and put the 99 a lot down. So I'm just not sure, you know, how hard he was going loose to me. He looked loose. I don't know that he said that. Well, never mind. We, we found it. He did say he was building too loose at the end of the run. Okay. That's what I saw. Exactly what Cliff Daniels just told him. Building Good information. Yep. Heads up thinking, forward thinking. Kyle Larson. Here they come to the Geico restart zone, 92 laps to go. Still inside, still there, still there. Man, he's pushing well, him real high, Bill. Just yeah, like last low. week when Ross Chastain said, I gave him just enough room for his race car. That's just what he did again at turn two. And that's all it was. Good racing. Important spot. This clean air is so important. Still door to door. Here comes Kyle Busch. A little bit of help from the back. Man, he's got him high. Here comes Kyle Busch. Here comes William Byron on the inside of Busch. Byron capitalizes. Bush has the run off the high side in the corner. Keselowski in a crossover. Two for one pass getting in at one. Got it sorted out. Kevin Harvick, Christopher Bell. 
And all this on the edge of control at 165 miles an hour. Here comes this is not Truex. play. Trying to get back up there. Fast race car led a lot of laps early. Hard to believe he spun out and only in what battling for 10th place right here with your boy, Bill. Yeah, doing a good job. But you know, every time you get buried in the pack here, it's just ha so hard to maintain track position. How about improve track position? Here comes Chase. Back at him. Back even. I'm going to try to work here. Stall. Quarter bumper clear. Man, and second, third, and fourth. We're side by side entering three. Just like we saw for that stage in, Bush took a real hard dive at Chastain getting into three. Seems like Chastain, just like we heard him talk about on the radio, building a little bit loose. What is his strong suit passing every every car I saw, Bill? That was he was pushing it hard getting into three. Now a little bit reluctant getting in there. Tells me he's a little loose over there. Yeah, he's been able to really drive it in the corner both ends, uh, three and one from everything I've seen. He's got a status quo up off, but really good getting down in the corner early on. Chevrolet is one through four with Christopher Bell, the first Toyota in fifth. Keselowski, the first Ford in sixth. Denny Hamlin went into turn three, the last lap three wide. Rarely do you get to do that at Darlington and see the exit of turn four. Chase looking for ninth place. I don't know if it didn't hurt Truex's car just a little bit when he spun down there. It, you know, it's just hard to tell. You know, these things are so equal. Well, I, I can say this. He was trending tight. That's why he lost that top spot, Bill. Um, said it on the radio. Got tight as the track was rubbering in. Obviously, they probably made an adjustment according so. But if that baby was tight out there in clean air, it's going to be even tighter oh, back there. Be the track. Yeah, absolutely. How was Carl's perspective on things? Well, it was good. You know, it's just like riding a bike, uh, picked up right, went straight to the lap times, straight to call in a race, straight behind the wheel. Need to hear him. Uh, man, you want to talk about just picking up and leaving. Nobody's <laughs> seen him. Nobody in the industry has seen him since 2016. Here he is. And showed I, up. And I got the sense that he missed it more than he thought he would if and when he ever came back. I think he knew it. I think that's why he didn't come yeah. back. And he finally was forced to come back with his 75th anniversary deal, got here and liked what he felt. Yeah. I think he felt the love. He felt, uh, um, you know, the, the passion that people had for, for following him and, and um, you know, was a fan of his. And I think he felt it all day long. Yeah, it's hard to give up that time span, though. You know, he was in pretty much the prime of his career. You know, you just kind of, for some, whatever reason, gave it up, you know, and then, you know, but everybody's got their reason. Spinner down on the apron, turn three. It was one of those UPS cars. It was Stenhouse. Oh, Stenhouse, such a good day. That'll put the left caution. rear down, left rear flat. Fifth caution of the day. Well, it's Darlington starting there to eat him up. Now, he was already on the apron. May have been trying to get to pit road. I'd say he was trying to nurse this left rear. You see, just like you yeah. said, way down off the racetrack, finally spun. Got a caution here. Changes things, Larry. Yes, sir, but we will be coming because now we've run about 10 laps. Now we're working this into a making a one stop in this last stage. So I think you'll see them. It'll be feeding time, trust me. Yeah, everybody was planning on that two stop strategy in stage three. It is an Omaha. <laughs> Larry, how many sets of new tires you have left? Oh, we're in good sh shape, Mike. Uh, we still got about half of what we started with. You, we've used five sets, made four pit stops, so five including what we started on. Good shape on tires. Well, that's good. Smoke them if you got them. That's good because we're not done having cautions. Absolutely not. Saw that at Kansas. Cruise around there, green flag, nothing happened. All of a sudden, holy cow, once they started cautions, and I think you're going to see that. Everybody knows how hard these positions are to come by on green flag conditions. These restarts are going to ratchet up. Just saw it on the last one. And I thought that one car did what he needed to do. Didn't leave him much room, crowded him pretty hard, but you're going to see more of that. But this is Darlington. Oh, yeah. You run out of yeah. all of it Absolutely. off of two. Absolutely. It all happens off of two on these restarts. 
run out of real estate. That track, it's barely wide, and people don't, it's hard to see this from, from the, the camera angles, but when you're rolling around there under caution, it really is door to door when you come off of there, if, if both cars are on the racing surface. There's hardly room for two cars to go by there door to door off of two. And up our left, our Fox Race tracker, pretty, pretty easy the first part of the race, but here we are in stage three. Important pit stop. It picked up. Regan. Well, Kyle Busch, good when we started that run right there. Liked his car initially, but then he got in the wake of the one car, said it was really tight. A little bit of a discussion on whether they want to adjust for that or not. He thinks it's going to be very good on the long run. And Kyle Larson struggling on that restart just a little bit as he lost the track position. The plan was to try and save the tires and get him as the run went on. Jamie? Christopher Bell in the 20, driven from 16th up to the top five, and that's no surprise. He ran great in both races here last year. He's actually the first driver I heard say he feels good. Ross Chastain with a little bit of help. They're adding wedge this time around. Chastain pulled right out to the outside lane to hold back both Kyle Busch and William Byron. Saw it with Larson, saw it a 10, 10 second stop, the nine seconds. Byron had a good stop up one, Busch. Held steady there. 81 laps to go in Darlington County, South Carolina in the Goodyear 400. Saturday on Fox, Mookie Betts and the Dodgers take on Nolan Arenado in the cards. Or you'll see Julio Rodriguez lead the Mariners against Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves. Saturday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox and on the Fox Sports app. Ross Chastain chooses the outside for this restart, which will come with 78 laps to go. Kyle Busch on the inside, Byron and Larson, Keslowski and Bell, Harvick and Truex, Elliott and Blaney. Well, all of the drivers right at the front of the field have already visited Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane this season. Nine drivers in all. There's the list. We'll join them today. See what, yeah, it's interesting, Bill. Chastain, we just saw what he did with the five car, right? Utilizing that bottom, he took the outside. Let's see what Kyle Busch can do. Here's some Kyle Busch radio. All right, no matter what you choose here, don't let him do you into doing stupid here. We got a good car, we got a car that can win. Let him dictate his own end of this race. Don't let him dictate what we do. Good reminder, huh, Bill? Absolutely. Good, good advice. It's still a long way to go. I mean, he's still got a lot of time to do a lot of different things. You know, I still don't know if Ross has a long-term run car versus what Kyle's got. Kyle's got a pretty good car. I'm liking this Christopher Bell. I see him. I see Harvick. Those guys, Keselowski, man, what a good day he's having. Green flag. There's some Kyle Larson spotter audio. Tyler Martin. Man, I got interesting quick, didn't it, Bill? Oh, absolutely. Eight was pushing hard on that Chastain. Stacked them all up. Larson had to bail out of the gas. Truex Harvick, the first side-by-side -side battle, and they're pretty well stacked up behind them. Now Kozlowski to the inside on Christopher Bell. This is for Vip. Uh, yeah, I don't think Brad can get it done. Uh, he might. But it's going to be tight. Christopher's been good. I've watched him most all day. He's he's been done, done a really good job. Harvick got a great run on those two when they were side by side in turn two, and so did Chase Elliott. They closed right up, but here in the middle of three and four, they are still going at it for fifth place. Now you got Blaney and Truex running too deep. Have to get this sorted out, and they did right there. I was going to say two cars side by side is going to enable whoever's behind them to capitalize. That was Harvick. And he was coming. Yeah, Truex looks tight now. Looks like his car is not, in especially in traffic. Logano on the move. I think it was a combination. It was kind of trending that way anyway. Got in trouble. Got into Chassis at the end of that. Man, that was so close to Chase Elliott oh. the back of Logano. He used up his front bumper there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Looks like Oh, Chase, Chase gets stacked tight, up in yeah. two, and Ryan Blaney's right on him. So is Truex. Truex to the inside. Eight in the wall. Kyle Busch has hit the wall off of two. Running second. Here's a look. Right there, button off of two is right in the middle of the corner, Bill. Wow. Silver cooked the corner loose a little bit, slid up, got into it. It's still Darlington. <laughs> Bush falls to fourth after this. This is one tough racetrack, though. I'm Turn three car in the wall. They had a bit of bumping and scraping, and Ty Gibbs got the worst of it. He had already been in the wall as part of that carnage when Eric Jones spun around. He had contact from someone, couldn't see who, but got him against the fence. And, and then you keep going. That happens so frequently here, Bill. You get that Darlington stripe, whether it's from contact or not. Um, how do you feel about rolling off into the next corner at full speed? You got to do what you got to do. But I will say with a new car in this body, it does make it easier to get into the wall. Or two years ago, the older car, you pretty much cut a tire down. Well, I think you're seeing it right there. Absolutely. Kyle Busch is coming right back to the bumper of the five, trying to make a move on him. Yes, two years ago, to your point, yeah. Bill Elliott, that car would have been out. It would have been on pit road fixing Absolutely. the fenders because it is going to cut a tire down. Still diving into the corner very hard into turn three. Hard to pass out here today. Yeah, and it's just going to get worse as the, as the day goes on. Now, Denny Hamlin back at 20th place. He just went past Justin Haley, who was the free pass car on that last caution. And it took him three or four laps to get there and complete the pass. Haley trying to come back, but nothing there. So Hamlin back into the top 20. Yeah, when he earlier in the race had fluid on the racetrack, he slid up and got into the wall pretty good in the three and four. I can't help but to think, Bill, that that hurt that car. This is a favorite driver in Darlington racetrack. Anytime you're talking about managing tires, you think Denny Hamlin. He's in that conversation and just not in the cards today. Yeah, Denny's been very masterful here. He's done a great job. And yeah, I would agree with you 100%, Clint. Clint, I think that really hurt his car. All right, let's look at today's guaranteed fit at Darlington, sponsored by eBay Motors. Larry? Well, Mike, it has to do with Cup champions and NASCAR Hall of Famers at Darlington Raceway. 23 of our 35 Cup Series champions has won a race at Darlington for a combined 77 wins, including no bill there. 23 NASCAR Hall of Fame drivers have won at Darlington, and that doesn't count the crew chiefs, engine builders, and owners that are Hall of Famers. And actually, five of our seven active champions has a win at Darlington, not Kyle Larson or Chase Elliott, but all seven are running inside the top ten. All this could be the eBay guaranteed fit to see another Cup Series champion pulling the victory lane today. There have been surprises here, but certainly this is a track that favors veterans and especially champions. So Kyle Busch now finds himself in fourth place after getting into the wall in the middle of turn number two. Here's what he had to say about that. Plowing. Well, it was loose. He got a little graphical wire. Yes. Well. You know, I'm plow kind of glad I'm up here looking at it from this this advantage, you know, this vantage point. <laughs> Larry, how long before we're looking at uh, green flag pit stops? Do you think? Yeah, Mike, with going back to racing with 78 laps to go, I think this turns this into a one-stop strategy right now. We go back racing at lap 215, again, 78 laps to go. I'm going to say somewhere around lap 250, we're going to start seeing them hit pit road, a little before splitting it absolutely in half. Okay. Jamie, how about an, uh, an update on the younger of the Elliots in today's race? 
Yes, Chase Elliott's had his work cut out for him all weekend long. Started 21st, up to 9th. And I talked to his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, and he said it's been interesting. The tire that Goodyear has brought here, this right side, we've run at three previous races, including last week at Kansas. And Alan said it has changed how Chase has to drive this track. It's changed how they have to set up this race car. So it's taking a little longer to hit his stride to get there at the end. I just thought that was interesting how sensitive these drivers can be to a change in a tire. Thanks, Jamie. Here's a look at uh, the Bill Elliott scheme on the Everham Dodge. That little, uh, those little arrows sticking out at the top right of the nine. That's the E for Everham uh, in that one. And, uh, and of course, shirts to match. And shirts to match. Yeah. Those are some good years, weren't they, Bill? Man, those oh, cars were so fast. Ray did an awesome job. I mean, that was so much fun driving for him those three years. I mean, I was, I was about at the end of my career, mid, you know, early 40s. You know, where was I going to go? And Ray comes to me and asks me, and I'll never forget. He said, he comes up, sends word, uh, sends word about somebody. He wants to talk to him. So I go over to his truck. He comes right there and he tells me, I want, to come, I want you to come drive my race car. And I think I fell over on the floor because I said, <laughs> me, my age, you know, there's a lot of younger guys. And he said no, and, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I went and did it. I had a three great years with him and enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, I mean, it's almost, it reminds me of Mark Martin, right? When he, towards the end of his career, matched up with Rick Hendrick in that five car and, and lit it up. And uh, what a match you had in that nine. I remember that was when I was coming into this sport and you were lights out fast every week. 62 laps to go in the South Carolina County, the Bruce Springsteen made famous. Here at Darlington, uh, even a throwback menu. Oh, bologna burgers there, some PD dogs. Fried bologna, wow. <laughs> and I thought you had to go to South Boston for that. Nope, they got it here too. It's good on the front side. That's all I'm going to say. That fried bologna sandwich, woo, that baby looks good. But. <laughs> There's a big butt coming. <laughs> 57 to go. Ross Chastain half a second in front of William Byron. Look how close that is, huh? The top four are all Chevrolets. Christopher Bell, the first Toyota in fifth. Brad Keselowski still the first Ford in sixth. Here's the uh, monster cam on board Tyler Reddick. It's hard to explain to somebody, Bill. I always find it challenging what it feels like to be right up against that wall. That last little buffer whether it's the air in between that car and the wall literally pushing you off of it, but there's just a little bit of grip, that last inch. You know, I never you found it. it. I was either off of it or in it. <laughs> That's the challenge about this racetrack. We show it, already shows us great shots, um, as, as good as you can, but that feeling, that little bit of buffer, the side bite, the last dis inkling of, of side bite you have to keep that car out of that wall, um, the ones that can find it and it, t it comes into the balance. You have to have a good balance on your car, not too tight, not too loose, because the second you are, you're going to be into it. It's like Bill talked about. But that is a very, very hard thing to, to master at a track like Darlington. Plus, you had in, you know, they, what, they lost almost two feet with a soft wall for Barry, versus yes. when I ran here in, back in the days. So The only thing soft when you ran here was that bologna burger. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you got a good point there. Uh, Michael McDowell released from the infield care center, getting checked out one of the nine cars involved in that pile up at lap 194. In the last 27 races here, only twice have we had a caution with nine or more lap, uh, cars involved in it. So it doesn't happen often. But that was right on a restart and right out of turn two. Yeah, but that was a freak, kind of a freak day. When you lose a tire, it's kind of, you know, it ain't really on anybody other than just a mistake by the team, you know. Larry, you tell me, 250. All right, we're 240, 10 to go, 10, 15 laps before we start seeing these green flag stops. Somebody going to short pit this a little bit? You, do you take that gamble? 
Oh, I think they will, Clint. I think that's a big key. Splitting it in half is about lap 254, 255. So I definitely think once we cross over 248, 249, that's when that window opens. And you know when someone comes, you can't be far behind. You're just giving up two, two plus seconds a lap. Just like we've seen all day long, the opportunity. It, when does it come? It comes with these lappers. Now you see Byron. You saw that maneuver with Larson behind him. Navigating around that lap traffic. That race for the lead is narrowing up. P.J. McLeod's taking his car to the garage area. We want to thank Goodyear for everything they've done this weekend, including our aerial coverage, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. Even they got behind the throwback scheme with the tires. Every yep. tire out here, cool-looking race cars, white letters on a Goodyear's. I like what I see here. Talking about coming into green flag pit stops. This is going to put the pressure on the teams. The performance getting on to pit road. That stop itself with those cars being that close on that racetrack. That's going to make the difference maybe between who wins this race and who doesn't. Here's Jamie on the leader. Well, it's interesting. A lot of the drivers behind Ross saying that they're tight. Ross Chastain just now said he's three or four loose. And it's interesting listening to his radio because he ran the truck race, the Xfinity race this weekend, and he took some mental notes of how the track changed and what it did and what to look for, especially on that high side. Also, his pit crew, they pitted for Kyle Larson in the Xfinity Series race yesterday. And you know what happened there, Mike? They went to victory lane. They are on it. And there's the crew, not quite at the get ready uh, for green flag stops, but Ryan Priest is in now. He was a lead lap car, and we're starting to see others like Josh Berry that were toward the tail end of the lead lap starting to come in. Logano, here comes Logano, 22. That's one that you're going to see some short pit and try to capitalize on this. Regan. Joey Logano working to get that car tightened up the majority of the day. This last run, the biggest concern was some wall contact with the right rear. They're going to check that for him while they get the four tires. Now, Logano had just made it up into the top 15 after being like a 20 to 22nd place car much of the day. Here we this? go for the lead. And don't look now, but Larson's right there, too. Be careful, Byron. You get those two cars side by side. Mike created two for one opportunity, Bill. Race is on, baby. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. Free Chevy slugging it out for the lead here with 47 to go. Kyle Larson. He's going to do it. Completes that pass for second. Here comes the 20. At this time. Christopher Bell and Larson's going to pit. Or is he? Oh, he missed it. No, no, he didn't. Still has it. He made it. Whoo, that was close. Inside the orange box, that's where you have to be to commit to pit road. Regan. Kyle Larson in the five car started too tight on that run, but they were okay with that. They figured it would cycle through and get good for him as the run went on. Same thing for this run. They're planning to carry it out for a little while longer. And the eight car of Kyle Busch, his race car, you heard say it was just plowing. Jamie? Brad Kozlowski making his way into the pit box. Been really good. A really good day for him. Just building free earlier in the run. Adjusting for him, you see Christopher Bell on the right side. Christopher really happy with that 20 car. Regan, William Byron. Boyer and Brian are another one of those race cars, and it's just too tight right now. It started to run tight, stayed tight the whole time for William. Jamie. Ross Chastain, remember, his pick crew has been on it. His crew chief told me he loves pitting because these guys get it done. I don't want to jinx him saying that, but they've been good. He was too loose. They're going to tighten him up just a bit. A four-tire stop here for Chastain. Yeah, they're off. They're off that pit road. Keep an eye on this five. You look at the track map in the top of your screen. He's coming off the of four. He's going to get him. Going to get him easy. There it is. You see Chastain coming off. That's the benefactor of that short pit. Did a great job. And look, Christopher Bell's right in tow with him. So as we cycle through the rest of these green flag stops, that is where it will settle out among those two. And look where Logano gained. Logano's right there behind them. That might be short lived. That's three or four laps ahead for them. Haven't heard any penalties. That's a great stops. Big difference maker there, Bill. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> you know, but watching Truex early in the race when he had the lead, 
clean air, he was good. And now he's kind of buried in traffic and he's kind of status quo. So Kyle Larson was third, three tenths of a second difference uh, and pitting one lap apart as Chase Elliott completes his stop. And but for the first four cars, Harvick, Blaney, Wallace, and Hamlin, we have cycled through. Kevin Harvick in. Regan. Kevin Harvick has been pretty good. The problem with Kevin Harvick's car is it takes 20 laps till it gets good for him. Otherwise, he doesn't want any changes. Ricky Stenhouse, too fast entering pit road. Very few penalties today, but they have been costly. Ryan Blaney again picks up the lead as uh, they stay out long on these green flag stints, but now he's headed for pit road. Bubba Wallace will become the race leader briefly. Tail end of who hadn't cycled, but hey, got to give a chance, uh, luck a chance to operate here, and that's exactly what Bubba Wallace and company is doing. So Wallace and Hamlin are the only two on the lead lap who have yet to make this stop. So Larry, here, he here comes, comes Bubba. But how could this benefit them, Larry? Yeah, the only way this works is if a caution comes out before they pit, then they're going to drag everybody to pit road with them under caution. So that's the only thing that would make this work. Man, quietly all day long, Christopher Bell just slowly but surely is inching into this picture, and here it comes, 39 to go in second. So it looks like one of the drivers who did not fare well on this round of green flag stops is William Byron. He was second when it started. He is now ninth after pit stops. Eleven and a half second stop for Byron was a large part of the difference. That's the second and a half in the pits. That looks pretty big out on that racetrack, doesn't it, Bill? It sure does. It's hard to make up on the racetrack, too. Here comes Chastain. Whoa, so close. Almost got the back of Eric Jones way high. Trying to make a move on Christian Rebell for second. That was a, a tough part of the corner to catch that lapper of yep. Eric Jones right there. So Denny Hamlin, the leader, but he has not been in the pits since uh, lap 212. Larson was in at 247 nine laps ago. There's Hamlin. Yeah, Gabe Hart, Chris Gabe Hart, his crew chief and Hamlin, they got something a lot of other drivers don't have. They got a win, which gives them a bigger playbook <laughs> to work with. They can run this thing long. That's a great point, Larry. Uh, all good out the back by Fidley. He's going to need some help. Yeah, they're, they're, hope, they're counting on a caution is what they're counting on, but to Larry's point, it's worth uh, with a win already in your belt. You're going for wins. Look at that graphic. Larson nine miles an hour quicker uh, than Denny Hamlin on worn tires. Only nine. Well, Larson's really gotten away from Bell in the last couple laps. Nine miles an hour, Bill, but that's two seconds over the course of the lap. Right? That's huge. Don't take long to add that up. Well, as long as you can stay in lap traffic, right? I mean, if you're if you're Denny, you know, trying to manage where you're catching cars or they're catching you, more importantly, on tires, not losing time with them passing you. Eric Jones to pit road. Now, prior to the pit stop cycle, Denny Hamlin was 17th. So as Larry said, they, you know, they have a win in the bank, take their best shot, and for them, it's staying out long and running uh, to the end of this fuel load or until the tires just won't grip anymore. That's where he's been killing everybody all day long. It is just you guys. 
Talking about Ross Chastain in the rear view that you see behind him. And very strong getting into the corners. Bill, you alluded to it earlier. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he drives it in and, keep, and maintains good speed. You got to give up, give and take, you know, at any racetrack. And usually if I'm good in, I'm bad off. It's hard to be both. 33 laps to go, another two or three before we expect uh, Hamlin on pit road. Yeah, it's all about getting the car rotated, right? You want to get into the corner and get the car rotated early as possible because that's when you can apply the throttle and get off of the corner and make your speed, keep your momentum. Usually when you drive the car too hard getting into the corner, you just wait longer yeah. for the car to rotate. So here's Denny Hamlin coming to the line. And we'll show the gap back to Kyle Larson. Yeah, they're going to need a caution very, very quickly. So when Hamlin pits, it will likely, he won't just lose the lead, he's likely going to lose the lead lap when he makes this stop. Well, again, it goes back to what Larry told us, got a win here in your pocket. Um, I mean, it's it was go for it. We're going to push all the cars just in right here, see what happens. We were already a 17th place card. Can we make it a winning car? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> So Larson's going to be your leader when Hamlin pits. Bell, Chastain, Bush have gotten pretty close here. Kyle Larson's a three-time runner-up here in the Cup Series. Won yesterday in Xfinity. Has yet to score a Cup win at Darlington. And here comes Hamlin. He will surrender the lead. Likely fall from the lead lap during this stop. We'll check it out when we come back, but you're not going to miss a thing. We're going to go Fox side by side with 30 laps to go in Darlington. NASCAR Cup Series is back at Worldwide Technology Raceway, and it's time to celebrate. Experience the all new Gateway Garage Experience and the infield fan zone. Dance all weekend at the Confluence Music Festival. Catch me, Kenny Wallace, on the big stage before the race. It's the Mac Daddy of pre-race parties. Get your tickets by going to www.raceway.com. Summer's here, and with a new Toyota, you can go out and do all the things that make summer <laughs> summer, like getting ice cream, movie nights. <laughs> I'll keep it down. Hiking with the besties catching sunsets or just plain catch go long did you know that every new toyota comes with toyota care a two-year or 25,000 mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance that's the value you can expect from toyota your summer starts here toyota let's go places oh okay yes it does it we switched to liberty mutual and saved 652 dollars they customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need with the money we saved, Oop. we thought we'd try electric unicycles. Oh. Careful, babe. Saving was definitely easier. Hey, babe, I think I got it. It's actually... Oh. Okay, show off. <laughs> Help! Oh. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Subway just keeps getting better. Break it down, Candace. They got world-class bakers to develop their tastiest bread yet. This truly makes the Subway Series a dream team. You know about that, Chuck. Yeah, I was the bread of that team, too. Try the Subway Series menu. They'll taste as refreshed yet. Okay, cut it. Ray Maliazzi here. When you need parts, eBay Motors ensures a guaranteed fit. Let's see, you'll need headlights oh. and the bumper. At least you can skip the car wash. Just go to eBay Motors. The check means a guaranteed fit. Let's ride. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. Two iconic NL teams go head to head as Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman lead the Dodgers against Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, and the Cardinals, or Julio Rodriguez and the Mariners take on Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves. It's Baseball Night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox.
25 laps to go in the Goodyear 400 at Darlington. Kyle Larson, two seconds up on Christopher Bell, Chevy versus Toyota. Here is the summary of the green flag stops with their current position on the left and where they were running uh, before the stop. So Tyler Reddick up five uh, on that pit stop exchange did quite well. William Byron went from second down to ninth, now back up to seventh. Yeah, he was definitely the one that stuck out the most to me. Not the best for the money stop for William Byron in the 24 car. Still 24 to go. I'm sure this Larry's going to have some sort of trend for us at the end of this thing. I remember it a year ago he told us this. Lo and behold, Bill, if you remember. Oh, I remember. <laughs> Payback time. That's right. Caught him. Couldn't believe he caught him. Now down at uh, 21st place, Denny Hamlin had that long run, hoping for a caution, did not get it, made his pit stop under green, and he is now the second car one lap down. So effectively out of play for now. Didn't work. Nope. Speaking of trends, Larry. <laughs> Bill and Clint ask, I can deliver right here. <laughs> so right. what I did, I looked at the trends of the first 12 races in 2023. The average of the last caution is 21 laps to go, but the one that leaps off the page in 12 races, we've had five overtime finishes so far, and we are now 22 to go. And if it doesn't work out, I'm done with the trends. <laughs> <laughs> Hendrick Motorsports leading with Kyle Larson and the last time they won here was 2012. Jimmy Johnson uh, gave Rick Hendrick his 200th win as a car owner and none of their four active drivers had yet made a start in the Cup Series. They're uh, right now today going up for win number 296. There's that last victory. NASCAR's Mike Helton with Rick Hendrick and Jimmy. They've won at 26 different tracks since 95 times. But it's been a while. A bridesmaid. You said it three times a bridesmaid Kyle Larson's been. He's hungry. He was frustrated last weekend, wanted that one. Two times in a row, been knocked off at Kansas Speedway right there at the end. Kurt Busch a year prior. It was Denny Hamlin this year. He's wanting this Dar Darlington racetrack. This is the one that everybody wants to win. Well, Kyle got into him several years back, wasn't it? They came down here. Yes. Now I said Kansas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And here they got into it. Well, Larson's had a, a very busy eight days. Last week at Kansas in it to win it on the final lap. Got loose in the corner and then Denny Hamlin got against him, got into the wall, saved it for second place. And look at this. That's Kyle on the outside of John Hunter Nemechek. Hard racing on the final lap yesterday in the Xfinity race. Larson went to victory lane and John Hunter, when they released him for the care center, he was laughing about it. And he said, hey, that's just good hard racing. All he can say is there's two. Got a spin off the floor. Somebody's around backwards. Ryan Newman. Oh, Newman, who was three I'm laps down. In about 27th in his return to NASCAR to drive five races this year for Rick Ware has just brought out the sixth caution flag of the race with 18 laps to go. Well, Larry, you're pretty close on you're the trends. You're going to have to hold on to the trends one more week. three laps. Attaboy. about three laps. He gets an attaboy. That is a break for Ty Gibbs. He'll be the free pass. Here's a look at it. Now what do we do, boys? Well, we're going to pit, and we're going to make sure that if my pit crew's the fastest, I need you now more than ever, guys. Like Larry says, we got lots of tires. We got lots well, of we got that. That's the easy part. The hard part's making sure you get them on there tight and faster than everybody else. Ryan Newman, welcome back. The Cup Series struggling a little bit. Bill, did you ever think we'd see a NASCAR where average good pit stops were below 10 seconds for four tires and gas. I thought below 20 was a half of our feet. 20? <laughs> it was. <laughs> you don't remember way back, do you? <laughs> the jack was it probably was. at least, what was it? I mean, back in the day, jacks? Yeah. yeah. 22, 23 second stops. Yeah. 
I think it's open. Green light, go. Here they come, guys. All right, lead lap cars. 19 of them. Here they come. Regan. Kyle Busch's car is too tight, turning into turn one right now. When he gets to the wall, he's good. He likes it through turns two. Turn three and four, though, that car is snug as well. And the five of Kyle Larson said the balance is good. It went just a little bit free at the end, but he likes it. Jamie? Seventh stop of the day, the 20. Christopher Bell just needs a little bit more front turn there. The one of Ross Chastain in as well. They're going to free him up for this last run for this shootout, they told him, a four-tire stop. We saw the eight had to back up, but I see the five. There's a race, five in the 20. Larson's ahead of him, it looks like. You're going to see the race off just a little bit. Vange goes to Larson. Not going to like it if you're a Kyle Busch fan here. No nope, trouble on the right side. They had to lift it back up to get the uh, center wheel nut and the hub seated. How about Logano taking advantage of these last cautions and then Truex and Elliott plus four on both of those guys. Welcome to the party. Time is right. Martin Truex picking up four spots on that pit stop. Now he does have he was the pole sitter so he has the number one pit stall. That didn't hurt. About that nine crew bill. They did an awesome job. This is when it counts. This is this is the money deal right here. You know, you got to hang on for probably 15 laps here and hope for the best. Pay window Pay is window. open. <laughs> the question is, are we done having cautions? Is it will that be a check or cash? I don't care. <laughs> they all spend the same. Don't even care what it gets there. Just make sure cash. It's at least there. you can take it straight to the. To the Boy, I don't do very good with cash, Bill. If I if I take out of the house with some cash in my pocket, there's no chance I get home with it. <laughs> well, how about next Sunday on FS1? A million dollars is on the line as NASCAR returns to North Wilkesboro for the All-Star Race. Wow. Cannot wait. The track that went away, and Bruton Smith said just let it go to the ground. Dale Earnhardt Jr. revived it for iRacing. Marcus Smith brought it back. He and Speedway Motorsports have done a fantastic job. Wait till you see the new, mostly old, North Wilkesboro next the week. The new old. Yeah. Uh, my mind's on this. When it was new. <laughs> my mind's on this choose rule. Um, Bill, we saw, you know, the five was on the bottom there. Or excuse me, five took the outside as the pole sitter. Chastain moved him up a little bit, did the right thing, and, and it was uh, right. It worked. Uh, where are you choosing here if you're five? Here are the five uh, up front drivers. I'd probably go to the inside. On uh, our restart ranks this season. On their restart performance. Because I. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I figure what's, what's going to happen. Five chooses inside, 20 will go outside, Ross will go inside, and he'll try to put them three deep and get to turn one. No, oh, you think Ross is going to go for the three wide? You Here's think? my thing. I think the preferred line has always been the outside. Once you get into that corner, one and two, and you can hold hey, them down. Look at Christopher Bell. Well, there goes the 20. Uh oh. They think they have a loose lug nut. You know who that puts door to door with you again? Exactly what we just saw. Now, where do you go? Yeah, that 9 8 stop was just a little too quick they just had. If I'm the five, I'm going to return that favor. I'm going to put him on the outside and give him a little taste of his own medicine. That's what I was going to do. So now the first five are Larson, Chastain, Logano, there Truex, is. and Chase Elliott. Logano. <laughs> there it is. How about Logano? What a turnaround. Two weeks in a row. Taking advantage of those cautions, putting them to good use. So we know on the restart with Ross up high, the question will be if Kyle Larson can get into turn one even with Ross and keep him up and, you know, so he doesn't have many options up there in the corner. And then what will Logano, what will Logano do? Exactly what you saw. That's exactly what just happened. Now we're going to see if the five can do exactly what Chastain did to him. Yeah. Man, Ross has been so good rolling in the corner, though, especially three. Well, and he's, it's been on the bottom, kind of well, a dive bomb, yeah. if you will. So what I don't want uh -oh. to do is give him uh -oh. that Look at it. Whoa, whoa. House divided right here. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. She wants the one. He wants the five. There's a good chance they ain't going home together. <laughs> well, look who's third. After X is back. Logano's right with him. Then Chase Elliott. Kozlowski, Reddick, Byron, Harvin. Last year's winner, Logano. That boy is capable of getting up on the wheel. 
It'll be 13 laps to go. <laughs> Strap on tight. Green flag. Man. Chastain. That was a Ooh. pretty good jump for the outside there, the second place car. Oh, Rick! Truex. Out of the wall turns Truex. A bunch of them here. This is the big one. Amarillo's around. Wow. Logano. And Truex got the worst of it. I think Larson was in the lead there. As they started into, uh, into the corner, there was a little bit of contact between he and Ross. I mean, Truex is stuck, can't go, left rear tire down. Clearly, Larson was trying to keep uh, Chastain up as high as possible. Might have been, yep, a little contact right there. Follow along with Truex, stay on him. Truex slides up into Logano, and there it goes. Just a little bit of squeeze. Look at the two in the lead, though. They're both in the wall. Don't forget that. Five gave it to him. That's exactly what I was talking about. Run him up. They both were in the fence. It might be easier to count the cars that were not involved on this restart with 13 lucky laps to go. Let's watch this again. Obviously, all a focus was on Truex and Logano. That was the wreck, but watch these leaders here. I think he gave him a little dose of the old medicine there, moved him up the racetrack, and it definitely got him in the wall. Drove him in for certain. Watch from uh, Kevin Harvick's Hunt Brothers Pizza Camp. Right wow. in his lap, nowhere to go. And we'll ride with Martin Truex. <laughs> Tough day for Truex. That's gonna be very frustrated. Man, led a lot of laps, had a really good car. Had a shot at it, the time's right. Reddick turned around there and uh, watched the leaders on the left and the caution light lower right. Caution is out. Oh, that's too close to call. Now remember, you got to go back to the last loop that they crossed yeah, to determine like the order. One was ahead. Yeah, I want to see this jump got... right here. Watch this. Chastain was quite a bit ahead of him after a couple car lengths. I want to see the jump. Ah. Ross is. Put it on him. Well, but he ain't the leader either. That five car is supposed to be the first car that jumps. Hey, that's not for me to call. No, you already <laughs> did, Bill. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but what I say don't matter. Now we're going to listen in to Chastain. You got in the wall a little bit. Oh, yeah. He drove us right in it. Oh, okay. Wheel still in the right spot. He's going to have to hit us harder than that. You're the leader. Scuffed up some, but... Just scuffed up some. <laughs> now, scoring has Chastain as the leader. And remember, it was not it's not the moment of caution except to decide the end of the race. You go back to the last scoring loop that they crossed, and that's where NASCAR measures who was ahead at that time. And that's simply to prevent drivers, once the light's coming out, to try to gain an extra spot or two before they set the lineup. But... Ross was ahead of him, even up till right about the point the caution came out. Chastain, how about that? Unbelievable. Man, I... Now which side do you choose? <laughs> I'm not gonna, I don't wanna be on the outside. Now that I've repaid the favor, I want that back. Eight cars involved in this pileup. Truex slides up to Logano. And around. Larry said Martin's steering wheel was full left lock as far as it would go. Couldn't get away. And uh, what did Kyle Larson have to say about all this? 
What is worth, staff started to call it, but he was to the gas before you. You did not initiate that restart. Just FYI for the situation you're in now. Oh, I know. Well, you called that, Bill. I put it yeah, on where, where they were almost at the end of the restart zone, though, because then it's free for all. Yes, if nobody goes by the end of the restart zone, the flagman restarts the race. But Cliff Daniels saying that Chastain was on the gas before Kyle Larson. That's what I love about racing. There's two sides to every story. Depends on who's your guy, right? All right, let's uh, show you the timing line. That's the last timing line crossed before the caution uh, using our ghost car animation. Yeah, early in it, I mean, he didn't get to his, that's about where he actually got into him to put him in the wall, right in the middle of the corner, kind of getting in. Um, he was clearly behind him at that point. So what is Ross Chastain thinking? Inside turn one. Focus at the bottom, but if the 24 goes with the five and the nine decides not to push, it's not gonna be helpful. The only question is, is the five gonna, are we even, or does he wanna drive me in the fence again? I think the five does the same thing if he's on the bottom. The help behind him. <laughs> Look at the help behind him. The yeah. help behind him. All three. That, so, that is Hendrick cars behind yeah, him. Chastain. Um, you know, it's William right Byron him. or Chase Elliott. Take your pick your yes. poison. Which one you want? Hendrick pushing? Chevy. Hendrick Chevy. Hendrick Chevy. Ross Chastain, the leader. I don't think it matters who lines up where. He's. Yeah, he doesn't I have think, any friends. I'm not Chase giving him the inside. Damage, though. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be 100 percent here. Oh. Um, it's all the push down the front straightaway, though, in my opinion. You you need to be in position. So it doesn't matter what happens when you get to the corner, just to push the other straightaway. I, I need to have her sorted out before I get there, Bill. And if, if I don't have a good help behind you, and he does, it ain't going to matter anyway. It might a little bit. <laughs> we'll find out. Here are the cars involved in that crash, all with damage to some degree. I did not see anybody pull into the garage. Uh, on that one, however, yep, Truex out of the race is the only car apparently eliminated in that eight car pileup. So, Larry Mack, how many more cautions we gonna have? <laughs> I don't think we're through. How about if I just leave it at that? I don't think we're through with them. I'd probably put my money on you. Tyler Reddick had, uh, I'd say, second most damage to Truex. Uh, when he got turned around and hit the wall, he's able to continue, but comes to pit road for service. 22 cars on the lead lap. <laughs> Tough day for Tyler Reddick. There's a lot of these guys, yeah, I heard you mention you know, Chase having trouble, um, damage on his car, if you will. That Harvick's got a lot on his. A lot of those guys back there, quite a bit of damage on their cars here when they restart. It's gonna make it interesting, but I mean, what do you figure, how many laps to go you figure when it starts? A handful? Depends on if it goes green. <laughs> We're only gonna have a handful left. I'd say a handful and- yep. Another handful. A good opportunity <laughs> at another handful. Eric Jones, too fast entering pit road. There's your damage on Chase Elliott. Oh, uh, he is two laps down. Jones, that is. Chase in fourth place. So you got Trackhouse, Hendrick, 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 RFK with a Ford, Stuart Haas with a Ford, Penske with a Ford, Wood Brothers with a Ford, Bubba Wallace for 2311 with Toyota. But if the one car goes to the inside, you think he's going to back off in turn one? At all? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> well, we're going to get to find out. Here he goes. He's on the inside. I don't know. I like the inside, Bill, because you've got options. Exactly. Eight right. are better than four. Yeah, that's 100% correct. Eight tires corner better than four, whether it's on a quarter mile or a mile and a third. That is true. So the 24 is behind the one. Well, here's the thing. You're not going to give him any favors. You moved him up, but you didn't put him in the fence. He moved you up and put you in the fence. You're going to take care of business if, if you're the one car at Chastain and go win this race. Again, been a year since he'd been in victory lane. That boy on that outside three times the bridesmaid. These guys are hungry, and they want this win more than ever.
Yep, but then that opens the door for the 24. Who's that other kid on the outside of him? I don't know. He, I still say he's got some damage. Maybe it don't hurt him, but we'll see. Ross Chastain's last victory came right there at Talladega. Stay tuned. <laughs> that was several melons ago. We will have six laps to go when we restart. Chastain and Larson on the front row. Watch the jump, watch the help from behind. Or lack of help from behind. Green flag. Chase had trouble in the gearbox behind Larson. Not much help underneath them. The race is on for the lead right here, one and two. Well, oh, Chase does not get into turn one well at all. Oh, he turned and there's the fence. Hang on. Same thing. Went to run him up the racetrack. Still pushing you. Turned him. William Byron to the lead. Still pushing him. So All right. Those of you scoring at home, how many saw that coming? I did. All of us. <laughs> Both cars out of the race. Uh, and this happy couple gets to go home together. Neither getting what they wanted. I want to go, she says. <laughs> she just said, I want to go home. Man, that's that's unfortunate. I saw that one coming. Okay, Larry, you win again. Now look at the damage we there. May not be done yet. Hey. Larson's car. <laughs> let's All right, let's again. break this down. I, Chase Elliott had a little bit of trouble behind Larson. Didn't get the push that I thought, but William Byron, we talked about the help there. Then you get into the corner. The five tried to turn down, knowing that the, the one was coming up the racetrack. You knew what the play he was going to do. Got into one another. Wrecked. Wow. Took Andy each Mitchell. Other out. Andy Mitchell, great camera work. Wow. Children. Put them in a sandbox together and they can't play. I can tell you. Look, uh, Kevin Harvick. How about Harrison Burton? Good run for him. Good opportunity. Justin Haley in fourth. Kevin Harvick in second. You believe this? So if Ross doesn't come up that far trying to squeeze the five, do they both make it through the corner? They're both racing hard. They're both knowing exactly what each other's holding for cards, and they try to prevent it from happening, and they both wrecked. And they're both going to be extremely mad. Chase Briscoe had a great view. Here's Denny Hamlin's. He's back on the lead lap here. Yeah. How about William Byron? William Byron was within two laps of winning this race last year. Hmm. Well, we'll listen first to Kyle Larson's radio. Why did you just run right into the fence? How does that make any sense? What a hack. Make that three races now he's taken us out of. Chevrolet, good job. Good job. Three races that that one car is taking us out of. Cliff Daniel not at all impressed. Two aggressive race car drivers. Race for the one of the most prestigious wins there is at Darlington. Neither one of them will want it. You know, given the kind of the situation, you know, Kyle Mata should have let him go as hard he was getting in there and then try to cross him over, but maybe that's what he was trying to do anyway. I don't know. But you can always look back at tomorrow and say, well, I should have done this or that. How many times did you do that, Clint? Yeah, a lot. That's uh, that's going to be a quiet hold, hold to bed tonight, early to bed. Yeah, that will be a quiet drive home, won't it? All right, let's go back to last year and give you one more look at last year's finish here.
gets into Joey Logano, forces him up a little bit, got him into the wall. Joey thought, didn't like it a bit. As soon as he got to the bumper, William Byron did not waste any time, retaliated, then got out of that car and said he did so. That's one thing I did like about Joey. He got out, owned it, said he re re repaid the favor, won the race. I, I think Mike's pretty much no bones about it. That's what I do love about that. You know, we, we, we're talking about all these scenarios over the last month, month and a half. That will we're right there, 22 car will get out and just say it. This is exactly what happened. Did you do it on purpose? Yep. So Kyle Larson is still on the lead lap after repairs, but he's going to restart back in uh, 21st. Kevin Harvick, man, I'm telling you, that Look. Ford Mustang, that driver is hungry. The closer, and there he is. Wants to win a race. One more race, he said, before he retires. Here's his opportunity to win one of the biggest ones. Well, all he had to do is look at the replay from a minute ago. Yeah, where's he choose? You're going to go on the bottom? No, 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 no. Talking about going in turn three. Oh, yeah. The 22 and the 24. Oh, you're just going to move him? How about Harrison Burton? Wood Brothers. Would it be cool to see the Wood Brothers oh, win absolutely. this race? All right, Ross Chastain out of the race and released from the care center. If you look at the top eight uh, here, I think you're only going to find one driver with a victory this year. This is a checkers or record scenario. I think it has been for about the last 10 laps. It ain't over. But this will be overtime. Green, white checker. Keselowski in fourth. Long time coming. And look at the Fords in that top half dozen. Two Chevys, four Fords in the first six spots, and the Fords did not show a lot of speed in qualifying. Only one, Keselowski, made it into the final round. But here they are to battle these Chevys for the win, and the first Toyota is Bubba Wallace back in seventh place. There's the Jeff Burton paint scheme that his son Harrison is carrying for the Wood Brothers today. You see, you, oh, go ahead. If it's a 24, what do you choose? <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to choose the outside. I, I, I want the outside. I want. I need to get to the turn two. I, I need to be in position to turn two. I feel good about that. If I can get him around door to door to three and four, I've got him. You can't come off a two behind him, but I like the outside when I get to three and four. Okay. But after what we just saw, the key word is I got to get to three and four. All right. Here they come to the choose. I got to the get outside. One. That's what I, I I like that move. So William Byron will have his teammate Chase Elliott behind him. Harvick's Ford will have Keselowski's Ford behind him for the restart. But I do think on the last restart, uh, didn't Raw start pretty quick in the box? They were pretty even on the last one. No, well, no early they started in the restart early zone. In the box. Yes, early in the box. Early yes. in the box. I think that caught everybody else off guard. Okay. The help behind, yep. for sure. Yep. Yep. Neither car had any help behind. Yep. You're going right. to see more help now. Yeah, that created a gap. Yep. I think you're going to see the help on the outside, and you're definitely going to see this Brad Keselowski. Look for a three wide. If he lags back just at least a little bit and gets a run on those two, Keselowski is going for it. Or everybody knowing that it was Kyle and Ross on the front row created a gap. Yeah. There's the Goodyear 400 trophy that awaits one of these drivers in two laps if we get back. How about Bubba Wallace? See him in the backside of that camera shot. Man, what a turnaround for him. Credit one bank overtime. Here we go. Byron Harvick on the front row. We're green. Pretty good start for Harvick on the bottom. A lot of pressure. Giving him room, though. That's the important thing. Giving him room. There you're going to see him clear. Harvick's got a lot of damage on his car. Front four single file. It's on from there. Come around the white flag. One more. Bye -bye. White flag for Byron, who came within two laps of winning here one year ago. Redemption time for him.
Harvick five, car lengths back, long gap to Elliott in third. What a I'm, comeback for Chase. Uh, what a hell of a day for him. Yeah. Chase Elliott, good turnaround, taking advantage of this in. William Byron had a good car all day. Top five car. Here he is off the floor, Mike. Rick Hendrick wins 296. Yeah, William you. Byron wins the Goodyear 400. Awesome job. Way to see it. Man, I'm proud of you. For your granddad, for all of our moms. Jay, really, I appreciate everybody. Love you guys. Please stay with it. Awesome job. That's what it's all about. Great turnaround for him. Harvick, man, second place. Elliott, third. Solid day all day long for Keselowski. Wallace with that huge rebound and Burton. That's a much needed top 10 for him and the Wood Brothers. I love that Harvick gave it his all on that restart, but he raced William clean down in a one and two. Yeah, Harvick did a very good job. He didn't, didn't force the issue down there. And I don't think he. He probably didn't feel like he could beat him anyway, given where, where William had been all day. And he, he had quite a bit of damage. We saw all that wreck was right yeah. in his lap. And Chase Elliott, what a rebound for third place. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's like winning the race for us. Brad Keselowski fourth, Bubba Wallace fifth. Harrison Burton gets sixth. Bush, Haley, Blaney, and Busher, the top ten. Man, something about you, Bill. Everything just gets awesome. What's the deal? You I'm show the whole race went haywire. <laughs> it's the seventh career win for William Byron, who last won at Phoenix. And yeah, he's had his third of the season. Terrible year. Yeah. <laughs> Three wins? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a terrible year. And we're what? A third of the season? Well, keep coming up on half. He probably needs to go down and give Ross an attaboy or two. For Both that. of them. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Got to be there to capitalize on it, though, and that's oh, exactly what William Byron did. Yep. Eighth win of the season for Chevrolet, and the bow ties 43rd win at Darlington. Good car all day. Solid car. Jamie Little. William Byron, one year ago, the frustration, the fire that we saw in you of being wrecked from the lead with two to go. Now you come back here a year later, a little bit of redemption. Put into words what this one means. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, my granddad passed away on Thursday and just, uh, man, I wish my family could be here, but uh, just things have a way of working out, honestly. And, um, it just worked out that way today. You know, we didn't have the the best third stage. Um, we just kept battling, and things just kind of come back around. So I uh, want to wish Happy Mother's Day to my mom. Uh, my sister just graduated uh, school, so big day. Uh, definitely didn't expect this, but just thankful for a great team. And, uh, yeah, just things have a way of working out, and come back here at Darlington and have it go exactly the other way. There's a lot to celebrate, obviously. It's NASCAR's 75th anniversary. You do it at the second oldest track at Darlington. And I just heard your team say, win number 100 for Team 24. What can you say about this team and the process that you guys have gone through this year? Yeah, I'm just thankful um, that I was able to, you know, get in this 24 car. Um, I was, you know, too young at the time, I feel like. But, uh, you know, growing up, maturing, and just having a great team around me, being able to build the core that we have. I have a great group of guys, uh, Rudy. Brandon McSwain, Tyler, my car chief, everybody on the team does a great job preparing good cars and uh, we work hard at it. So it's nice to see it you know, go our way once. William Byron wins at Darlington. All right, Regan Smith has caught up with Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain checked and released from the infield care center. Ross, the second to last restart, what happened to turn one? Full commit uh, into one. I got really tight uh, and drove up and, and turned myself. I I wanted to squeeze him. I wanted to I wanted to push him up. Uh, we had been trading back and forth all day, and and uh, I wanted to, to push him up for sure, but definitely didn't want to turn myself in the wall. How frustrated do you think Kyle's going to be with you after this one? I, I, well, <laughs> not not. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm the one standing here talking to you, so. Um, 
you know, for everybody at Worldwide Express, Union Shippers, Global Trans, and to, to drive the big, bound, big brown truck today with UPS on the hood it was a dream come true, and, and we had a shot. That's all we can ask for. Thanks, Ross. William Byron gets to celebrate with Carl and Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon, the previous occupant of the number 24. Bill Elliott, thanks for joining us. Glad to have you Thank for the you second year in a row here. I appreciate you guys. Y'all do an awesome job. Well, thanks, buddy. We appreciate the help. Thank you. Thank yeah. All right, the Charlotte studio will bring us home on the other side after an exciting restart-filled day at Darlington. William Byron ending up in victory lane in the Goodyear 400. Yeah, Darlington is a track that every single driver wants to win at. And today it was 25 year old William Byron who got the victory so close one year ago, getting it done out there in 2023. It is his seventh career cup win, 15th Darlington win for Hendrick Motorsports. And on a day when we were honoring legends and we were honoring Hall of Famers to see that 24 car back in victory lane, what a cool sight. Shannon, Larry, and Jamie. And listen, I just mentioned it. William was so close last season to getting it done. So this wasn't just a, a he kind of lucked into it. He's good at this track. Well, luck is when preparation meets an opportunity. And he met that opportunity. He qualified inside the top five. They had a rough pit stop on that green flag pit stop in stage three. It got them a little behind, but then the cautions got him caught back up and when everybody else started eliminating each other he was right there to capitalize yeah I mean obviously William had a good car and was able to put himself in the right position but I mean the story here is not necessarily to me William Byron it's it's Ross Chastain again and and the the the, the drama. The dra that the is the drama. word I was looking for. Yeah, once again, <laughs> we're going to talk about Ross and did he make a bad decision or not? Well, it was funny because at one point I was looking at the top five and I said to you, is Kyle Larson the only one in there that Ross hasn't no. had a run-in with? And I said, no, Shannon, it's everybody on the left <laughs> side of the screen right yeah. now he's had a run-in with. Exactly. All right, so Ross obviously said he did move him up the, you know, the track. But, yeah. the, you know, obviously didn't want to wreck both of them. They both finished 20th or worse. What did you see play out? Well, we saw something similar on the restart before. Kyle obviously got into a Ross, but Ross thought he was going to be able to squeeze Kyle and get in front of him right here. And listen, the, the reality of this situation is that whoever gets the lead right there is probably going to win the race because if they get down to turn three, I think Kyle maybe would have been in the better position. Uh, but but the story is just Ross once again yeah. being, being a part of the controversy. And I know that it's not always his fault, but it just seems like every week he is a common denominator. Yeah, I mean, everybody races different. You go to the restart after that, you had Harvick on the inside, and he gave plenty of room to William Byron. Now, we realize that Ross Chastain is very aggressive. I was looking at data as it was live that was happening right there. William Byron was off the throttle trying to get his car to take a set, and Ross Chastain was wide open right there, and his car just went up the racetrack. Yeah, I think we were both surprised that William Byron took that outside line on the restart because we saw that be sort of a uh, vulnerable spot, well, but you just I, mentioned Harvick. I thought being on the bottom was better just because yeah. you're kind of in control of your own destiny. You you can control your throttle where if you're on the outside, you're committed. and You're, you're very you're vulnerable up there, Yeah, too. you're dependent yeah. on the car. And, and Harvick did. I mean, he gave probably more room than he needed to uh, to William Byron. I think if he could take that back right now, he might have been a little more aggressive in turn one. But he also hadn't restarted on the front row. And that's the one thing that both Larson and Chastain had is they had experience restarting on the front row. In both positions, they knew what their cars were going to do. And it's hard to be mad at Ross because you're racing for the win. It's just, like I say, just common denominator. You want to hear from Kevin Harvick? Hear I would what he love got. to hear. I, well, how about we do that right now? Regan Smith is with him. Well, Kevin Harvick battled all day long, ended up with a second place finish. Seemed like you guys had a pretty good race car for the majority of the race and things got crazy at the end. Yeah, yeah, we, we had a good car all day. We just never could get up towards the front and, and our uh, Sunny Delight Ford Mustang struggled in, in traffic today. But we were really good at the second half of the run and, and just struggled at the beginning of the run. But we had good track position and had a bad pit stop under green and then wound up having uh, everything work out there at the end. Uh, didn't have anything for, for William. The fronts tore up pretty good. But um, they did a great job and just kind of kept ourselves in the game. And you never know what's going to happen. Thanks, Kyle. Or Kevin. Yeah, it's funny. With 13 to go, he was involved in that big wreck. We saw the in-car camera view, and I mean, he we looked like he was he, done. Totally, yeah. he looked like he got moved around a lot. He just mentioned the damage on the front. Do you think that could have affected the way the end of that race went? Yeah, I mean, mo most definitely it would have, and, and he would have known that in the car how hard he hit. But you know, when when we came out here, you asked me, you're like, how did he get back up there? Yeah. Because we thought he was involved in that wreck. But when he gets late in the race, there was nothing they were going to do to fix the car, so they stayed out and, and obviously were able to to capitalize. But Kevin Harvick, I mean, once again, he's a veteran. He he. 
he's good at not putting himself in a bad position. And I would say that restart plays just into to his wheelhouse. He, he knows when to be aggressive and when not to be. I think he probably knew he didn't have the car to win and that William Byron was, was you know, the faster car in that circumstance. Um, but, you know, by attrition, Kevin was able to get up there and got a good finish out. And, and he and that 14 needed that run right yes. there. Yeah, I mean, I know they want to find victory lane. Of course, they got two wins last year. But the last four weeks have been very tough on Kevin and that 14. It's not a, all been self-inflicted. His best finish this year has been fifth three times, and now he's got that run-up finish. I just believe with all my heart that four car will find victory lane here in Kevin's final season. We heard uh, Bill Elliott in the booth for stage number three doing a great job with Mike Joy and Clint Boyer. Let's hear what his son has to say. Chase Elliott finishing third on the days with Jamie Little. And how about that? Chase Elliott brings it home third, your best finish since returning from the injury. And I know it wasn't easy. You had to start mid-pack. Take us through the race and just how you guys felt there at the end. Yeah, we were, I, mean, I felt like our, our car was plenty good, really, throughout the whole day. I just do such a terrible job getting up through traffic, and I get stalled out behind guys. And um, I just feel like people driving cars like mine don't do that. Uh, they tend to get up through there and, and get to where they belong. So I feel like everything on the other side of the wall and, and the car that I was driving was was really, really good. So I need to just try to improve and, and keep going to work on the areas that I'm struggling in and try to uh, try to build on, you know, the, the improvements we've made. But we certainly have, a, I have I certainly have a long ways to go, but really proud of our team effort to keep us in the fight. Pit stops were unreal. And obviously got really lucky there at the end with those guys crashing and then the caution coming out quick for myself and, and guys like Brad to keep our spots like that. So I'll certainly take third and appreciate uh, appreciate all the effort this weekend. We're making some small gains here and there. Just got to get some more. Throwback paint scheme looked great for Chase Selly making his dad proud from the booth. Sure, it sure did, Jamie. It's typical uh, Chase Elliott interview, right? Jamie's like, best finish since returning from the injury. And what does Chase do? Yeah, he, he <laughs> reminds me so much of Matt Kenseth. He yeah. downplays his ability so much and, and talks about how terrible he is when we all know the, the ability he has. And what he was referencing there is that Kyle Larson had to go to the back after the, the issue they had on pit road and was able to drive right back to the front. And he obviously passed Chase in the middle of that. William Byron is up front. So it's frustrating as a driver when you know you have the same equipment and you kind of know the setups are in the car when you see those guys, you know, being being able to get up front and, and he talked to Alan Gustafson midpoint of the race and Alan's like what do you need and he's like you know I'm just trying to take it easy at the beginning of the run so that I don't lose too much at the end trying to balance that beat himself up a little bit but Larry overall just keeps getting better every yeah. single week. Let me tell you what else he's downplaying, <laughs> and I said it five races ago. Yeah, they feel like they need to win, but my gosh, five races back. <laughs> he has his top five. He's got three top tens. His worst finish is 12th. We have 13 regular season races to go. I know a win and you're in, and that's a cure-all, but the way they're running, they can get there on points. There is no question on my mind, especially as we continue to have these drivers getting multiple wins and not continuing to add new winners each week. Yeah, it was it when that, towards the end of that race we looked up and there were 300 motorsports cars it right, behind, damage. Yeah, yeah. right behind Ross Chastain I said it was like you're walking down an alley and here come <laughs> right. the guys right and you were just like wow this could get big um, Brad Kozlowski former winner 2018 winner at Darlington great run for that team he is with Regan Smith well solid fourth place finish for Brad Kozlowski really a put together well weekend for you guys with a six car yeah we, we had a lot of strength all weekend Regan and uh, really proud of everybody with uh, the cash rule team here and RFK racing with our, our Mustang but uh, just need a little bit more speed I mean just knocking on the door here doing the best we can I thought the setup was really good uh, and, and Matt McCall and the team did a great job then the last few restarts I picked the high lane and everybody wrecked on the top like ah oh, I should have picked the bottom I could have won it but uh, all in all really competitive really solid and uh, doing all the things we need to do thanks Brad you know what I loved about that interview is him just saying right there, could have won it. What a difference one year makes. Oh, my gosh. And remember, he was caught up in that wreck with 13 laps to go, so there was definitely some damage on that six car. But they just keep chipping away, just keep chipping away. I mean, Regan addressed it with him. He was fast yesterday in practice. He was fast in qualifying, made it to the second round, and he was essentially there all day long with that six car. Busy day for Brad Kozlowski. Of course, he's one of the NASCAR 75 drivers. We were honoring them all race long. Got to see them pre-race. So glad you guys are sticking here with us for our post-race coverage. We're going to try to get through at least the top 10 drivers. Our pit reporters are very, very busy. Regan Smith is with Chris Busher, who has a top 10 finish out there.
Well, Chris Buescher comes home with a 10th place finish today. Got uh, both Roush Fenway Kozlowski cars in the top 10 again this week. Yeah, it's a, it's a solid finish for us. I'm proud of everybody working hard on fifth, third bank Ford Mustang. We made big improvements on the day and uh, qualifying went everything but our way and uh, put us in the hole to start. Uh, worked hard at it, had good pit stops. Everybody did a really nice job and survived the chaos there at the end. Uh, we were in the top one time, bottom one time, and, and uh, had a front row seat for the action. But, um, you know, ended up all right. We really wanted those last 10 laps to, to fire off and see. I, I thought that would be an opportunity for us to move forward and um, you know we just didn't get the opportunity with the, the cautions going into overtime there uh, just ended quickly but proud of our group that was uh, solid from where we started thanks Chris thanks so much Regan listen I know it was a, a race of attrition right but starting 27th for Chris Bush or getting a top 10 at Darlington that's got to be a big shot in the arm yeah it was a really quiet day from him I, I honestly I don't even remember seeing him on the track today um, but one thing like thinking about both Chris and Brad is that it seems like Ford's maybe a little bit behind today so to get the results that they're getting knowing that maybe that manufacturer is a little bit behind at this point in the season I think is really good and it shows where RFK is yeah I mean that's you know we went all these years with that the organization not getting two drivers finishing the top 10 yeah. in the same race and now we've had it happen a couple of times within the last month but yeah he got some damage as well in one of those late race crashes so that was good to get him back to the top 10 but both of them in the top 10 again what a day it was in darlington celebrating the hall of famers the legends all the moms of course uh, there's two of the legends right there rick hendrick jeff gordon giving a little love to william byron getting a vic victory we're going to hear from both of those guys when we get back 15 times Hendrick Motorsports has been to Victory Lane at Darling, and today it is William Byron who drives it into Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane. Let's hear from two of the guys at the top. Why don't we? Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon are with Jamie Little. What a great day for Hendrick Motorsports for both of you gentlemen. First, Jeff, win number 100 for the 24, and it comes with William Byron. What does that mean to you? I think it's just incredible to see you know this this young driver and team continue to, to go to Victory Lane and uh, you know, keep that legacy of the 24 and Hendrick Motorsports alive, especially today with that special paint scheme, that throwback. That that one meant a lot for me, and I, I sat in the 24 box uh, today. And so, um, man, what a wild finish. Hate it for the, you know Kyle Larson, the five team. I think you know, it was really kind of theirs to 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 win and um, unfortunately that didn't work out but pretty good day for chase elliott as well as a uh, great day for that 24 william byron and that car sure was beautiful throwback yeah. to you that was pretty cool how about you rick what does this place mean we're doing the throwback 75 greatest drivers one of them right here and you guys come out on top well you know it's it's really special because the, the car we have painted like that back in the museum it's faded so now we've got a new one so we put in there now this is anytime you go back what i enjoy is looking at all the cars it brings back so many memories to me when i've been in this thing for almost 40 years and uh, when i see all i remember all those paint schemes and so it was really fun and uh, i'm sure tony stewart is mad at the one because that's his paint scheme. He won Daytona in with our car. So, uh, no, it's just, I love it. I hope they continue to do it because I think the fans love it. And anytime you can win at Darlington, it's, it's a great day. Congratulations to both of you. Hendrick gets their first win here at Darlington since 2012. Thank you so much, Jamie. All right, here's a question. What do you give the guy who has everything? <laughs> Jeff Gordon really has far. everything. Uh, well, you win in his paint scheme at Darlington, a place that means so much to him. But this is not a given for Hendrick Motorsports because it's been a while. Well, you heard Jamie Little say it right there. May of 2012, William Byron was 14 years old the last time <laughs> Hendrick Motorsports won. And what was significant about that win, that was win 200 for Hendrick Motorsports. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. That Today, tick, tick, tick. That was win number 296, Crazy. four away from that from that 300th win. I love seeing how excited Jeff Gordon gets. When they showed him on the pit box, like high five and Rudy Fugel, and, and think about from his perspective, and he mentioned it there, watching the car that you drove back in 1998 go to victory. And I, that was a, I was a fan of that car. It was before I made it to NASCAR. And I think it's so cool to see his excitement level and, and then, you know, just hear him talk about that 
What a special day for them. Yeah, we had the radio rec uh, retro radioactive earlier this week, and it was his Darlington Winston Million win. You know, Chad Knauss on yeah. that car. A and you mentioned every single time Jeff Gordon went, was winning a race, if he went to victory lane, he was crying. He well, was on the phone. And, hey, think about it. Think about <laughs> one year ago when Joey Logano moved William Byron out of the win, and we saw that defeat in Jeff Gordon's face to then one year later see him go to win. That was, that's cool. But this shows you how strong Hendrick Motorsports is as an organization. This was 13 race of 2023. They have not had a normal weekend. Very few. You think about it. Chase Elliott was out those six races. Alex Bowman has now been out three races. They had four crew chiefs that was out for four races. It's been very disorganized over there, but they've kept their head down, and now they've sat here and won five of these 13 races. And listen, I know William Byron's family is not with him. They're in New York celebrating their daughter's graduation from college, but I mean, you have that Hendrick Motorsports family behind you, you yeah. know that there's lots of love that's going to go to William Byron getting it done out there. Let's hear from another guy who had a great run out at Darlington, a fifth place finish for Bubba Wallace. He's with Regan Smith. Bubba Wallace comes home with a fifth place finish today. Seemed like he really had to go through a battle out there today, but a good result. Yeah, unfortunately, we had that one bad pit stop that, that set us behind and um, team never gives up. You know, it's, it's good to rebound fifth. Um, I keep looking at that pylon. I'm pissed off. There's a couple cars that were involved in a wreck that got put back in front of us. So it's um, bull crap. Is that nice? Is that good? Um, frustrating to see that we got beat like that because I, I feel like our car was really good, especially at the beginning. Thought we were second place car of the 19 there. Um, but all in all, for Dr. Pepper, Toyota, 23 team, proud of our guys, proud of the pit crew for rebounding, giving us a shot, and coming home with good points today, Regan. Thanks, Bubba. Thank you. Yeah, you know he's disappointed, right? But fifth place finish, that's nothing to kind of, you know, turn your nose to. And he was right up there chasing Martin Truex Jr. for a long time. He, he was. I mean, he qualified on the front row. He ran up there inside the top five. As he mentioned, they had that bad pit stop at the end of stage one. But I just want to say, come on, Bubba. The first 11 races, you had two top ten finishes. <laughs> and now you've back-to-back -back top five. It's the little wars, the little battles you have to hang your hat on. But I think one thing that has him a little disappointed right now, we have six Toyota drivers there's only two that's not one Bubba and rookie Ty Gibbs yeah and if you go back to when he had the issue and fell back uh, booty comes on the radio and tells him hey it's gonna be okay I thought he did a pretty good job of not beating himself up or, or getting frustrated with the pit crew at that point um, staying up beating and they had a good car he wasn't one of those guys though like Kyle Larson that could go to the back and was able to drive the way the front but 2311 as, as a whole right now in Toyota is is really strong yes. yeah day of the day was for moms right we talked about Mother's Day many times Kim Burton obviously one of the moms that we see every single week on pit road on the uh, pit box and Harrison Burton had a great run today bringing it home sixth he's with Regan Smith. Well, the best run of the year so far for Harrison Burton with a sixth place result. I think the better part to that run, though, was the speed that this 21 car had all day. Yeah, and it's really been coming together the last few weeks. And, you know, it's been like runs and spurts here and there where it's like, wow, you're as fast as a leader. What are you doing? And, and, uh, and it's starting to click. And I'm not really, I felt like last year and really the beginning of this year, I had to drive the car so hard to be close. And now I'm starting to have everything kind of slow down. I'm not having to drive as hard, and I'm still fast. And so when you're driving at 90% the whole race instead of 110, you're just going to make less mistakes, and things will start to come easier to you. So the speed makes up for mistakes throughout the race and things like that, and it makes it a lot easier to get a good finish. So proud of our guys. We're starting to figure things out and, and heading in the right direction. And um, this is a sign of that for sure. we got to continue this. This isn't the destination. It's a part of the, part of the steps. So we got to keep going. Thanks, Harrison. Thank all right, how much do you see that in Harrison, right? He says, like, he's, he's the optimist. It's stacking pennies, getting small little victories. Well, to me, it was just not the finish. It's the way they ran all day long. He got inside the top ten. He got some track position. He stayed there for a big part of the day. But you think back to the first 12 races, only two top 15 finishes, and both of those were 15th place. So to get this top 10 well inside the top 10, I can tell it, that gives that young man some confidence right there. Absolutely. One of the toughest tracks on the schedule, and you go out and you get a good finish, absolutely 100%. All right, the guys who had the best view for today's race, of course, were those calling the race. Take it away, Mike Joy. 
Well, this is Darlington, where you race the racetrack for, what, 280-some laps, and then all of a sudden, this becomes a contact sport. Well, you turn whoever to win the race. <laughs> well, I, saw not so year ago. I saw it this year, so we'll see. You're not wrong, Bill. And and I think, you know, Ross Chastain, you just heard him say it. I mean, it meant to push him up the racetrack and turn myself off of his front bumper. You knew two aggressive race car drivers going for their first Darlington win. And unfortunately, they didn't. And landed it right in William Byron's lap. You think he learned something from that, Ross? Stay squared up with a guy on the outside. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I don't think he may have learned something, but if it happened again tomorrow, he'd do the exact same, same thing. <laughs> and with that, we're <laughs> off to Wilkesboro. We will see you there, Mike Joy. Imagine sitting in the booth and calling a race with, with uh, Bill. All Elliott. the legends? Like, yeah, yeah, Richard I mean, Petty. Yeah, that, was, that would be Edwards. incredible. Yeah, it, it was, was fun quite to the to. day up there. Yeah, and I mean, they all did a great job. They all have a different perspective, but they all did a really good job. You know, this is the second year in a row that Bill Elliott has joined us for that final stage. Going back and watching the race from a year ago, I, after I watched it I, earlier this week, I said, he really gave some great insight. Yeah. He did again today. Yeah, he might be on what's coming up after our post-race show. It's the greatest countdown show ever here's a glimpse tune in as we count down to number one on the greatest countdown show ever plus don't miss the best fights celebrations driver rants I'm bust his ass. and bloopers in nascar history where will your favorite moment land on the list I had so much fun doing that show. You cannot miss it. It is awesome. So you miss it tonight right after our post-race show. And there he is with the I big love hat. The hat. Love we the do hat. love the Great. big hat. Where do it they is keep awesome. those hats? I mean, in the holler. In you know, drawer. same place that Ross Chastain keeps the watermelons. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to William Byron. We'll be right back to wrap things up. You could see everything was sort of still there. It was just how they left it. You grow up with it. You you kind of take for granted that it's always going to be there. When it goes away, you're like, man, that didn't have to happen. Reopening North Wilkesboro Speedway. How hard could this be? Tell me a stadium, a sports venue anywhere in the United States that got resurrected. I never thought about them ever using Wilkesboro for a racetrack anymore. Marcus would come by and he'd say, hey man, just so you know, I haven't forgotten about Wilkesboro. What does that mean, Marcus? I felt bad that there was so much disappointment. We're in the entertainment business. We like to make people happy. NASCAR's run a full circle. They're coming back home. Yeah, we're gonna have an all-star race there, but this is way beyond the all-star race. 27 years ago, they closed the door on North Wilkesboro, 1996. It was Jeff Gordon that drove to victory lane in the very last race. And now we are reviving the racetrack for the All-Star event. And you can catch this two-part documentary this week on NASCAR Race Hub, Wednesday and Thursday, so you don't want to miss that. We're also going to have a really great sit-down with Jeff Gordon and Ray Evernham uh, coming up next week on race day, so you don't want to miss that as well. When's the last time you've been to North Wilkesboro? Yeah, when we walked out of there at the end of 1996, that's the last Last time that I was there, you know, I was a part of racing there twice a year from 1981 when I first came in to 1996. I was fortunate enough to win twice there with Brett Bodine in 1990, Davey Allison in 1992. Just a really neat short track. I, to me, what we have done, we have finally captured the energy that we had of one hot night at Charlotte Motor Speedway when they put the lights up in May of 92 for the All-Star Race. Yeah, I was there like five years ago. I actually was with a group of guys. We, we rode our bicycles actually through the mountains and ended up the track and all took a, a picture together. Um, shocked to hear that we're going to go back there, but I will be up there on Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. I, we, I saw a little bit of footage earlier this week on Race Hub. Clint was actually at the track doing some, some walk around, showing us what they had. It's pretty amazing what they've been able to do to this, this track. And what a weekend. We're somewhat bringing the pit crew competition back on Friday night. We're going to have that. That's what's going to determine the starting order of the open race. That's what's going to determine the order of the heat races. We have two heat races on Saturday night and then the open and the all-star race on Sunday night. Yeah, here's the thing that's so cool is that most of the drivers, I don't think maybe there's any drivers in the field that have ever raced there. Absolutely. They may have ran a late model. And we yeah. got late model racing, I think, all week yeah. long. But no, nobody's ever ran a national tour in series. 
series race there. Yeah, I know that like Chase um, and, and Blaney ran their late model. That yes. They talked about that back in 2009, 2010. But yeah, no one has any experience in a cup car other than a little bit of testing we did there. Andy Petrie did tell me uh, on Race Hub earlier this week, though, that they ran when they went there on new tires, they were two seconds slower than the last race they ran there in the huh. 90s. So it's going to be interesting to see the amount of fall off on such a small Yeah, I was going to say, you think you had tire fall off? <laughs> in you don't even want to roll your car's <laughs> tires to the car up there I, at Wilkesboro. I, I, I love the idea of the all-star race being there, and, and we haven't really focused on the million dollars to win that. But it being on a short track, it's going to be kind of similar to when we were at Bristol where you can actually move somebody for a Did we mention dollars. the trucks are Saturday as well? Yeah, and listen, the, one of the things that I think is so cool is it's not too far from our home. Right. And what that was so cool about, you know, when, it, when the All-Star. Totally. Yeah, because yeah. everyone could go. Family members could go. Yeah. Folks from the shop could go. And you'd stand out there before the before the race, and it just had a different a energy. feeling. And ride the elevator on top of the hot dog stand. That's where Victory Lane is. There stand. we go. Yeah. You'll have to go up there I'm and take a, a picture. Just you are? Can. You will? You got a hot dog out there? Dog. Yeah. I, 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 listen, a oh, loaded hot dog. There you go. Let me know how that is. Uh, congratulations to William Byron. So next Sunday, our coverage from North Wilkesboro begins at 5 Eastern. And don't forget, we got Race Hub weeknights at 6 on FS1. Up next, NASCAR 75, the greatest showdown ever. Again, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Have a great night.